Hey, Ira. Hi. Hi, Dexter. Lovely to see you. <laughs> Good to be seen. <laughs> ah, you just disappeared. On purpose, yeah. Okay. Hi, what's up? Can you just call me? Yeah, Tom, somebody or other. Okay. <coughs> your links, your links work, by the way, on the agenda. Okay. Testing, testing, one, two, three. You got it. <laughs> George is an attendee. All right, you, you, I'll put you in. Fine. Okay, sure. Make me a co-host, I reckon, help you out with this. Yeah, okay. <coughs> I want to get the uh, agenda up. Okay, let me get Captain Morrison in here. Good evening, Ira. Hi. Did you get my message about Pascaino? About which? I get so many ma mail today. About what? Councilman Pascaino? Yeah, what about it? His press secretary just called me and said that Pascaino, who is president of the National League of Cities and who is in conference online, has been pulled away on a couple of Zoom meetings, does not think he can appear tonight and asked that his policy director, Dennis Gleason, could make the presentation on the care no. plus cleanups in his stead. I said, I, thought I, I, I would tend to say no, because we get enough blowback on this, but uh, Bush Gaiano, you know, he's the councilman. Right. And he's asking that his policy director who basically wrote the care plus um, ordinance uh, and the motion. Now we're not, we, we're hearing a report. We're not discussing this or making motions to support any of it. I, I didn't have any thoughts about that. Okay. Uh, I think we're just hearing know. a presentation. George, wake up. Yes. What do you think? What do I think? I think it's, I think it's a report and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with treating it like a report from any other city agency, whether it's from a policy director from another, um, no, no. part of the, uh, of nice. the city. No, no, I, as I say, that's, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, he could come on. Okay. He's, he's a good guy to create a relationship with because Buscaino chairs public works and they write all this stuff regarding sidewalks and parks and you know all the public space stuff comes out of public works. Okay. And, and he's the well, guy that- Just keep, an eye, keep a weather eye open for him, Mark, so I know when to bring him up. Dennis Gleason. Okay. I knew he wasn't going to be 
Okay. Well, we got the other captain tonight. Acosta. We got Morrison a slow. and and a slow. Oh, Captain and a slow. Yeah. Hey, Vicky, good to You're see quick, you. George. You're quick, George. <laughs> All right, let's see if we got any other. George, you're muted. Board members. Hi, guys, I'm here. I just got off of work. Okay. You're I'm actually still early. I'm on blackout. No, you're early. <laughs> what else did you do today? Huh. I better get rid of your big fat face. Hold on. I'm going to share. Oh, get rid of Murley. Why is your hand up? You have to unmute if you're going to talk. I, I do apologize about that. Hi, my name is Spencer Trumbor. I am communications director with Health Matters Clinic. We are actually going to be having a, a uh, health clinic in your area for the homeless community. I was wondering if there might be a way to present a list of members uh, or a grid view, perhaps. Uh, that you can make that comment in public comment or, or email us, yeah. email president of Venice NC, um, and we'll connect you with that. Thank you. You can make you you can you can announce that during public comment. It's number eight on the agenda. All right, no problem. Yeah. Thank you. I thought the way his name was spelled, we we're going to get some something else. But good. Alex, Krakatoa East of Java. I got an eye on these, Ira. All right. Uh, well, we're up to 16. Ah, two more minutes. All right. Yep. Welcome, everybody that's sitting out there. Seven o'clock, we'll start. Whoa, 25 attendees, that's good. We don't think James M is James Mirrors, do we? No.
Good evening, gentlemen and ladies. Well, you can't be talking to anyone on this one. <laughs> I don't know what happened. The links on the on the um, agenda, on the website, on the committee page, they all work. The agenda I sent out, I don't know what happened to that. The links didn't work. 29, ooh, 30. Well, then go, they can all go to the web page and do it themselves. I know, I know, I know. That's where we have to do it. That's the one that has to be correct. Oh, wow. We got 20. Hmm. I'm impressed, but that includes Freddie and Brian Morrison. Still, it's really good. Dexter. Oh. So, Ira? Yes. Did you ever hear back from the city attorney? No. So you no, guys and I, I sent, well, I've sent them a million things. We have all of these uh, super requests and everything. So, but no, he never so got back to me. I, so the person, three? oh, Freddie, he's the one that has to get back to me. <laughs> city attorney threw it in his court. Well, find out if you guys have to recuse yourself. All right. All right, we got 20. All right. We can. Uh, 701. Okay. Ira? Yeah. Just, uh, if anyone needed to recuse themselves, they should have talked to the city attorney first. Ira, tell them what's going on. No, no, no. <laughs> this is you. This isn't the city attorney. This is that thing we talked about where we wanted to give money to uh, um, Venice Arts. And they, when they filled out their thing, they talked about the people that uh, have donated. And then, so they're donating to a nonprofit has nothing to do with the neighborhood council or anything. And they they said we had a, a, a conflict of interest. And all we are, we don't we're not on the board. We don't know anybody on the board anymore, anyway. And uh, so you're supposed to find out if Dunn makes the decision. You don't have to answer. <laughs> That's what we agreed to. Well, it does, anyway, right? Because we're going to vote on it tonight if we can. Uh, you guys well, we can vote on it and they'll uh, dismiss it. Determinations of conflict of interest um, is seen both in the application by the city clerk and determined by the city attorney. No, so, we were on the call with him, Fred. Freddie. Oh, you we were, were on, on call, with, call Steve? with Steve? And he said it was you and done making the decision. Yeah, we're, we're tired of this buck passing. This is first thing it is insane in the first place. He had a meeting with you and with the city attorney. We said you were going to do it, and now we still haven't heard anything from anybody. It's been going on for a month. All right, let, let's start the meeting. All right, let's not, not beat him up too much. Okay, we'll call a meeting to order at 7.03 and uh, you has uh, did Melissa talk to you about? Uh, yeah, uh, it's it once again is me. Okay, you're a grand old dad. The backup <laughs> guy. All right, so well, I'll, take... I'll, I'll be I'll be taking minutes to you to back you up. All right, well, it's always good to know I've got my back covered. All right, this is Roll Ira here, George here. Uh, Melissa's gone. I'm here. Uh, Jim Mures. James Mures is here. Uh, Alik. Seema. Hi, I'm here. Okay. Oh. Oh, you're, you're here. Your voice is somewhere else, but you're here. All right. <laughs> Alex. Yeah, I'm here. CJ. Here. Brian. Here. Jamie. Here. Bruno. Here. Christian. DC. Tom McComas. Jim, Rob. Here. Mark. Here. 
Robert. John. John is trying. I'm trying to get John on right now. I can't find him. Soledad. Here. Vicky. Here. All right, we have a quorum. Good. Thank you. Um, George, would you care to do the pledge, please? Um, I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United of States, the United of, States America, of America and to, to the republic for which it stands, which stands one nation, one nation under, God, under God, liberty, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Amen. Okay, thank you. Oh, tired is slow and ran fast. All right. All right. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. I'll George, second. Is that CJ? Uh, Vicky. Vicky, all right. Vicky. Thank you. Comment? I'm here. It's Robert. Robert, Robert Thibodeau just logged in. Robert, yeah, just, hey, he walked in. He it took in. me a second. Sorry about that. Board comment? Ira, okay. can I make a board comment? Oh, I, I don't see any. No, can I make a board comment? Oh, definitely. Sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, as I've expressed to Ira and to, to George and to Hugh, uh, there was a matter that was left off from last month's agenda that should have been carried forward regarding um, a request for a letter of support. Um, we didn't get to it last month. It didn't show up on the draft agenda before I had come, but I caught it right afterwards and I asked to be added. George said it had been, and then it didn't show up. And um, what I'd like to ask um, Ira is if we can have a process at ADCOM that before the agenda gets published, that it's run back through ADCOM so that we can fulfill our duty to assure that what's going on is what should be going on. What does that mean? Uh, run it back through, have another we, meeting? We, we take actions at ADCOM. Yeah. And then it goes to, I'm not sure who, Melissa, Hugh, you. Melissa. Uh, uh, well, what, it it went to me this time. George, yeah. what, what happened to Because George said that it got on the agenda and then it got dropped. It was no. done last month's agenda. It automatically been rolled over. No. Well, yeah. there was confusion this month because uh, Melissa uh, was off. She had work or uh, a lot of things like that. And you was picking up for her and we tried to do it and it got lost. Uh, and if we could have caught it before the board agenda was posted, we could have still put it on. But once the board we agenda- did, We did catch it. And it was well, put back on it. and somehow got dropped again. Right. Yeah. So, well, that's uh, human error. I'm sorry. OK. Um, yes, you, I feel- I made my we'll, point. We'll make sure that we get it on next month. Thank you, sir. OK. Um, any other comment on the agenda? There will be slight changes within things, but no, no uh, movements of motions. Okay. Um, <laughs> any objection from the board? Seeing none, the agenda is approved. I, I were on these procedural things. Are you abstaining? Uh, yeah. Okay. No problem. Uh, and, and when we, now here's the minutes from last meeting. Here are they. <laughs> What? Here, on the, on the screen. I move to approve the minutes. I'll second. All right, so you CJ, you have a comment? No, I, for some reason, never see the minutes. And is it difficult to email them out or something to us? Well, <clears throat> once again, um, these minutes Melissa has a way of after the meeting. Well, Melissa email, doesn't. Hold on. Let me just finish and then you can. Has a way of emailing them out right after the meeting. She wasn't uh, at the meeting. <laughs> oh, no, she was. Yeah, they were mailed out. I didn't. And there was a link. There was a link on the agenda. So. Well, there was, was a that... link on this agenda. Right. That, well, that worked. Yeah. So. Um, I'm sorry. 
It's okay. Yeah, well, it's we should, all right. So there's, I mean, if nobody uh, could see anything, I was going pretty, pretty fast. Ira? So. I don't yeah. have a link on my copy of the. Um, well, the thing is, if you went on the um, oh, website. Yeah. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong and, one. Click the minutes. It would. It would. I mean, click the agenda. That agenda had the correct and working link to the minutes. All right. I see there are three three hands up. Participants. You, John Reed, is in the meeting now. Yeah. Good. Elizabeth. Mendez. You can talk. Whoop. Oh, can, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, hello. So uh, I am a student that founded a community organization called venice.cobra.p for you um, to help feed at the unhoused uh, residents here in Venice. Liz, and Liz, this is for, this is a, not to interrupt you, we, this is, there's a public comment period for announcements like this to be made, okay? I oh, mean, okay, sorry, just, yeah. I wasn't no, that's sure. okay, it's just not protocol, I'm sorry to, uh, you know, I don't mean to be rude to cut you off, but there'll be, a, it's number eight on the agenda, and then you can make these announcements and we'll give you time to do that there, so thank you. Okay. No, sounds good, no, for sure, it's okay, thank you. D. Dominic, you can unmute yourself. I'm on the public agenda, so I will wait as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, that's it. It's, uh, <clears throat> okay, can we have a motion? Oh, we have. Yep. Can we? Got a motion uh, in a second. Okay. Let me get this. Uh, share. Screen share. All right, I'll get the. Uh, <laughs> I have to. I'll get the uh, agenda back up. Hold on. Are, are, are we all in agreement that the minutes are okay, guys? I didn't see any CJ not opposition. A, a I'm not okay, can, you're not staying? Okay. Because I have to somehow Google Docs doesn't like me and they have to request a whatever. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be alone. Google Docs doesn't like a lot of us. It's just well, that it's random. So don't don't feel uh, don't feel singled out. Why so we... that, that, that's our only abstention is CJ abstaining from No, and, and Ira. I got and it. And Ira. Ira. Okay. Got that here. Okay. Uh, All right. Declaration of ex parte communications or conflicts of interest. Ex parte is speaking to different stakeholders about any motion uh, and conflicts of interest are if you have a financial interest in any motion or project, you have to recuse yourself. So you can declare when we get to the, be nice to uh, uh, declare now, but if you forget when we get to the individual motion or lupic item, you can declare uh, your um, desire to recuse <clears throat> and as Freddie, uh, our Dunn rep, pointed out at the beginning, if you th think you need to con have a conflict, you have to get in touch with the city attorney. That's the rule. All right, now, uh, Alix isn't here, but she always talks to everybody on the Lupic project. All right, anybody else? Raise a hand. All right, CJ. Okay. Um, whatever the last one is, I think it's 13 something. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm kind of an investor in that, so I should. Okay. Uh, Thank you. 13 H. Anybody else? Speak now or for 24 hours, hold your peace. Okay. Schedule announcements. Uh, Ira? Uh, yeah. Um, excuse me, Jim, Jim Mirez here. Um, I'm, I'm on a couple of committees and of course, any of the, the issues that uh, the committee yeah. is involved in, um, I, you know, I don't believe it's a conflict of interest, but I, I have had communication. No, it's a, it's the first thing. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Ex parte. Um, all right. The previous <clears throat> month's minutes were emailed by Melissa, um, Previous month's letters. 
Uh, they'll be finished this week. I got I got them a little late. Uh, they have not been done, but uh, I have them uh, ready, and I'm going to finish them up. Uh, live stream of meetings. Uh, yes, we're on now. <laughs> Spanish translation. Uh, I'm not going to take it out because I want everyone to know that it is available, even though it's not being taken advantage of. Um, public safety. We have, I saw Adrian Acosta. We have Sergeant, Sergeant Cook, Adrian Acosta, and uh, Monique Contreras with us. Great. Well, are they on? Uh, I'm talking about all the shit. Monique Acosta and Brian Cook. Okay, great. Yep. They're all on panelists. So whoever wants to go first, please do. I saw, like to, I saw Captain uh, Morris. This is, uh, this is Officer Acosta. I'm not sure if um, if Captain Morrison is still on and if you want to speak. I know uh, Captain Embrick was going to be joining us late. Captain Morrison, I, don't want to I see. Jump B. Morrison over those on. two if they want to speak first. I think Captain Morrison was just going to be here as a source of uh, if we uh, you guys had any uh, questions for him or anything. So okay, very good. I'll I'll just speak real quickly, and if uh, Monique is still on, if if uh, Sergeant Cook is still on, they can speak. Um, most notable thing is every week we do a uh, prime control meeting where we meet with our uh, command staff at at Pacific Area, and we meet with all our. Uh, table coordinators. And the biggest update that came up today amongst uh, Pacific Division uh, pertaining to Venice is an increase in residential burglaries. Um, A11, which is Monique's car, is experiencing right now a 10.5% increase Ooh. in burglaries over last year. That's 13 plus or 13 more burglaries than last year. And my car, A13, is at a modest 2.1% increase, only one burglary over, but we've seen an increase in the last couple of weeks, maybe due to the warmer weather. Um, but a majority of these burglaries, uh, we were told today by the burglary coordinator, uh, were due to unlocked windows or unlocked doors. Um, some of those were indeed hot prowl burglaries where the burglary occurred while someone was in the home. So I know uh, probably stealing a little bit of Monique's thunder, we are uh, going to work with our block captains, sending out uh, messages to them as well as utilizing social media to remind people um, about the very basic thing of locking your doors and securing your home. Um, something going on in my area, um, kind of been a blight in the area of Lincoln and Flowers, the old antique market. Uh, that is being That building is finally being raised. So the encampments that have surrounded that property um, by, by no other means are gonna have to move due to the construction and their own safety. So. That's been a project that we've been working on for some time with uh, the building owner and the city attorney, and it's finally um, come to fruition. And I don't know if anybody has questions, maybe, or if you want to reserve them for the captains in regards to the um, uh, town hall meeting last night. But uh, uh, I thought it was I thought it was pretty successful, and uh, I don't know if there's questions regarding that. But that's basically what I have for you guys tonight. All right, who wants to go next? Monique, Brian, Cook? Hey, so, so just real quick to echo Adrian. Uh, Adrian and Monique can handle the, the crime questions for their areas as they should. I, I'm just here monitoring it in case there's anything specific, but I have no pre-planned comments for you guys. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Monique. Hi, Hi it's Monique. Um, so I just wanted to give a little bit of an update um, on Oceanfront Walk. We had a, um, a meeting with the council office um, this past week, and it was a discussion on how we can um, work better together to provide services to the boardwalk. And so some of the issues that we were be, um, we've been facing and kind of just adding on to Chiefs Moore's uh, town hall meeting last night um, in regards to uh, it being a shared responsibility is that um, what was what's happening with LAPD in addressing the issues on the boardwalk is we may be arresting and citing, um, and I get a lot of complaints regarding, hey, you're arresting and citing, but the tents are, are still there. So there's like a huge education piece missing. And one of the things that Nisa suggested, and I, I don't wanna take away from her um, comments, mm -hmm. is that um, it may be best to also involve the community in small groups and how can we work better together with outreach, with um, addressing crime, 
and ensuring that all city and county partners are involved. <clears throat> so I'm hoping to see some improvement on the boardwalk. Um, I can say on our end for LAPD, um, we have been arresting, we have been citing. Um, it has been difficult at some um, addressing some of the issues on the boardwalk because of um, during COVID there was there was a little bit of a moratorium on that. Um, but hoping that these little small groups um, with points of contact in the neighborhood will help improve um, a lot of the issues on Oceanfront Walk. Thank you. Hi, Monique. This is Jim Robb, real quick. So I'm the chair of the Oceanfront Walk. Uh, I think we did a walkthrough a month or so ago. Uh, I'm going to try to put a meeting together with uh, the bid and also with the um, our parks and rec. So if uh, I could get you involved in that and maybe we can try to help a little bit. And, and that would be absolutely great. BID does a um, bi-weekly walkthrough of Oceanfront Walk um, with par all partners involved. And so we can talk offline about um, joining that meeting, um, all of us joining it together. Yeah, I'll try to get Bob and everybody involved. So I'll, I'll let you know and uh, happy to help. Thank you. All right, this is Sergeant uh, Cook, if you'd like me to go next. Yes, please. Good evening, everyone. This is Sergeant Brian Cook. I'm the slow coordinator at uh, Pacific Area. Uh, just want to hammer on a couple uh, of the uh, things that Adrian was talking about earlier. Um, specifically, you'll start with the uh, the burglaries. All right, these are hot prowl burglaries that are, are uh, causing concern for us increasing in the area. That means people are home when these uh, suspects are coming and going inside their residences. This is due to open doors, open windows, unlocked uh, property. So please, even if you're home, have your door locked um, and, and, and be mindful of uh, any potential people coming in. Uh, also include second, second floor, third floor balconies, okay? Um, keep those locked, especially when you leave as well. Um, bike theft continues to be a, an issue for us in the Venice area, in fact, uh, all over Pacific. Uh, so a few things. If you, uh, if you have your bike, please uh, add a personal ID to it, uh, engrave it in there, take photos of your, your bicycle so you have uh, some evidence to show that it is actually yours, and please register it with bikeindex.org. Um, and that way, when detectives are receiving these uh, a theft report, if your bike was uh, stolen, um, they have some uh, follow-up to use in, uh, when they're conducting their investigations. Sometimes we have these task forces where we go out and we come across a large number of bicycles and, and we can't identify them because they don't have any identifying numbers on them. So please do that for us. That will help. Um, and then finally, uh, catalytic converters continues to be a countywide problem um, as we work on that. And the vehicle of choice at this point for the uh, crews conducting the thefts is uh, our Toyota Priuses. So park your cars under uh, lights, uh, in garages if you can, um, in areas that are, are, are open and visible to the public uh, if, if that is the case. And that's it from me. Thank you again for having us on. Okay. Thank you. Um, last month, we had a really long question period in it. I, I really like people to go offline if they can. But uh, we'll start with uh, public comment, Peter Friedman. Uh, Freedom. Unmute, please. Yes, I do. I, do we notice that the crime that's uh, related to the hot prowls and the residential break-ins, are, uh, are they catching these people and are they uh, noticing that it was a direct result of uh, people that are in the area or coming to the area or are they uh, homeless? So the... Uh, this is Sergeant Cook. The uh, burglaries are, uh, are generally, on, on many of them are being captured on some sort of surveillance uh, video or camera, um, ring videos, stuff like that. Um, so we are getting pictures of these folks. 
Um, some are what you might think might be persons experiencing homeless and some aren't. Um, I think they're for the most part local people. So um, it's just not necessarily uh, homeless folks, but uh, um, certainly locals. So I hope that answers your question. I think too, it's uh, it's important to this officer Acosta. Um, it's important to note one of the things that was discussed today at the meeting was some of these burglaries are similar pattern to burglaries that occurred last year. Um, at which time maybe some of these people that were apprehended are now being released. So um, some of those individuals, uh, criminal histories and criminal whereabouts are being looked at as we speak and trying to see if they might be involved in some of the burglaries that we're seeing. Ira, this is uh, Jim Uris. If I could interrupt for one second, I'd like to remind everybody that if uh, they would like to speak and they have, want to raise their hand and they're calling in from a cell phone, they need to press, uh, is I believe it's star nine um, on their phone to be able to uh, raise their hand. There's six or seven people that have called in from phones. Excuse me for interrupting. Thank you, James. Okay. We're going to go to Sean now, okay? Hi, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, Sean, we can hear you. Please ask your question. And, um, all right, then, all right. Uh, hey, hey, yo, yo. Come on, man. Really? All right, th yeah, this is for the police officer. I'd like to know, uh, why is it that if 30% of all crimes that are occurring in the entire district of CD11 are happening near the boardwalk speedway area, 30% of all crimes in the whole district, and you want to cut the, the police force in Venice by 50%. That's my question. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. I'm not sure if that uh, question was directed to us because obviously we as a police force don't want to cut our police force. That's a, a decision made uh, by okay, so city officials. Why, why don't I go ahead and handle that one? Um, so in terms of reduction in staffing or modifications to staffing or deployment, those are issues that are made by the Office of Operations and the Chief of Police based on our current deployment numbers of officers and all that. So currently for Pacific, um, every deployment period, which is 28 days, we have a department-wide transfer where resources are allocated throughout the department or reallocated. And in the last two transfers, we have seen an increase in overall net gain of officers to Pacific area, specifically uh, to address call load, calls for service, and to backfill. So in the town hall last night, there was a discussion that the Venice Beach Task Force or the beach detail has had a reduction in force. That is true, but Pacific Division as a whole has had an increase and that is to uh, deal with patrol and our calls for service. So we're, we're trying to find that equilibrium and find balance right now. But the first thing, our first obligation is to answer those calls for service. And that's what's being addressed right now by the chief of police and the office of operations. And once we get to a staffing level to address that, then the chief and the office of operations will reevaluate um, our deployment at the Venice Beach detail. So I hope that answers that question. Historically, historically, reporting district, district 1431, which is the reporting district that covers uh, Venice Beach, it's, it's the primary one, it includes the substation, Oceanfront Walk out to Pacific, Windward, that area. Um, that historically has always been one of the uh, highest crime locations within Pacific Division. And that's for all crimes. It's just it's just a high call load, high density area uh, that we've historically dealt with. So um, that's the focus. Uh, that's what we're dealing with. But in terms of deployment of officers, uh, we have what we have. And uh, we deploy them as we best can. OK, thank you. Okay. Helen. Um, yes, hi. Um, last. Um, night at the town hall, there was uh, a couple comments about the bike shop shops and the concerns about that. And some of the comments from the police sort of suggested, well, you know, we find these bikes, but we can't really prove, you know, so register them. But 
we all know that if you've got 20 bikes and one human being, uh, those, you know, come on, 19 of them at least have been stolen. So why isn't this, why, what do we need at the city level for you to be able to confiscate the bikes? I don't care if they don't go back to somebody, whoever, you know, whoever they were stolen from, because you can't prove who owns them. But meanwhile, they're just remaining there in the encampments and they're clearly stolen property. So what do we need to have in place that will allow the police to take these things away and get them out of the encampments? Thank you. <laughs> this is Sergeant Cook. So first of all, uh, we gotta be able to prove that that, that bicycle was stolen. Um, a crime report that's attached to that, that describes that bike or, or uh, you know, has information regarding that specific bicycle, um, we would have to be able to um, have a crime report that, that goes along with that bicycle for us to remove it from a particular location and take possession of it. Um, otherwise, we have to be able to prove that that bike is stolen. And, you know, if, if, if we can't do that, then we cannot make a, uh, you know, take custody of that bi particular bicycle okay. or bicycles as a, as a group. Okay, thank you. Uh, someone named E, unmute yourself. Hi, Anna. am I unmuted? Yes, unmute. Okay. You can hear me? Yes. Okay, so I have a few comments. Why has it not crossed anybody's mind to house these people rather than arrest them? Why would putting them through the justice system be a better idea than getting them a safe place right. to live? That, that's a policy decision, not for the police. Thank you. Um, um, Nick. Not... Well, yeah, so, you know, so Ira, let me, let me address that real quick, just, just briefly. Uh, we, don't, we don't arrest someone for being homeless. In other words, being homeless in and of itself is not a crime, and I want to be very clear about that. If we make an arrest, it's because there's a criminal charge associated with that individual um, and based upon a criminal investigation. So in and of itself, uh, that, that's what needs to be understood. We don't go out and just round people up and arrest them because they're homeless. Uh, we don't have the illegal authority to do that. So for clarification on that. Okay, thank you. Nick. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. I have a suggestion for the police regarding bikes. Why don't they work together with the bike shop and have a point of purchase registration? In other words, when you buy a bike, you can register right there, and then that bike shop will have your information, and that can be shared because many bikers will go to these shops again and again and again for a flat tire, broken chain, etc. And before they do the work, they can look at the uh, registration and see if the bike is stolen. I think you're really missing the mark here in terms of cooperating with the right people and those who do the bike shop. And I think a, a point of purchase registration should be something that you guys should look at. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hey everybody, this is, this is, oh, this is Captain Embrick. Sorry, I just logged on late and George got me in as a panelist. Great suggestion, by the way. We did encourage our slows to contact the, uh, the bike shops and encourage them to register a bike, uh, purchasers of new bikes to register a bike index. That would help us out greatly. If you could spread the word. Thank you. Mabe, Mabe A. Girlish or whatever. Sorry. Unmute. Yeah. Hi Go there. Um, hi there. Uh, my name is Mabe. Um, my pronouns are she, her. And um, first of all, I just wanted to say it was incredibly rude how you just cut off um, that previous speaker when she was giving the most humanistic approach to this issue is to get people housing rather than to cite them and arrest them. But my question that I have is. Um, earlier, one of the um, representatives was saying that you are making citations, you are making arrests, and that tents are still remaining. And my question is, if you could provide clarity on what you're making cites, um, citations and arrests for. Sure, and, and this is Officer Contreras. So I, I just want to give the global picture. And, and that, that statement was for an education piece only for those who get frustrated when they see that things aren't being maybe addressed um, on the boardwalk. But just so you know, um, I, I work very hard with all our outreach services. Um, it has been a great struggle for LAPD to get services when needed. 
Um, I have spent hours on the phone working with outreach. Anybody, anybody who asks me for help, I will go out of my way for. Um, the meeting that we had with CD11 was an outreach meeting. How can we work better together? Um, and when it comes to um, violations, arrests, um, the arrests are criminal activity arrests. So um, that's being addressed. So all aspects, and of course, is a balance to everything. Um, like I said, anybody who reaches out for help, I offer it first. There's always a warning um, when, I, when it comes to um, an, an education piece for the community. So to me, it's a whole holistic approach. Um, there's a balance, there's a need for enforcement at times, and there's always a need for outreach. And when accepted, I'm there to give it to them. Thank you. Next is uh, Jessica, and then writing, and that's it. Uh, I checked when we started this, and that was the, the end, and 15 minutes will be about up. Go ahead, Jessica. Hi, I just want to thank Officer Morrison for the clarity about the arrests. I mean, obviously, you find other creative ways to criminalize homeless people. And as a homeowner in Venice, I love it. My main question here is for Adrian. You mentioned the building raise earlier. You seem exceptionally relieved that a building demolition and a future development would displace, erase, or remove, even if temporarily, unhoused locals or folks. Do you mind elaborating on uh, what's happening there? Thank you. Yeah, what I meant on at that location was uh, due to the construction, obviously for their own safety, we had um, numerous individuals that had taken up residence in the alley in an actual thoroughfare um, because of their bulk items. We could not um, get them to move uh, and legally uh, because of the accumulation of, of things. But now with the construction site, they had to only again, due to their safety and the heavy equipment that was going on. Also, again, uh, like Monique said, you know, for clarification, we've had numerous complaints about that building um, due to vandalism, due to um, squatters within the building and the condition of the building itself. Okay, thank you. Uh, last person, uh, uh, Eva. Hi. Um, at the last homeless committee meeting and at last night's uh, public safety committee meeting, there's been a, a, a people alluding to gangs being involved uh, with basically the territories and encampments. I'm hoping that somebody can elaborate on this because I've seen a documentary and I've read uh, several things on the gangs in Skid Row that basically dominate the encampments and then ask them to pay. Uh, and, you know, and if they can't pay the gangs, that then they have to sell their drugs. And it's been alluded that this is happening in Venice, and it was alluded to last night as well. Can somebody please address this? Because I think that's a very serious issue. We've had some encampments that where we've had fires and there has been mess that was discovered. And I'm wondering if this is something that's new or it's been happening. Thank you. Okay, so I guess uh, I'll field that one. Um, so citywide, I can help with it. Yeah, citywide, we have found that at different times, where when when we have encampments that develop, uh, people experiencing homelessness uh, become victims of crime. Uh, they can be suspects involved in crime both ways, but generally a micro society forms and that can happen. So do we see that in the Venice area? Yeah, there are elements of that. There are gang members who have dropped out. There are people that have previously uh, had criminal convictions that find themselves in there and a hierarchy is established. For To that end, uh, we work just as vigorously to defend persons experiencing homelessness that are victims of crime, just as we do those that may be preying on them. So we're, we're aware of it, it does happen. Is it pervasive? I don't know for sure that it's pervasive. Um, do we have narcotics dealing? Yes, we do. Do we have assaults that go on in those encampments? Yes, we do. Um, and so I, I don't mean to be elusive in that answer, but I, I wouldn't say it's pervasive. I say it, 
would say that it does exist. And when we receive information regarding that, we investigate it. Okay, thank you very hey, much. Is, this, hey, this is Captain Amrick. Do you mind if I trail on uh, Captain Morrison's answer a little bit? I mean, it's it's very complete. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you're, uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so one thing I did want to contribute is that both of us served as lieutenants in gang um, assignments. And, and one of the things that we know from working in these gangs, gang assignments is that gangs are uh, organized for the purpose of a criminal enterprise. And one of the easiest ways to make money is to participate in illicit activity like this. So throughout the city of Los Angeles, throughout the country, gangs are involved in the trafficking and sales of narcotics. So we don't, we do have indicators that gangs may be involved and we can assume based off of our experience and things that we know in the past. So uh, like Chief Moore talked about, going forward, we are gonna get help from other West Bureau areas, which are gonna cycle through the Venice Beach area just to keep our, keep our undercover operations fresh and to rotate other personnel through the area. So we're gonna continue. We have been making success at, uh, on Venice Beach, but it is such a lucrative market because you have so many people who are using narcotics. It's, uh, you know, whenever you have a, a population like that, it's lucrative for people to set up a business on an illicit business, and we're working to uh, stop it as much as we can. Thank you very much. Uh, let's move quickly to board comment, please. Board as well. <laughs> Try to keep your uh, questions short and to the point. As long as you try to use your little blue hands, I think you can raise them like Ginger. Yeah. Mine's up, guys. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, thank the officers for participating in our meeting this evening. It was very informative. Thank you for being here. <laughs> okay. The elections aren't for another six months. I, um, I'm having trouble getting up my. Uh, all right, talk. My raised hand. Yeah. Um, I've had this discussion numerous times with Captains Embridge and Morrison and um, and Contreras. Um, I understand that there is a commitment to enforce no tents and no camping on um, the grass, on the concrete and on the sand. Um, I am just weighing in here to ask what progress you feel you're making at enforcing those ordinances. Okay, Mark, hey, this is Captain Embrick again. So the beach detail goes out and enforces 60, uh, 6344 on a daily basis. But remember, we deal with people, not property. So when we do go out and do enforcement, our goal is number one, to gain voluntary compliance. So a lot of times they can get people to move. And if they don't, then they're issued a citation the, the shortfall, which we're trying to fix right now is we're working with uh, Rec and Parks because uh, their legal uh, counsel provided them different advice. And I think, it I believe what Chief Losarelli explained to me was that it is related to their interpretation of the moratorium on 5611. And they believe that 6344, which is the price to the parks would fall under the same idea. Therefore, they are they have a different view on 6344 enforcement than the police department does. We are conducting enforcement. We are working with Rick and Parks to bring them online as well. Quick follow up. Who is their legal advisor? Also the city attorney's office? Uh, they have their own legal counsel. I do not remember the individual's name. But he's in house? In house with Rec and Parks. Thank you. That's very interesting. And, and, and Mark, if I, if I can just add on to that to echo what Senior Lead Officer Contreras spoke about earlier, um, that, that's part of why we're trying to renew our relationships, or I, I shouldn't say renew because we've always had them, but Deep improve deep. the efficiency uh, to which we work in getting people housed. Because a lot of times if we can get someone uh, to voluntarily accept resources or to even have resources available and have them properly funded, uh, when they take advantage of those resources, then a lot of times they surrender property or their property goes with them and we would see a reduction. So there's a renewed effort there that has to do with outreach uh, in conjunction with the enforcement. So I want to make that clear that it's, it, it's a 360 view. It's not just specifically... Uh, in terms of us going out there doing enforcement. 
Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, any other board comment? Question. Quick. It's Jim Rob. I've noticed uh, a lot of the homeless have left off of North and South Venice between Pacific and Dale, and also on Rose, but that seems to be affecting the boardwalk, and it seems to <laughs> add to the amount of tents uh, and everything there. So are, it, are they getting housed, or are they just moving to the boardwalk is the question that I would like to ask. Where are they going? Most of them going that have moved from those two locations. Hi, this is this is Officer Contreras. So I can say for my area, um, just from the people that I know, some of them, I, I, I don't know the location they've ended up. Um, a lot of my encampments um, seem to have been pushed north. Um, so a lot of the individuals that were on North and South Venice are now, um, you know, closer to the north end of my of A11 of my area. Um, I'm not quite sure why you'll also see some pushed onto Pacific between North and South Venice. Um, some onto market and, and so forth. Okay, thank you. I said before, I'm I'm here to help. So let let me know if I can get Bob and and the bid to help us out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ira, could I ask a follow up question? Well, does anybody else have a question, and then you'll be the last. <laughs> All right, go ahead. You're last. I just want to ask Captain Zemberich and Morrison. To what extent have you been able to engage Lhasa and St. Joseph in the same manner that they were so sec sec successfully engaged in Penmar? Um, my understanding is they house something like 70 people and, and, and Nisa Cove has invited a similar kind of effort um, from other organizations and parts of um, Venice. Um, can the boardwalk be next? So I think part of that will be, we, we did have success on Pinmar, uh, and that was due to a lot of factors that came together at once. And I think part of that will be a debriefing of what happened on Pinmar, what was effective. Um, and that's also a funding issue too. I mean, it, to, to move 70 people into temporary shelter uh, comes at great expense. And so that's part of the consideration when we work with uh, LASA and with St. Joseph Center. So um, we've all been involved in that process. We're looking to replicate it. The council member has told us that he's looking to replicate that. And so we'll see uh, to what degree we can. And you know, only the future will tell. But areas within this, uh, Oceanfront Walk obviously is, is one, Third and Rose is another, and and then Venice and Globe is another. Those are major encampments that we'll be looking to replicate that effort to in the future. Um, but but that's a multifaceted response. It's not strictly the police department. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank all of the police officers who came and stayed. Thank you. This was uh, something we've been missing, and I think we're all uh, very happy <laughs> to get this information. Um, all right, let's move on. Government reports. We have, um, I didn't see Nisa come in, did she? Yeah, she's here. Oh, great. All right, Nisa, and then, uh, oh, wait, is Janet here? Janet Turner. No, no she's she, not. She has, she has other meetings. All right, let's go, Nisa. Sorry. All right, oh, wait, I'm she's here. here. There oh. she is. Got her in? Okay, Janet. Yeah, I'll let Janet in. Sorry, but go ahead, Nisa. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Okay, so you still want me to go first? All righty. Um, so everyone, uh, thank you for uh, being here tonight and for hopefully staying sane through all this craziness. I think Zach is here to talk about COVID, but just uh, another reminder that cases are on the rise. Please wear a mask. Please socially distance. Um, holidays are coming up. Uh, being with with people that you are not usually with in your household. And I'll let Zach cover the rest of that. But I also, I want to give a, a, a big thank you and shout out to Soledad and uh, whoever else was involved the night that we were, um, we were told about the family of, um, there actually, it was a family of six. Uh, it was a, a mom and a dad and 
uh, four kids. I think people thought it was three. It was actually uh, four kids that were in tents on Pacific Avenue. And we got out there right away after we were alerted by LAPD and Soledad and her neighbors that they were there and they are now safely in a motel. I went to visit them today and got the kids some skateboards so they can do something um, since all they have is a small parking lot over there. But um, they were very, very grateful. So just thank you to those of you who are involved in making that happen. And, uh, and thank you for the LAPD for the, um, the update from the town hall. I think it was, it was really successful. We, uh, we do have the recording for those of you who are not able to attend. I believe it's on our Facebook page. I haven't gone to check, but I was told that it is there. So please pass it on to anyone who wasn't able to attend. And one of the things that uh, Chief Moore stated is that we are living through some of the most challenging times that this city has ever faced. And that comes with all of these very challenging and complicated um, issues that we discuss every month with you guys. So um, it's uh, just, you know, put it in perspective when we, we discuss this that hopefully we don't have to do it for another hundred years, uh, but we are, we are dealing it with, with it now. And um, I thank you for your patience as we, as we try to find solutions to all of this. And Chief Moore um, was also really vocal about his support for reimagining the responsibilities of the department so that the officers out there can focus their energy on the violent crimes and where they're needed most in our community. So that was, that was nice to hear. And because of the public safety concerns in Venice, the, the chief has also approved the immediate implementation of uh, 26 beach detail officers dedicated to our, our area. So we will, um, we will have more officers out on the street uh, in, in that area. And I, I don't know, I need to talk to, this was all discussed and I found out about it last night. So I want to talk to all the senior leads about what that looks like. And I'm happy to share that information once I, once I learn it from them. Uh, another thing I wanted to bring up is the substitute motion that, uh, that was brought to council uh, about a couple weeks ago and discussing 4118 and talking about uh, enforcement. There seems to be a lot of talk about enforcement lately and how we can remove encampments from certain areas in our neighborhoods. And I, I think we're all starting to learn if we haven't learned it already that when we continually enforce and criminalize homelessness, it does nothing for our society. It gets us stuck in lawsuits. And, and some of the things that the councilman brought to, what the councilman, um, he introduced a substitute motion at council. And it was specifically talking about the, that we have to stop enforcing. We have to stop enforcing our way out of homelessness. We have to find housing. We have to find resources, just like um, Captain Morrison and, and Officer Contreras. They as well are seeing the need for resources out there or else they are doing the work that is not intended for an LAPD officer. Uh, the councilman states that people should not be living in encampments throughout Los Angeles. And it, it's reasonable to prohibit sleeping and lying on our sidewalks, which 4118 states, if we have genuine alternatives um, that are available and accessible. So similar to what happened at Rose Penmar, Mr. Ryavec just asked, how do we do that elsewhere? We do it if we have the housing and our communities demand the housing. Uh, Judge Carter is demanding the housing and it, it needs to be something that all of our communities come around together and demand of our city and demand of our city council. 
Um, without the housing alternatives, the ban on sleeping presented by the city attorney only pushes encampments deeper into residential neighborhoods. No one is going to be satisfied. More people are going to die on our streets and more housed neighbors are going to see, um, you know, what some people in this community like to call blight, but I would like to, you know, restate that as a, a failure on the part of our society to take care of everyone. Uh, Mike also proposed commandeering and uh, uh, underutilized hotels and motels. We need something immediate. We need something, we, we're always gonna need permanent supportive housing. We're gonna need it in all of our communities, but what we need right now is emergency action and using these hotels and motel, motels will provide the fastest options for getting people off of the streets and into housing. And, uh, and the encampment to home program. We need that citywide and uh, we need it to rapidly rehouse people. It, it needs to, it, it cannot be just, just building anymore. It has to be finding alternatives that are quick. And uh, the councilman also called for the US District Court Judge Carter to facilitate a settlement agreement between the city, county, and unhoused residents and their advocates, similar to the one Carter brokered in Orange County uh, that led to thousands of unhoused residents uh, coming off the streets. And in the most recent hearing with the city council held before Judge Carter, Carter stated that he would be ready for any settlement talks council wants to initiate. So, uh, you know, we need to, it needs to happen. It needs to be demanded by the, by the city council that we have these discussions. And um, I just wanted to also read off some, some tweets by uh, uh, reporter Megan Kuniff, who was at the last hearing with the city council and Judge Carter. Uh, this is talking about 4118 and, and also uh, just enforce, enforcing our way mm -hmm. out of homelessness. Uh, Judge Carter said, all the talk about the ordinance is misplaced. This court is not going to allow one thing to happen unless you have housing. This conversation has gotten turned so backwards. It's nonsense. Where's my housing? She says, Joe Buscaino said something about three tons of human waste. I missed the context, but that sure got my attention. Carter says, regarding the ordinance proposal, He'll support ordinances so long as they're constitutional. And then Judge Carter said, the problem is the discussion's backwards. This court's never going to allow anything unless the housing is there. And then. All right, Nisa, can we wind no, up? No, I think, this, you know what? It's, it's important that we get through this. Um, okay. Important. Well, this is only half of the story, though. I mean, if we're going to get through this, you're you're calling on Joe these tweets. Let's read all the tweets because she also called Councilman Mike Bonin out for not having solutions. And Ira, we have a schedule. We're one hour into this meeting. This section of the, the we're supposed to be 15 minutes done, and we have five more pu public speakers from government. This is insane. We got to get yes, this. Yes, it's insane. Stuff. So let's not have questioning that you forced on us. All righty. I'm, I'm happy to end there. Um, basically, the point is we need to come together as a community, as a city, and find housing solutions. So Thank my you. apologies for going over time. I think what was discussed is important. And uh, I, I apologize for taking up so much of your time. But the <laughs> council member won't even look at alternatives that are cost effective for the community. We absolutely are. He per owes, Judge Quarters, that is all happening right now. He owes, that has been. Uh, uh, this is why we're not going to have questioning anymore. We can't have cross conversations. As Jim pointed out, we have a very long agenda. I was against the questioning from the beginning, and everybody said they wanted it. So let's either we have long meetings, 
with questioning. Yes, we can't, or we can't have it like one way. We can't have it both ways. We have to decide what we want to do. And if Nisa's here talking about this, and people want to know. People want to know what's going on. This is not fair. This isn't right. What is it right? I'm happy to talk to anyone who wants to talk to me outside of, of this board meeting. Um, <laughs> And I'll continue sure. with what I what I did. Nice. I was pretty much at the end, but I'm happy to talk to anyone outside of the meeting. I haven't gotten a return email from you, Nisa. Okay, and uh, Nisa, I don't want to belabor it, but I'm still waiting for the status of putting up the no oversized vehicle signage on the 300 block of Main Street. Okay, I'm not going to talk about um, individual constituent. Um, requests in the board meeting. I don't, I don't think that's fair. I'm sure there's a lot of people who have individual requests and this is definitely not the format for it. Thank you. Excuse me, I'm a board member. I, I'm not a, making an individual request. I'm making an individual, uh, I'm making a, a request on behalf right. of my capacity as a board member. All right, uh, let's move on. Uh, I just, Ira, just in all fairness, Mark uh, is making a very valid point the point is, is that parking and transportation put that request in a year ago, and we still don't have the overheight vehicle things there. That was something that you were supposed to have sent a letter to the city about, and the councilman has still not responded to it. Thank you, Jim. Okay, thank you, Jim. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's move on. Can I just, I think, I think our point is this, is we want to talk to Nisa, and I apologize, but we're getting... Council, a city councilor who isn't here to defend. Jamie, I think you froze. Breaking up, Jamie. That if we're going, sorry. My point is, is that if we're going after another city council member, they should be here to defend themselves. And I also think it's worth having the full conversation. I know shared housing has asked for money over and over again. That is an alternative that is out there that the council member just recently started looking at, but it's a proposal that's been on his desk for years. We have affordable solutions to put people into housing. That's the conversations we should be having. Not having a tweet conversation about what another city council member said in a lawsuit. Let's have a conversation about Venice. How can we help the people on the streets and the people who are living in our community, whoever they are, the unhoused or the housed? We have a board member who works on solutions. He's working on micro homes. We just house 70 people. Yes, but at what cost to taxpayers? That is a temporary. So okay, guys, come on. I'm Let's stop sorry. We to we cut can this talk off. offline. Um, we, yeah. You council. can't have it both ways. We have to do the work. We have to do the work. And the work is sitting on the council member's desk. I said you have so many alternatives that are reasonable. Right, this and we are working on it right now. So maybe if we all come together, instead of continually being divisive within this community, there will be some, th some change. And I thank Officer Contreras for making the point that when we start working together and collaborating, that we will see that yeah. it will not come if it is always based in arguments and finger pointing. So I will continue to work with this community, the ones that want to work with me and to create. You know, is it possible for us to just move on now? I feel like, you know, we're already an hour in. I think we're being really disrespectful to some of the agenda items on this. I, I agree, we gotta get on track here, come on. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna end to say my point is, I think it's fair we get the truth. So and that we're supposed to shut her up now? No. I, I think it's fair we get the truth and that we ask for it. That's all I'm saying. Done. Nobody's done. Freddie. You're here. Janet you're Turner's talking. here, Ira. Oh, Janet. Uh, let's have Janet talk because she has another meeting to go to. Go ahead, Janet. Where are you? Uh, hi. Good evening, everyone. Well, first, uh, I send a... Uh, um, uh, many thank yous uh, and uh, from the congressman who is deeply honored and grateful to be able to continue as your congress member uh, for another session. But I um, uh, wanted to tell you about some interesting legislation that I think you'll like. On October 30th, the congressman introduced the Prevent Homelessness Act. Um, this act, um, it, of course, is to combat the nation's growing homelessness crisis. 
Specifically, the bill authorizes $500 million in grants annually to establish a housing stabilization fund to cover expenses such as rent, utilities, legal services, or other short-term payments calculated to increase housing stability. Um, it's supposedly many people fall into homelessness because of it, just one bill that they didn't expect. So just wanted to let you know he's working on that. Thank you. And, um, and I also wanted to let you know that the Congressman actually got a bill passed and signed by the president. On November 2nd, uh, the Congressman's bill- Which president? by President Trump. Oh, okay. On November 2nd, the president signed into law the Empowering Olympic, Paralympic and Amateur Athletes Act, a bill that Rep. Lou introduced. Um, uh, it was bipartisan. And the objective of that bill is to protect um, amateur athletes from sexual, emotional, and physical abuse. So, but it's just quite remarkable to have, that he got one through and signed. So um, uh, I hope that cheers everyone up a little yeah. bit. Uh, and I'm going to let you go back to your meeting. Um, thank you. And thank you so much for letting me sure. stop in. Thanks, Janet. Um, OK. Let's see, Bridge Housing. Uh, Liliana's not here. You got Dexter and Zach from uh, Sheila's office. Oh, Zach, here. I saw. All right, thanks, sir. if you could give a judicious report on I'll be brief, Ira, you know I'm always fast. Hi, friends. <laughs> uh, it's Dexter. Uh, very pleased to be bringing you the, um, the information about the bridge home. Um, the reduction in dual residency through storage, we expect to proceed apace. Uh, the storage should be received on site this week. Um, so that's a really hopeful sign. Uh, we're building a partnership with the United Way to work on day-to-day -day issues uh, related to residents living in the special enforcement zone. We're expecting that's going to start in the first or second week of December and will help doing um, uh, assisting folks with uh, kind of day-to-day -day maintenance of their areas, uh, maintenance of ADA, things of that nature. Um, that's all tied in with the United Way, with LA CAN, some of our partners there. Um, that's really exciting program. We're looking forward to it. Um, we also uh, have a strong hope for some new shared housing programs. The council members been meeting with uh, various different providers of shared housing. I've been meeting with various different providers of shared housing um, to, to vet them on behalf of the council member. Um, and we're, we're hopeful that we're going to be able to spin up some shared housing solutions here in the not too distant future. Um, really, really excited about some of those possibilities. I think that um, they'll help us really use the bridge home as it was intended, as a facility where people come, get their lives together uh, to the best of their ability, and then transition into a, a housing circumstance that works for them. Um, and speaking of transitioning in and out of the bridge home, we've got good housing statistics from both PATH and SPY this month. Um, so uh, good numbers, they were increasing even this week. And we also have some good news on the PATH side, which is the adult side, that um, they have now declared a maximum capacity as they're allowed to by the Department of Health. And that maximum capacity is 75. Um, and that's uh, 75 plus their five beds that they're keeping open for Project Room Key. So uh, tenants who are in Project Room Key, if Project Room Key is closed, they're keeping those beds open in case those people come back. So they're at 80% capacity. That's going to be their pandemic maximum. That's been approved by the Department of Health. Um, and so if they house people out of the bridge home now, um, they'll be able to replace those people with intake from folks on the streets. And they should be able to take in a good number of folks on the streets as they, they work to house people. Um, one of the partnerships we're looking at is looking at between 15 and 20 folks um, that they'll be able to house by the end of the calendar year. So we're um, extremely excited about that partnership in particular. Um, then I wanna also piggyback off of what Officer Contreras said about the small groups. Um, which is that we, uh, we're, we're working on establishing a couple of smaller groups of neighbors who are particularly interested in specific aspects of these issues uh, in order to work together for some constructive solutions. Um, as always, 
Uh, if you want me to answer any specific things, please don't hesitate to email those to me before the meeting. Um, same goes for members of the public. Uh, please don't hesitate to email me any, any questions or information that you'd like answered me uh, by me before this meeting. Um, you know, give me at least a day so that I can put that together, but I'd be happy to present that in my report. Okay. Uh, that's the sum total of what I've got this week, except that Council Member Bonin would like to specifically encourage you um, to read his tweets of November 5th, um, where he makes some clarifying statements about some of the work that we're doing, um, that he's been doing specifically on, uh, on housing and homelessness. Um, and so he wants to encourage you to, to read those in particular. And I wanna thank the Neighborhood Council as always for the opportunity to be before you today. Okay. It is a pleasure and a thank joy. Thank you. Um, Zach. Hi there, Zachary Geidzik with LA County Supervisor Sheila Kuehl. I had a great joke I was about to make about how we had an election. I'm gonna skip that so that we can move ahead quickly. Um, we're really excited <laughs> Measure J has passed. Um, it will allocate 10% of uh, already generated LA County revenue specifically for homelessness, housing diversion, youth and mental health services. It's estimated to be, to be between 360 and 490 million. We are thrilled about this. This was authored by LA County Supervisor Shelley Kuehl. So now I'm gonna talk about COVID uh, and I'm just gonna get right into it. Our cases are surging right now. They're reaching the daily case rates that we saw during the summer um, of between you know over 2000 cases upwards of 3,000 cases, it's really high. I know everyone is exhausted, everyone is tired of this, no one wants to have to continue the pandemic, but the pandemic is not done with us. So we need to be careful right now. We need to not make plans to spend a lot of time with our friends and family. We have specific, um, reg specific guidance on the LA County Public Health website about you know, spending time with family that is in the safest possible way. But honestly, the safest possible way right now is via Zoom, phone calls, FaceTime. I'm not gonna be seeing my own mother for Thanksgiving. She does not live far away. She's at Ocean Park in Bundy. I can get to her in 10 minutes, but I'm not gonna be seeing her and I'm not gonna be seeing her for Hanukkah either. We're gonna be doing it via Zoom. Everybody needs to plan to practice their Zoom meetings during this holiday season, because right now it's just not safe to meet unless you absolutely have to. And frankly, you know, turkey isn't that delicious. It is delicious, but it's not that delicious. So I really wanna recommend that everybody stay safe, stay at home whenever you can. If you go outside, put on that mask, have hand sanitizer with you. I keep it in my back pocket whenever I leave the house. Um, if you need testing, we have a huge amount of testing capability right now. Um, we can test upwards of 250,000 people per week. Only about 100,000 people are getting tested. So if you have a sniffle, go get tested um, for COVID-19. You can do so on the LA County website to schedule your test. It is free of charge. Um, it'll ask for insurance. If you don't feel comfortable, don't include it. Um, we have lots of testing available and I will leave it at that. Feel Thank free you, also. Zach. Very good. Very good. Uh, uh, Freddie, your hand's been up, but you have a spot on the agenda and it's now. All right, thank you. I'm going to keep it also short so you guys can, uh, can move forward. Um, <laughs> Why we like fighting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, as you know, I sent an email out to the whole board um, about the bylaw changes. And um, this is due to the new community interest stakeholder ordinance and uniform age ordinance, um, as linked in my email. I've also detailed exactly the changes I've made. Uh, on the bylaws in conformance uh, and to adhere to those two ordinances, um, as well as a PDF of the track changes, a Word doc of the final change and a PDF of the final version as well. It has been sent to NC support and roster so it can be updated. Um, and my director is also copying that email. Um, also, I will be sending out another email later tonight uh, with uh, my report that I'm gonna give you in a more comprehensive version, but I'm gonna give you the highlights. Uh, uh, there are some dates coming up for the planning and land use training for those that might not have uh, completed it in October or just are interested in learning more about planning and land use items. Um, no, uh, November 30th from 6 to 7, December 7th from 5.30 to 7, December 11th from 2 to 3.30, and December 15th from 4 to 5.30 p.m. Again, this is going to be on the email um, with more details. Um, also, please note that December 1st is another meeting with Bonk, 
and they will be reviewing uh, the social media policy as they have been since October 6th. Uh, please uh, review that, make any edits, uh, any changes you'd like on that policy because that will be affecting all neighborhood councils with regards to use of social media. Um, and uh, elections, uh, it's coming up for neighborhood councils. Uh, for candidate, candidate registration is uh, already open, but for Region 11, you know, it's more formally uh, formalized February 6th. But again, candidates could start uh, creating their portal um, at the city clerk's site uh, since they do manage elections for neighborhood councils. Um, so candidate filing period runs from February 6th to March 23rd. And uh, in my email, I'll give you more details on that. Other than that, you guys can uh, continue on with the meeting. I will be here until uh, uh, 9.30 in which I will run out of hours for the remainder. <laughs> because I have another meeting coming up, so. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be about halfway through. All right. Um, third of the way through. Okay, thank you. Uh, VNC announcements, uh, my report, uh, the two things that I've written the same repeats, but just as a note, last uh, month, we uh, created a, an ad hoc committee on the bridge housing uh, situation. Um, we can't do it. It's not the Brown Act. It was the uh, city attorney was very clear that it has to do with a different uh, legal act. So uh, there is no ad hoc committee. However, uh, Vicki is going to be running a work group task force to get information, they will have no motions, only discuss, not even discussions. They're going to have people come and do research and get information to report back to me and the board. So that, that, that was a big change and there's no way that the, they'll allow that. The reason is uh, the most important people to be on that are within 500 feet of the project. And nobody within five, not the board members, non-board members, nobody within 500 feet can be on that committee. So it's silly to have a committee. Um, a RAC, RAC, uh, I did, uh, I pulled a, a, a boner last, uh, last night. The RAC meeting was the day before our meeting and I didn't make it. So um, I, I, I hope Mark uh, made it. <laughs> He's very uh, organized. And I'll be talking to him about uh, what went, went on with the agenda. Thank you. Sorry, Ira, but I didn't make it either. <laughs> no, that's OK. Um, I could yell at you, but I can't. We'll <laughs> no, I check completely in with Matt. forgot. <laughs> we'll check in with Matt and, and see what came out of it. <laughs> OK, great. Um, all right, uh, that's Rack. Now I have to get used to not the day after the meeting, it's the day before the meeting. Right. Uh, Lank, Ivan, anything on Lank? No. Okay, thank you. Um, no. uh, anything budget advocates? Hugh. Well, I'll mention they that they, they, published, they published their monthly yeah. uh, report. If you want to read it, you can go to budgetadvocates.com and read their reports. Yes. I was going to say I was going to do that for you. Um, outreach. Sima. Oh, you can't talk. Oh, do you want to give me a report? I'm really sorry. I sound, I, I don't really have a report and I'm really sorry okay. that I sound this way this evening. <laughs> no, it's okay. Don't hurt yourself. Your voice will get worse. Uh, all right, I have an election report. Okay. Am I, am I still on? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah okay. we can hear you. Everybody says that. Do you hear me? And anytime anybody says, do you hear me? The answer is yes. Well, I don't want to be talking into this into cyberspace, you know. Okay, so a, a few things. We're moving ahead. We're trying to put together our calendar. Um, we just got the final draft of the election manual from the city clerk. It came in Friday, which, believe it or not, was the same day that filing began in, in other regions, which is, I don't know what they were thinking. Um uh, something I'd like to, um, I was going to jump in when Freddie was talking, but I'd, I'd like to do it now. 
Freddie, um, I've been trying to get a training for our committee chairs and other people in our council that need to run Zoom meetings. Um, I know I'm going to be one of them, and I'm not sure how to do it. Could you maybe, since you're the tech guru, um, <laughs> you know, could, could you maybe set up a, a training for our committee chairs and anybody else that wants to learn how to run a Zoom meeting, how to share things? Because we've had several committee meetings fall apart because of this, right? So that's a request for Freddie. Right. Um, the, uh, I met with the outreach committee. We went over a bunch of things. They had some interesting ideas of what to do. We're still looking at it. Um, like I said, we're putting together the calendar. I, I want to, Freddie corrected himself. I, I want to be clear though, filing for our council and our region does not begin until February 6th. Those are other regions that have already opened. So please don't start trying to file because you can't do it yet. We'll let, we'll let you know when you're ready, to, you know, before we're ready to go. Um, we're trying to figure out how to do events. The city doesn't want us to do in-person events. So we've been talking to people and trying to explore ways that we can do some of the things that we usually do, like our uh, candidate forum, how to do it virtually. Because uh, it's something that's very important. The big thing we're looking at now is how do we get information out to as many of our stakeholders as possible for two things. The first thing is, how do you run for the board? And the second thing is, how do you vote? Because there are two steps now. You're going to have to request a vote by mail ballot. It's not like the, the you know, presidential election. It's not just going to come to you. You have to take an assertive act to request the ballot. So we'll get, again, more information on that. Um, we looked into, you know, we're fine, trying to finalize our budget. Um, we looked into doing a door-to-door -door mailing, which is through the post office. It's probably beyond our reach in terms of the budget. It would consume, it would consume way more of our budget and, uh, and we're not gonna have money to really to do anything else. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to do that. Um, the last thing is um, we need volunteers. We need people to help with different things. Please, anybody who would like to work on the elections, anybody can do it unless you file to be a candidate. You can work on it before, but once you become a candidate, then you cannot work on the elections for the whole board, you know, for the, for, for the big picture, because at that point, you're gonna to wanna to be working on it for yourself, which has always been our philosophy is to have the candidates do a lot of the outreach and we try to help them do that. So right now is the time, if anybody would like to help, we need ideas. And we need we we need help. Okay, if anybody would like to contact me, you have more questions. Um, you can get us at elections at venicenc.org, and we're starting to get our web page together too. And I'm done. <laughs> Okay, Ira, um, we've let in uh, Mr. Gleason um, as a panelist, if you want to introduce him for the report. Ira, you're, you're muted, pal. <laughs> you're Thank you. Good reason. <laughs> uh, we'll have, we have six people, 30 seconds each. Public comment, they have their hands wait, raised. Wait, wait. 6H. 6H, we're on, Ira. The present, we're still in presentations. All right. Well, I thought we get rid of them easily. All right. No. Um, well, there's public comments. All right, go ahead. Um, this is more uh, announcements. Dennis Gleason, 
Uh, will you introduce yourself, please? Because we got the uh, email from uh, Council Member Buscano. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. President. Honorable members, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. I, uh, I know you were all were expecting the council member, but hopefully I can pinch it for him. I, I know this issue like the back of my hand. I want to give a special hello to George. We shared a lunch together at the Congress of Neighborhoods about four years ago, and it's really great to see you again. And I'm really happy to see that you're still a board member on the Neighborhood Council. So I just want to very quickly let you all know um, just a little bit about myself. I'm an Angelino as well. I don't live in Venice, but I do live in Hollywood. <laughs> So I, I understand this issue and I, you know, I, I've, I've been listening since the very start of the meeting. Homelessness is a very complicated issue. And, and I know that the fact that you are all participating on a volunteer basis here on a, on a Tuesday night um, really speaks, speaks a lot. So I just want to say thank you to everyone that's, that's participated um, and, and let you guys know, I, I understand both from a perspective as a staff member, but I'm also an Angelino. I am subjected to the laws that the city council passes and the policies of the city council. And so, um, this is very personal to me and, and I get a sense from, from a lot of folks I've talked to in the last couple of weeks that, you know, the city is, is really in dire shape. And, and I just had a friend of mine tell me yesterday he's moving back to Denver, partly because of, of financial reasons, but also, as he told me, the city is dying around me. And, and if, if you feel, if you hear a little bit of passion in my voice, it's because I woke up this morning, I went to a, a um, our largest encampment in Harbor City in our district in Council District 15 at 8 a.m. We had a homeless services day with Inner City Law Center, with Harbor Interfaith, our main service provider of the area, with LASA. Um, we had a Department of Mental Health there, and we even had needle exchange there. And I just, I just want to start by saying that that our position from the council member and for our, our whole council office has always been all of the above is that we, any solution that is presented to us from bridge housing, permanent supportive housing, portable restrooms, showers, needle exchange, drop boxes, um, we're all in on all of that. But part of that comprehensive solution does involve comprehensive sanitation cleanups. And I, I kind of want to start by explaining a little bit about the difference between a care cleanup and a care plus cleanup. Um, because it's, it's really based upon uh, Los Angeles Municipal Code 5611, 5611 which uh, regulates the storage of personal property in public areas. And that kind of dictates why we as a city have two different methods of, of conducting homeless encampment cleanups. Um, the reason why there's two different teams uh, there's portions of that law that allows the city to conduct certain cleanup activities without any sort of prior notice. One of those is uh, ADA passage. Anytime that there is not a 36 inch path of travel on a sidewalk, the Bureau of Sanitation or really any city department is authorized to come in and move that property in order to make, make way um, along the sidewalk there. The other thing that the care teams do or did, and I will get to that shortly, is bulky item pickups. The, the municipal code basically says that every unhoused person in the city is legally allowed to keep 60 gallons worth of personal property. I know that's kind of a complicated technical term, but it's, it's basically a blue recycling bin with its lid, lid closed. And we chose that measurement because we wanted to basically allow one shopping cart per person without saying a shopping cart. And it's, it's roughly the amount of, of quantity of personal property that would fit in the shopping cart. So anytime that we want to enforce that sort of provision where, where we limit someone's personal property and that we do a cleanup, we have to notice it with at least a 24 hours notice and no more than 72 hours notice. And when we do those notice cleanups, that's what's called a, a care plus cleanup. And 
another major difference of the, the Care Plus team is it's a lot more comprehensive. It has nine employees, it has a few maintenance laborers, it has um, environmental compliance inspectors, it has some, some truck drivers, some heavy equipment operators, and they actually come in, um, and I've been to several of these cleanups. A, a Care Plus cleanup will cordon off the block and they'll do one block at a time. And basically the, the city personnel will come in and they'll give everyone a half hour notice. And, and everyone that's in that, that one block uh, cleanup zone will be given half an hour to take all of their personal property, anything that they wanna take outside of that cleanup zone. Now, the way the ordinance was supposed to work is that we would only let them take 60 gallons worth of, of personal property out. But the way it works in, in practice is we really let them take whatever they can remove outside of that cleanup zone in a, a 30 minute period. After everyone that is, that is on that block has, has time to take their personal property out of there, regardless of the size, it'll be cordoned off and the sanitation environmental compliance inspectors will go from one end of the block to the other and they'll separate anything that's clean personal property that's that's over that 60 gallon limit and was left inside the cleanup zone they'll separate it from soiled personal property so linens bedding clothing anything that is soaked in urine feces infested with fleas rodents mice anything like that is is separated and disposed of and then the other piles any sort of health hazards so that would be you know feces itself, buckets of feces, urine, sharps, uh, syringes, all of that is separated and, and disposed of immediately. And they go from one end of the block to the other. They take away any bulky items. That's anything that doesn't fit in a 60 gallon recycling bin with the lid closed. And the final step, they will pressure wash any surface, the sidewalks, anywhere there was any sort of material that, that kind of hardened on the sidewalk. And the very final step is they'll apply a bleach solution to, to sanitize the sidewalks. And I know I'm going into very graphic detail here about what happens, but the, the reason why these, these comprehensive cleanups are important is it is a much higher level of cleanliness and sanitation. Um, the other point I really wanna get, that, get out there is that uh, we've changed the, changed the way we do these cleanups. And now the fire department comes in and offers COVID testing. Uh, anyone that is asked to leave the cleanup zone is offered, um, a shower, we bring portable showers in and restrooms as well as the COVID testing. And on days when, when the temperature is really high, we'll bring in a bus and allow people to sit on an air conditioned bus, of course, socially distant, at least six feet apart and, uh, and allow them to, to wait, wait out the cleanup and then return when it's done. Something I wanna be absolutely clear on is that no one is forced to leave. It's not a sweep. Everyone who was on that block is allowed to come back in once the comprehensive cleaning is done. And there's a lot of heavy equipment in there. They bring in, in front end loaders sometimes because you have a lot of, of accumulated personal property, a lot of bulky items, and the block is closed off and everyone is moved, moved off of it because it allows for a more comprehensive cleaning and it also protects the safety of the unhoused residents that, that live on that block. So once COVID started, the city council halted uh, Care Plus cleanups. And, and to, be, to be perfectly correct, what the, the council action said was to, to halt the enforcement of the provisions of municipal code section 5611 that requires tents to come down during the day. Sanitation uh, department interpreted that to mean, let's also stop these comprehensive cleanups because they do require people to leave their tents and to, to go outside of, of the cleanup area. And, and I know there's a, a lot of concern and the, the CDC has cited against sweeping the homeless and displacing them and has recommended allowing them to shelter in place uh, because of the COVID pandemic. 
But if you, you read that guidance, it's really about making sure that we don't displace and sweep permanently and send the homeless into the community and break ties with service providers and, and relationships that they've, they've established um, in that community itself. That's not what happens on these cleanups. It's cordoned off just for the amount of time that it takes sanitation to go through and to separate the health hazards with the, with the salvageable personal, personal property. And then everyone is allowed back into the zone and we're, we don't even limit the amount of property that they can take out and keep with them. And so I know that there's a lot of focus. We don't want COVID to spread and we want the homeless to be able to isolate and we don't want to disperse them into the community. But we also can't remain solely focused on just this one pathogen because there are other health hazards that can, can come about from poor sanitation when you don't have these regular cleanups and you're not removing to be perfectly bunt those those buckets of of human waste that that are out there and it it does result in uh dysentery it can result in typhus it can result in hepatitis a there's a, a whole bunch of other pathogens that we need to be concerned about as a city to make sure that we are are protecting both our unhoused residents and the public at, at large to make sure that everyone has has the ability to access um safe and clean and sanitary public spaces. And so the, the main difference between these, these two cleanups, what we're doing right now, the, the, the care cleanups are essentially a four-man crew. They go between the tents. They take any sort of, of uh, trash that's, that's there that's not obvious personal property, but we're not able to do the more comprehensive cleanup. And um, it, it leaves a lot of of health hazards in place. And uh, that's why we're advocating for these cleanups to resume in just the, I think, two month period between the end of July to end of September when sanitation released their report that's attached to the council file. They uh, picked up three tons of human waste just inside the special cleaning and enforcement zones that is surrounding the, the bridge home shelters. And so that just gives you some idea. That's, that's just the 23 shelters that the city has opened. That's not comprehensive cleaning at the rest of the encampments around the city. So it just gives you an idea of, of the amount of, of health hazards, of human waste, of urine, of, of sharps and needles that, that are out there. And it's, it's important to do these comprehensive cleanups because it protects uh, public health at large. And uh, I, I want to open it up for any questions. As I said, I know this issue very well, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Dennis, can I ask you what's the timing on the councilman's motion? Absolutely. We don't have a date scheduled for council. Our preference and what we've requested from the council president is that it gets scheduled on November 24th, which is the same day as the ordinance amendments uh, to 4118 and 5611. We don't have confirmation on that. I have a meeting with their staff tomorrow afternoon, and I'm hoping to get some confirmation that we'll get that item scheduled at that date. Dennis, it's unclear to me. Has it been through committee yet? It has not gone through committee. It is pending in the Energy and Environment Committee, but that committee, I'm sorry, Energy, Climate Change, and Environmental Justice is uh, the proper name of the committee. It uh, is chaired by the council president, so she has the sole authority to decide, number one, whether to waive it from committee and send it to the full council from dis for discussion, and also whether to schedule it for council as her dual role as both the committee chair and the council president. So, so it could be up at the same time as the motion that would restore CARE Plus cleanups to bridge housing areas. The um, just just to be clear to everyone, the the ordinance amendments are definitely going to be on the agenda on Tuesday, November 24th, because the council continued the item to that date certain, but we don't have a specific date for the the motion about resuming the care plus cleanups. Our request, though, to the council president has been to schedule it concurrently on November 24th, which is our our next meeting uh, or after this week. Thank you. Well. We have 
19 hands raised, which would literally be 10 minutes for questions. So that's closed at 14 at now 26. No, we can't do that. Um, Ira, this is the presentation, Ira. You know, there's there's public comment at public comment time. All right. And I think we've been we've been. I know. Yeah, yeah. I understand. I'm going to to comment and to keep right. us going. Okay. It, Board is, member announcements. Is what? there just a contact that people can have for Mr. Gleason if they have questions? I'm more than happy to answer right. any questions. Uh, my email address is Dennis with two N's, D E N N I S dot Gleason, G L E A S O N, at lacity.org. And I'm more than happy. I will answer any questions. I will have personal phone calls with anyone who wants to talk about this issue. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Um, all right. One minute per announcement. Any Board members, if somebody's raised their hand. Seema, what you, <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'm sorry, I wanted to ask this question when um, Ivan, right, right after Ivan's presentation, and this is specifically to Freddie. And Freddie, forgive me for putting you a bit on the spot. Freddie, are you still there? Yes. Um, I was just wondering, is there anything that Dunn is doing to help NCs with the election this year? And what policies are you putting in place since it seems that everything is on the individual NCs in terms of the elections? So, so elections are currently managed by the city clerk. Our department um, is helping city clerk in assisting each of our neighbor councils and the regions as they're going along um, with their respective rollout of uh, their elections. Um, currently region five is the first region to go up. Um, and then the second to last will be region 11, which is Venice. Um, so our department is, um, th that's the reason why we try to be a, a very um, precise with our time. Um, and that's why I'm leaving at 930 uh, because uh, we only have a certain amount of hours in a week. And when we get furloughs next year, um, when we're going to be dedicating some of our time to help out a uh, city clerk, however they need to assist our city, our, our neighborhood councils. Um, I do not know how that'll go. This will be uh, my first election as a department member, uh, but not a first election. Um, I ever experienced it before as a board member, but not as a staff member. So um, this is going to be new and I'll be asking tons of questions. And then hopefully if you ask, uh, I can relay that information to the board um, as, as requested. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Any board members have a quick announcement they want to make in 6i? Aye, aye. Okay, moving on. Treasurer's report, you Harrison. So. All right. Um, the, the first item is the approval of the uh, monthly expenditure reports for September. Uh, in September, um, we actually, the, the way the, 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 the MER is produced by the city clerk's office, um, it shows the expenditures uh, that ha took place, but if an expenditure is done by check and it's not cast, it showed as outstanding. Uh, so if you notice the Charges that actually went through were about um, uh, $1,200, and they were for more or less the normal uh, costs we have, uh, Apple One, Facebook, uh, storage, email, and um, uh, web maintenance. And then uh, two of our three um, neighborhood purpose grants went through, uh, but they, they hadn't cashed the check by the end of the month. And so they were shown as outstanding rather than uh, as spent, but that was an additional $3,500. And uh, it also shows the Apple one, but that came in in October. So that'll show up in our October report. So that's what we spent money on in September. Uh, and so I would, and if you look at the other, the report that Ira has up on there, it shows the accumulative uh, expenditures in the various categories in our budget. 
So I, I would have moved, <coughs> excuse me, moved to approve the expenditure I'll, reports. I'll second that, you. Okay. Um, hang on, yeah. I, I read, hang on a second. You got to lower everybody's hand to see if anybody has a comment on this item. All right, hold on. Oh boy, participants. Yes. There we go. There you go. Is there any any public comment on seven A? There you go. You got a public comment on. Oh, yeah, I got uh, goat puppet. Oh, sorry. Unmute. You can unmute yourself. <laughs> go ahead and unmute. I am asshole. All right, go talk. Yes. Anyway, so, I'm sorry. I don't have hands. I have only hooks. So, I see the budget is going very well. People aren't cashing checks. So, what my uh, my friend's uncle used to do, it's you might have heard of kiting checks, if, if, if you remember that from the 70s and 80s. See how old some of you are. So what I'm thinking is... And sorry, what, you're what, out of time. What? I said, sorry, you're out of time. Joey Buckets. Said, sorry, you're out of time. <laughs> Um, hi there. In looking through the expenditure reports, it looks like you haven't actually used any money to try to set up bathrooms near homeless encampments. Maybe that would solve some of the issues. Uh, instead of terrorizing homeless people, you could try that. Thank you. Okay. Hey, thank you. There's one more. Hold on. Oh, that's it. That was it. That was it. Okay, that was it. Hey. I <laughs> All right. Uh, what else do you need to do? You need to take a vote. Okay. Unless Are you ready? To <laughs> to <laughs> yeah. Ira, you abstaining? Yes. George. Yes. This is absent. I vote yes. Um, Nerez. Yes. Alik, have you shown up? No. Uh, Seema. Just give us a thumbs up, Seema. <laughs> okay, she's a yes. Uh, Alex. Yep. CJ. Yes. Brian. Yes. Uh, Jamie. Yes. Bruno. Yes. Christian. Uh, Not Brian. He's Did she show up yet? Yes. Okay. Uh, Tom McConnell, showing up? Not here. Not yet. Jim Rob. He's yes. here. He's here. I think he's got his camera off. You he can said yes. Yeah. He said yes. Mark? I guess I did that. Yes. Robert? Yes. John? John Reed? All right. Soledad? Yes. Vicky? Yes. Last chance. John? He's not muted either, so that's funny. Markham is absent. He must be out of his room. All right. 1501. Great. Okay. Hugh, before you go with 7B, um, because of uh, what they reported, should Ira and I, and I think Jim, um, right. do we all just recuse ourselves just because of what they put down? Yeah. Okay. I think so. All right. I'll recuse myself then. Okay. Uh, what happened, let me just give a little background for the rest of the board members who may not have uh, heard what exactly happened here. The uh, MPG application filed by Venice Arts, uh, which we approved last month, indicated that they had had longtime support from three of our board members. Um, the city clerk's office indicated that before they could approve that expenditure, they would need a sign off from the city attorney's office, there was no conflict. Um, there was a meeting uh, with um, Ira and the city attorney and uh, Dunn. And um, whether there was a miscommunication or, or, or what, it's not clear, but neither Dunn nor the city attorney got back to um, Ira or George or Jim to uh, 
give a ruling on whether they did or did not have a conflict. And uh, while we all personally felt there was no conflict, uh, since the city of clerk has required that, we are going to uh, ask that the council vote on this again with those three individuals recusing themselves. So uh, that's the motion. I would make the motion. Is there a second? And I guess I'm running the meeting too. Is there a second? I'll second it, Brian. Okay. Uh, I don't have access. I, I, I can't, I don't have uh, host privileges. So I don't know if there are any hands up. Um, Hugh, I just, Hugh, this is Jim Mures. Yeah, I just wonder if, because you're recusing yourself. No, I'm not recusing myself. I, you are recusing your, You. We're asking that you, Ira, and George recuse. Oh, yourself. okay, not you. All right, sorry. Not me. Understood. I don't mind at all. Thank you. I will leave the meeting. Okay. But I can't, uh, George. You can't participate. But is, does anybody have their hand up? I just made you a co-host. Okay. All right, we have three hands up. Uh, how do I call on them? Oh, here we go. Uh, all right, uh, John, you have your hand up. Do I touch the hand or? He is unmuted so he could talk. John, did you have something to say? All right, uh, the next one is Erica uh, Venice Beach. Uh, so, Hugh, you'll have to hover over her name, and you'll it. click more and or allow to talk. Well, I hovered over her name. Hi there. Can you hear me? Oh. Yes. Ira, can you make me co-host for a little bit? Okay, you got your little click. I got it in the back right there. Um, I just, this is... Ira, can you give me co-host to help out? I'll help out Hugh. Ira's not here. He's recused. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, uh, I believe okay, we've heard. Okay, can you hear me now, Hugh? Yes. Okay, so this is the public comment that are on the agenda, correct? No, this is a, a comment on the motion to approve a thousand dollar MPG for Venice. Okay, Arts. I apologize. I clicked onto the wrong one. I'm, I'm down with that. Sorry. All right. The next hand up is uh, Helen Fallon. Ira, that was, uh, I'm sorry, Hugh, that was Helen that just spoke. Oh, I th okay. Then the next hand is Erica Venice Beach. Nope, she's gone. Anelia. Hello, what's up? This is for the uh, the Venice Beach uh, Arts funding, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I'm I'm more curious as to why the uh, the council is uh, appropriating funds for what appears to be a purely aesthetic project when there are more pressing issues to be diverting uh, council refunds to. Okay. Uh, specifically the homelessness issue as that you know is kind of an epidemic right now that is killing our fellow angelinos all right thank you for your comments uh the next is uh writing hello yes hi okay i just wanted to, to clarify something uh Erica spoke, but it was Helen Fallon has not spoken, so you have to uh, have I, Helen. I, 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 she's still on the list. I, I'm just okay, going from great. top to bottom. Thank you. That's all I wanted to say. Thanks. All right. Uh, the next name is Helen Fallon. Thank you. Um, I just want to point out that this uh, NPG still isn't ensuring that the funding is ben benefiting the residents of Venice. It's pretty vague. And I do not understand how workshop materials are necessary during uh, when everything's off online. So I don't understand why we're funding $1,000 uh, 
for something that neither benefits local people and materials that are vague and don't even seem like in the description have anything to do with what they're saying they're planning on doing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next is Jessica J. I just want to second what the um, caller before me and the one before her spoke of. Uh, we're in a pandemic, people are not outside exploring art. The um, field rep for the city that was on earlier had spoke about the need for all of us to sort of take the moment we're living in in strife, knowing that we're in very uncertain times. And I think you all should take on the challenge of trying to live in the moment and apply the funds where they're needed urgently and not explore vanity projects and creative projects like there are not people on the streets that are starving or freezing. Thank you. All right, uh, next is uh, Margaret Malloy. Hi, uh, I echo the people before me. You know, I think you have to be careful where you put your money and Benesort seems to do very well with his fundraising and have very elegant bougie events. So I don't think they're in desperate need and the school where you guys meet at normally, you never talk about. You never talk about the families and children at Westminster Elementary School. 86% are low income and qualify for free lunches. Give them a thousand bucks. Let them decide how to best serve our own neighborhood kids, please. I just don't get it. Thank you. All right. Um, Ricky S. Oh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm calling to uh, oppose you you all having Joe Buscaino, uh staff on this meeting. Uh, I, I am here to oppose anything that has to do with 4118 uh, Council File 20, uh, 1376. Um, I think, you know, Buscaino. Okay. Is this about the... All right, he's already, the I'm sure he's already, he's already spoken, but uh, we appreciate your comment. Literally, my I just hopped on, so I haven't spoken yet. No, no, it's but I'm saying out of right order. Not, not the right time. Wait, 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 wait. it's out of order. It's out of order because his office has already spoken. So we understand your position. Uh, and if you want to make a general comment in the next section, we can do that. But this is strictly on this budget item. And uh, there's two more names, and I'm going to close it after these two names. So the next is Peter Clune. Yeah, hi. Um, I would just like to use my public comment time to, uh, since you guys messed up this vote previously, to put you all in timeout for a little bit and maybe just think about um, your mistakes that you made on this um, and probably the other mistakes you guys are going to make later tonight. Um, so timeout starts now. Thank you. And last, uh, Goat Puppet, please be relevant. You heard what he said. I'm sorry, sir. Thank you. Yes. So it's good. Finally, we kicked Ira's ass off of something. Yay. When the Ira's away, the goat puppet will play. <laughs> so we Thank oppose you. this item. Thoroughly Thank fucking oppose this no good fucking item. Take this money and spend it for homeless for tarps and blankets. It's cold out here. We're sitting in right now in my fucking tent. I'm freezing my fucking ass off and you want to donate a thousand dollars to some art shit. What are you All right, thank you. Is there some way that somebody can time these speakers? We, we, well, they're done. They're I am done. happy to, I'm happy to All time right. them. All right, that ends public comment. Uh, any yeah, more if that idiot calls in, can't you just can't you just turn him off? Well, we have to. But we're required to allow public comment. So not with ob not with obscenity. Not with no. Obscenity. We can cut him off once he does it. But I, uh, anyway, I've kicked him out of the meeting. Right. Anyway, we let's not. Uh, I agree with all of you, but it's over. Let's not. Let's it's not over. aggravate the situation further. Any board comment? Yeah, the only comment I would right, right, go ahead, CJ. is that we do have a time element here. If we're going to take public comment, 
say at some point, that's it. And stop letting people keep raising their hands. I did. I, I did. No, you didn't. I did. I announced that there were no more hands. So after you had listened to five of them and they kept putting more names in. Hands right. up. Thank you. All right. Uh, Jamie? Yes. Did you have a comment? Your hand was up. My hand is not up. I have a comment. I have a question. All right. Well, the hand's up on my on my thing. I'll uh, lower your hand. Then. I, right. I think in the beginning, I put it up to, for George to let me in. All right. All right. Was that Robert I heard or was that Brian? Who did I hear? <laughs> Brian I heard Alex. Oh. This is Alex. Okay, Alex. I'm sorry. Uh, so we gave we gave money to a private organization last month as well. And what I asked last month what was cut off from receiving an answer for, which was what is our budget for these types of things? Because we I, I don't feel like I can vote on this without knowing how much money we have left to to give. So a thousand dollars isn't nothing, it's quite a bit. Does anybody know what our budget is to give to private organizations? There, there is not any additional funds specifically itemized for this type of expenditure. We uh, typically, in the, uh, if it, it comes up and if there, it comes to a committee and it comes to budget and if it's voted forward, we have to identify where the funding may come from, what other, uh, Previously, in our general budget, again, we, we approve a budget at the beginning of the fiscal year. It's our best uh, uh, estimate of where the money should go. And then something, we move it around as things change during the year. So, we, uh, so because, the, because this year there's an election, there's much less in, the, in, the, in, the, in terms of free money lying around because of the election, because that's a major expense we don't have in non-election years. So right. just, just to clarify, we're expected to vote on this without knowing where that thousand dollars comes from. Uh, Alex, if you might, uh, if I can answer that one. Uh, the city clerk has a funding system dashboard that shows uh, what the net available amount of money is per neighborhood council. Right, right. We actually, when we did this last month, uh, we did an, indicate uh, where it was coming from. Uh, but it was in the it was in the connection of all the motions, uh, all three of them, not just the one. So there wasn't any specific information where this particular one thousand dollars came from. We had three different projects that were funded. Uh, uh, we approved funding on in the uh, October meeting, and uh, there was an indication at that time where all the money for those was coming from. But what about Mostly, this? Well, but, but this was this is what when we voted on this last time we indicated where it was coming from um let me see if i can find um, um the, the minutes hugh, from that if, hugh if i may i believe that we voted on this back in august um not i'm sorry in september okay. um, since we're in the november meeting and it was of an art and sunny Bach who is a former board member spoke at the time, as well as Lynn Warshawski, who is the head of Venice Arts. And we as a board voted on this. This is just a revisitation because of a technical issue that came up with their application. This should not be an issue again because we voted on this as a yes. So with the three panelists now, unanimously we voted on this holding vote. back because of a technical issue. We we unanimous, unanimously voted yes on this. I don't we, no, we did not what, unanimously what we did, vote on yeah, this, but we passed this. Yes again. No, it was not unanimous. But what okay. happened was the money that was allocated, uh, eleven hundred and forty dollars of the forty five hundred dollars came from general outreach, and the rest came. From the rollover funding from last year. Okay, thank you. That's exactly right because I remember that was one of the things that I had a, I had some concern about. As well, and I ended up voting yes for it because I knew the money was coming from money that we were rolling over from the year before. Right. And right. if I may, to answer a couple of questions.
students once again. This is specifically for school projects. They do do personal projects. This is for funding of art, of art, I'm sorry, for art supplies. And this is specific to our school in Venice. We have gone over this and we made the changes that we needed to. Right. I, I just want to I just want to say one last thing, which is I'm not sure. opposed to any of these projects necessarily. The issue that I'm having is that it's forcing us to pick and choose <laughs> what gets the money. So I, 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 Alex, I agree with you. I agree with you 100 percent. We used to have a much more formal process that sort of collapsed over time. And we, unfortunately, we've never come up with a way of, of reinstituting that process. And maybe that's something we need to discuss going forward. We should totally do that. Thanks, you. I agree yeah. because Bruno brought up the point that he didn't know that this money was available too, and he sits on our board and chairs. Bruno, what was your point making that you didn't know how the money was available or for your organization? Yeah, I guess that was just my concern. Some of the public comment that uh, if if we're voting on something that's getting funded, I just think it should be public knowledge that. A, that the money is out there, it's available, and, and give it an opportunity to anybody that, that's relevant to apply for it. Can we okay. put something on the website or put information out there so other organizations know? And, and there's inf information available to them, but also that we can make decisions as a board as to where the money is going. All right. What, I, what, we'll do, what I'll do is we'll make it an agenda item for the next Budget and Finance Committee as to the best way of of publicizing and soliciting such Thanks, you. requests yeah, in the future. I, may object I, I just would like to- Go ahead. I, I'm sorry, I would just like to make a point that we as a board or we, when we sit on our committees can only vote on items that are in front of us. We cannot right. look at an entire, for well, example, that, 12 month and say, hey, we got to reserve money for this or we got to reserve right. money for that. Right. And, my, and by the way, in September, when we did vote on this, we had no idea that our budget for elections would fall all on us, just on our NC without any help from the city and without any help from Dunn. So I just would like to clarify that when we did vote on this, this is before the budget for the elections was uh, clear. All right. I, I get that, but I, I have to I have to say that, you know, I think it's Neil, is it is it Neil who's brought up the who, who's Alex. brought up the concern or Alex who's brought up the concern that you know where we're is there a set amount of money that we have set aside? To be able to fund these type of projects, and I and I'm and what I it's my understanding from having him ha ask that question before when we did yes vote on this and it did pass. Seema, you're absolutely correct. Um, his same question is the same question that he's asking. We we're, we're picking and choosing where we take the money from, and yes, we want to fund specific projects within our within within Venice, but do we have a set amount? Um, and and I think Melissa came came forward and said, we used to have the formalized project that he was a process that he was uh, referring to and we don't really have that now. So anybody can vote or anybody can submit to be able to ask us for money for anything. And then I, 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 Clarence, just an, an answer to your question in part, these three projects were all brought to the budget committee after they went to uh, the outreach committee uh, and were uh, vetted through the outreach committee and the projects were brought to the budget committee from the outreach committee. That, that's how this happened in this particular instance. Okay, and that's the same process that anyone would go through if they wanted to have a, pro a project. Yes, funded. yes. So, yes. It, you know, so I know- Again, this was rollover money that right. came at a time right. when public projects for arts were suffering. All right. Due to I'm gonna, COVID. Uh, again, I, and these are for specific. This, okay, I got it. We're having the same people talk over and over. So unless there's another, uh, I see a hand, but that's not a board member. We, we close public comment. All right, I'm going to uh, take the vote then. Um, Vicky. Yes. Soledad. Yes. John. Robert. Yes, sir. Mark. Yes. Jim. Jim Rob. Tom. 
Clarence. Yes. Christian, are you here? Uh, Bruno. Yes. Jamie. Yes. CJ. Yes. Alex. No. Seema. Yes, and thank you. Uh, Alik, are you here yet? Okay. Um, and um, since I'm running the meeting and the votes, uh, so fit, uh, make sure we have a quorum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll have I'll, I'll vote yes just to make sure we have. Uh, oh, wait a minute, hold on. Oh, I just, I, don't, I don't need to. No, I don't need to vote. We have a quorum without me, so since I ran the this portion, I'll, I'll abstain. Uh, the vote is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, one no, one abstention, and three recusals. And I'll turn the meeting back to uh, Messrs. Uh, Fernand, uh, Francisco <laughs> and Kozlo. Okay, well done here. Hi. Hi, hi. Thank you very much. Um, Public comment, Ira. All right. Items not on the agenda. George, my video. Oh, sorry, James. Gotcha. All right. I'll start from the top. Analia. Analia. Yes, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah. All right. So I had with me a friend tonight who had experienced homelessness in Venice Beach. Um, who had to excuse, them, excuse themselves for the appalling dehumanizing rhetoric that they heard. It's very curious that you uh, have all this, but you have no advisement from someone who has actually experienced homelessness. As, as well, this is a democracy, Miss uh, Councilman CJ, so the people will speak on the brutalization of their neighbors. So has the Neighborhood Council considered motions that would push either for the reducement of the cost of rent or to sponsor publicly funded housing in order to deal with the homelessness epidemic that is plaguing the city. It seems that with the hiring of 26 new officers that the LA city itself could in fact grant the money to do so. Um, we have empty hotel rooms as well, and as well as multiple empty housing units that could serve as housing in the uh, interim of the coronavirus and then be turned into permanent shelters afterwards. It seems like the city has a lot of cash to flaunt with good alternatives, but has no way to justify its criminalization of public, of uh, sleeping in public spaces and any alternative that uh, has been brought up so far uh, that does not address or explicitly provide housing to the uh, uh, affected populations. Um, okay, thank you for is, sharing all that. No, sir. No respect. James M. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, James. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say the Venice Neighborhood Council is notorious across Los Angeles as the most sadistic and villainous MC in the city. And tonight's agenda does nothing to dispel that notoriety. That's a Brown Act violation, dipshit. Of course, like a moth to a frame, this NC found a kindred spirit in the Los Angeles City Council's most sadistic councilman, Joey Buckets, who you asked to speak to your panel of ghouls and soothe your urges to torture the unhoused. In fact, the seething anger from members of this board while Nisa was discussing humane approaches to the unhoused was a truly mask off moment. You rarely see that kind of uh, focused evil and misanthropic behavior exposed in public. Thank you, James. Uh, Beth God. Unmute what? yourself. Aaron, um, just so we're aware, well, I crashed out that whole Lawa criminal case. I pulled a Carol Sobel on Carol Sobel. Um, just to also be clear, if you go ahead and check with Juliet O's email account, you look up my legal name, Aaron Fanning, Go ahead, attach it to the spy account. Well, that shows a lot of the issues that are ongoing. I don't really know what we're gonna do about Nissa Cove since she was on, you know, 
your public safety before she went to Bonin. And well, that came out in the criminal case, didn't it? I guess my eviction's still going on in December. So 13 months out, VCH is claiming I'm about to kill someone in y'all's community in court, but can't get rid of me. Y'all are fucked. Thank you. Uh, Dominic, T. Dominic. Yeah, Ira, you are absolutely disgusting the way you've been laughing this entire time. You say you want to make Venice a better place for the gentrified community coming in. Why not the people that already live there? The thousands of homeless people. You have the worst homeless population on the West Side. And George, you are absolutely disgusting. Get off your boot-looking knees and cut ties with the police advisory board. Those offices are responsible for the criminalization and violence against homeless people. If you want to suck something, suck my 12-inch cock, you motherfucker. Good. Thank you. Excuse me. I would just like to remind everybody not to curse and that we are all volunteers and please respect each other. This is so not fair. It doesn't you matter. People doesn't would matter. Care. We can't do anything about it's, it's, it. So it's, it's, you want to know what? That's their public it. comment. That's their yeah. public comment. But listen, I read there's 20. You got to cut off public comment, okay? Because people are going to back. They're back in a line. They've called in with multiple multiple things. So all right, well we'll get this. Sean, and we bottom. we just said during the last motion okay. that the moment you curse, you get cut off. Okay, hang on. I have to I have to interject here too. We see we have some people have children in the house. And we are in our own homes. We are volunteers, and we do not need to be subjected to Thank that, you. Kind of, that kind of language. Everything you're saying is correct. The city council had to stop having school children come to their meeting because of the language and T-shirts, etc., of uh, certain people. So we are not allowed to just willy-nilly do that. And I, as soon as people curse, I try to cut them off. Yeah. But, you know, whatever. I, I, it, It's just crazy. Thank it, you. Guys, it, it is what it is. I just want to announce, so Kathleen Martin is the last person for public comment. Yeah. That's, and no, there won't be any more public comment after that. Sean O'Brien, do you want to speak? Yes, I do. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, I just had a quick uh, uh, suggestion. Uh, the uh, west side of the boardwalk, it's my understanding, is a free speech zone. And it's also got certain protections. I believe it's state, city, state, and federal protections protecting that zone. However, with these encampments here, there, uh, that is impeding everybody's free speech, their right to assemble in a free speech zone, and to utilize that, that area is what it was designated for. So I hope this may be able to help you guys put something together and, and fight the good fight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Steve Salas. Unmute. Hi, my name is Steve Salas, former Wilmington uh, Neighborhood Council board member. Uh, Joe Buscano and his staff misle misleads you. They approved multiple homeless apartments without Wilmington Neighborhood Council approval. 23 bridge homes so far, two will be in my community of Wilmington one homeless apartment between two of our schools, Joe Buscano publicly said he doesn't want them near his R1 zone home. He will ruin his sto sto homeless storage idea next to uh, Barden Elementary School, but he wants them near our schools. Um, again, there's no buffer between moving these uh, homeless people that are coming out of jail, rapists, any type of jailhouse individual. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Nigel. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say, you know, it's kind of ridiculous, the pearl clutching we've seen. God forbid you have to hear some bad words while you're actively uh, calling for the criminalization of the people on the street, your unhoused neighbors. I mean, you know, the, the cognitive dissonance is insane. And, you know, you, you complain about all this time and let yet you, you have a little mini a mini town hall with the cops gleefully explaining how they're trying their best to kick people off the street. Uh, just focus your time on housing and then we won't have these problems. It's that simple. Also, fuck you. Thanks, Nigel. Thank you. Um, oh, I see. Uh, Rick Garvey. 
Hi guys, I'm not going to swear at you. I think you all know how I feel about most of you. Um, and I think this agenda today, again, shows you're just reprehensible when it comes to this homeless issue from the oversized parking to inviting Buschiano to come. Why is he even here? And then when he doesn't show up, but he sends his lackey instead, how does that turn from a report to a presentation so that there's no public comment allowed? That seems ridiculous. Uh, meanwhile, Jamie can talk over Nisa as much as she wants, but nobody gets to ask a question to Dennis Gleason. I thought that was ridiculous. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Erica Venice Beach. Whoops. Well, who's reading? No, yeah, Erica Venice Beach, please. Hey there, uh, this is Erica. Thank you. Um, thank you guys for your service. I just want to address this. I was disappointed we didn't get to make a comment on uh, with ask this some questions. My questions are being a business owner in Venice. I'm a single mom. I've been here for 40 years. And unfortunately, I experienced homeless people leaving bottles of urine at my house, uh, peeing on the outside of my business. They go and they take the, the trash cans that are outside for the public and they dump them over looking for recyclables and they don't put the trash back inside. What ends up happening is I end up having to clean this up, and so does my neighbor who has a little store. It's very frustrating. Um, I want the homeless to have a home to live in, too, but I'm frustrated having to clean up their messes. And then they take bottles and smash them on my wall, and then there's glass all over the street and the sidewalk. I'm really hoping that the city will step up um, and be more responsible. Thank you. Thank you. Ricky S. About this you guys want to hear it or... yeah go ahead ricky okay um i think it's absolutely ridiculous that you would think about having joe buscayano or any fucking representative uh it's fucking so crazy that dude is a piece of shit and why would you allow him to step into or anyone on his staff to step into this space unless you are actually interested in criminalizing poverty in Los Angeles. Um, if you've read the motion, um, anyone laying, sitting, uh, uh, sleeping uh, on a sidewalk uh, is uh, subject to, potentially subject to arrest uh, due to this motion. Like just simply reading that, why would you accept anyone uh, to come into your space and advocate for that unless you were genuinely interested or the fucking cop bullied you guys into letting him speak here. Um, Thank you, Ricky. Fuck Joe Buscat. Fuck Joe Buscat. Uh, Helen Fallon. Now, to change the subject slightly, although I appreciated the comments on the information about the Care Plus and actually finding out how this stuff works, it was interesting. I just want to remind the board members that you were contacted by stakeholders and including myself about the LUPAC meeting in which one of the members uh, who was appointed by you board members uh, attacked the chair rather rudely and it was extremely disrespectful. And since you appoint the LUPAC members, you're responsible for removing them when they don't follow the code of civility and aren't behaving. And you need to take steps to deal with this problem. It was an awful meeting and the disrespect towards members of the community, towards the chair herself uh, was appalling. The bullying that went on was shameful. So thank you. About it. Thank you. Lisa Redman. Hi, good evening. Um, you know, we've got a lot of new stakeholders to the meeting tonight. And once again, you're really embarrassing yourselves. You know, you, your tagline is it's your Venice, get involved, but how can people be involved when they see this poor behavior? You're so worried about people swearing, but yet you all have shown no civil discourse towards each other. Children learn from that more than swearing. I think that's more embarrassing for children. We have a mini town hall with the cops. We let them go forever. We get public to ask them questions. But then the minute you, Nisa starts talking about things you don't want to hear about, you cut her off. And people that was extremely disrespectful for Jamie and others to go after her like that. And very disrespectful for an out of town interloper like Joe Buscaino to come in and speak. Thank you, Lisa. It's not a place for personal goodwill tours. 
Thank you. Who did you say was last? Uh, that is Kendall Catherine, or just Catherine Martin. Ken Martin. Catherine okay. Martin. All right, Catherine. Kendall Kaufman. Hi, um, I'm calling in because y'all are appalling. Um, and if you don't want, if you want to think of your children, um, maybe you should think of them when before committing genocide. Um, like literally, if, if swearing is not is less than genocide, then I don't even know where your priorities lie. I really can't control that. And first of all, freedom of speech. Um, and second of all, like y'all are rather fixated on poop and pee and like like baby shit um, for uh, people who will not fund a bathroom, a public bathroom. Like, like stop being fixated on all of this human waste if you're not gonna fund a bathroom. Thank we don't you, need to clean up poop if people are able to poop in a fucking bathroom. Can we Thank calm you. down about that? Y'all are so weird. Y'all are so strange. I yep, we certainly are. Um Jessica J. Hi, I just wanted to say watching this meeting has been very frustrating. Your inability to keep time, screaming about technology, inability to manage technology eight months into, into this pandemic, can't follow parliamentary procedure. You can't even determine who in your NC is providing favor grants without your collective oversight. Obviously, your Brown Act violations and silencing people and blocking them from public comment. Um, establish new bylaws, set your rules up front regarding your cursing, regarding your um, want, not wanting to let people comment more than once in a meeting. You guys are making it up as you go along. Your credibility is shot. And for SEMA, your volunteers, we understand, but there are other places you can volunteer if you do not feel like advocating for people who are homeless and need help is not rewarding or nice enough for you. Thank, Thank you, Jessica. Joey Buckets. Uh, it's me, I heard Nick Anatel. Okay. All right. Uh, the, the town hall last night was really no town hall at all. It was nothing but uh, a political rhetoric and reimagining uh, public safety. It, 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 it's rhetoric beyond repair. Uh, the LAPD last night was used as a political buffer so Bonnie would not answer any questions directly by anyone who was on the call. And this is a councilman, quite frankly, who's for defunding $150 million from the LAPD. And I'm thankful that Councilman Biascano's representative is on because I want to know a way how we can get out of CD11 and get in CD15. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Nick. Um, now, Riley, you, you already spoke. Uh, Caleb. Hi, yeah. <clears throat> um, God, where to begin? Um, multiple Brown Act violations have happened all throughout the course of this meeting. I'm pretty sure, I would hope that someone on this body is aware of that <laughs> and would recognize that you're probably going to be having to face a lot of different ethics violations filed against you. Um, second thing I would say is that I'm sort of just like blown away how you all think that all this crime that you perceive, like everything's like a phenomenon, like you can't figure out how it got here. How did it happen? What do we do? And the lady just pointed it out so simply on the last point, it was like, if people are pooping, and they need bathrooms, give them bathrooms. Crime happens when you create conditions for poverty and you're oppressing people. It is not a phenomenon that just happened. We're creating that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Camilo L. Hello. Um, so real quickly, the shout out to George Francisco for looking like a little fancy boy with this phone. Um, uh, one, one comment I have is one concern that I've always had is the 30 minute time limit that they give people during sweeps, because I think that time limit should really be until they get into a home. That's, that's the, that's the standard that we should have. And that's the standard that judge Carter has a standard that, you know, any decent human being would have It's not 30 minutes just to, just to get a random job done. That's, that's fascist talk. We need to get people housed. Another thing is in regards to bathrooms, I know a homeless person who lives in her car and she, she and her mother, can never get a good night's sleep because they don't have 
a consistent bathroom that they can go to. And they, they, they don't want to be doing anything in the street. These people need help, not criminalization, because these people know what they need. And, and, and you guys just want to criminalize them for not having it. So there's people out there on these streets who would who would gladly like to be able to be you know part of this society, but you guys deny them that ability by constantly turning to criminalization instead of helping anybody. So just fuck all of you, and yeah, please go move just into Joe me. Buscaino's backyard. Fuck. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, Kendall Mayhew. <clears throat> Hi. Uh, thanks. Yeah, I. Uh want to echo what a lot of people have said. I don't even know where to begin. This has been such a, a absolute, uh, just what a mess to watch. Um, we're eight months into a pandemic. I highly recommend that you uh, take up whoever suggested doing a class on Zoom. Um, just watching how none of you seem to even know the basic functions of Zoom is um, actually really, you know, it, it makes sense because it seems like a lot of you thought you were getting onto some sort of HOA in a suburb, but you're not. You're, you're actually neighborhood council members in a huge city like Los Angeles that has massive problems and is experiencing a massive housing and homelessness crisis. So that's what has to be addressed. And like Caleb said before, this is a result of the conditions of poverty and the obsession with criminalizing and punishing people for the way that they are being forced to exist as they are trying to survive. The obsession with human waste, which is just something that we all create. I know it's, it's, it's amazing. We Thank all you. do it. Get them a bathroom. Kevin Varzanda, sorry, please unmute. Hey, oh. Kevin. Hey, I just had a quick question. Um, I don't want to take too much time or be rude or anything, but um, where the fuck do you all get off? You limit public comment because you're afraid to hear from people. I know how much you all love the police, but you try to police people's language with the the uh, profanity policing. Listen, like people said, there are much worse things than your children hearing an F-bomb. Do you not think there are uh, unhoused children? Do you not think that, you know, people need bathrooms to use? All this, you know, hand-wringing and pearl clutching over profanity and uh, buckets of feces Mr. Joe Buscaino's uh, deputy here, who, who, who's an interloper and he came into this meeting for some reason, uh, you know, all of this hand-wringing about petty bullshit, why don't you just move to the suburbs? This isn't... Uh... Thank you, Kevin. Mike Bravo. Good Are evening, you... everybody. How you guys doing? Uh, a couple of points real quick, as far as to the point of um, people cussing and being allegedly rude. One of the ways to alleviate that, and I've, I said to other committees before too, is have and encourage a board that has real diversity, meaning you know, uh, black, brown, um, organic residents, unhoused uh, folks as well, and people who you're making decisions about to be in the council and there won't be these outbursts, uh, righteous outbursts. That's one thing. Second thing also, I wanna just um, give props to Mike Bonin. Thank him for uh, running through the F, uh, First Baptist Church of Venice back into, uh, yeah, OHR designation process. Once again, we believe in, um, you know, reconciliation and people moving forward in a good way. And we hope that a lot of people, you know, like George Francisco and Thibodeau and a lot of people who've been very anti-equity and anti-black throughout the last few years or so, uh, we welcome you into doing the right thing and switching up your tone. And uh, we thank all our supporters and thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Mike. Uh, Margaret Malloy. Good evening. Uh, I get the impression that a lot of people who are commenting tonight are not familiar with this particular board. This particular board is uniquely anti-homeless in that they have organizations that they're core members of or the actual founders of, including Fight Back Venice, Venice Stakeholders Association, and LA Alliance for Human Rights. And they are suing the city for not prosecuting the homeless criminally. That's basically what it comes down to. They're trying to reinstate the cruelest of ordinances and there's no advocacy or compassion expressed at all. 
there's a couple of really good people on there. Get, don't get me wrong. And I see you and I love you, but there are these uh, factions that are really adversarial towards unhoused people. It's troubling. It's wrong. It, it is a violation of the charter. Thank you. All right, E. Yes, hello. Yes. Hi. Um, yeah, I just, this is reminding me a lot of um, when I was in the meeting last night uh, with Chief Michael Moore, basically explaining himself how like, I think he said almost 40% of the calls that he gets, <laughs> that they get are about like homelessness, which he declared himself is not his job. So it's like, why are we still, I know that's not your job to do this, but it's like funding all that money towards police who are criminalizing homelessness when that's not even their job. So just de defund that aspect, fund these people, get these people housed immediately. And all these complaints from all these people, all these citizens of Venice will, will go away because they see other people who are unhoused as a problem. And you're not even taking into account the problems coming from the unhoused people. You're only addressing the people who are housed and their quote unquote problems. You're treating people like they're like feral cats or something. This is, this is ridiculous. Thank you, Ewe. Thank you. Sorry, was someone, where's, no, Ira, hang on a second. Somebody, they're starting to double up again here. All right. It, because uh, I don't the, this, person, this person dropped off and the, the, the breaking line. So I'm gonna suggest that Casey Wasserman uh, is probably All right, last. these three. All right, Fine. George, George, Ira, if I could intervene for a moment. Yeah. Eva Green did try to raise her hand on this issue and she had not spoken during uh, general uh, the, this general this announcement public comment area, and I would ask if you would let her in um, because she spoke earlier in another item, but not on this one. Okay, great, wonderful. Uh, Peter, Clune. you got to you got to you got to pick you got to pick a because this this uh, Kathleen Martin. Yeah, hi. Sorry, it's it's my time. It's my time. Please be quiet. It's my time. It's my time. Thank you. Peter Clune, um, I called on I, him and I muted him. Stop. Go yeah, ahead. thank you. Thank you. Please start my time now. He was still talking over me. Um, yeah, I'd just like to echo all the comments that have been made again and again to this committee. Um, like, it is just remarkably ridiculous to hear you guys pearl clutch about being volunteers and asking for respect when you refuse to show any respect to the most vulnerable people in our city. Um, you know, it's, it's absolutely disgusting to time and time again see you platform people like Joe Buscaino, who only advocate for the most cruel and inhumane policies when there are simple solutions like providing bathrooms and providing housing, right? The fact that you can dehumanize and deem people unworthy of just basic human accommodations is just appalling to see again and again and again. And we're gonna keep calling you and we're gonna keep letting you know about this and you're not gonna get an ounce of respect from anyone until you show an ounce of respect towards anyone. Thank you. Um, Judy Pied. <laughs> you. Hi, um, I just wanted to talk about the fact that you've got groups of people coming in and saying the same thing over and over about the homelessness. What you guys are doing, trying to make sure that your constituents here in Venice have a clean, safe place to live is the right thing to do versus constantly kowtowing to the homeless industrial complex that is now trying to take what? We've already spent a billion dollars of taxpayers' money on homeless issues and it's gotten worse. And it's mainly gotten worse for those of us in Venice. So all the people who can't talk without cursing because you're the idiots, not the board. And I just want to say, you know, just keep up the fight and hopefully we can do something about the streets and do something about the the vagrants and the criminals who are taking over our streets and making it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Casey Wasserman, last one. Wait, wait, you gotta fit Eva in. Fuck Joe Buscaino. Fuck, fuck Joe Buscaino. I can't believe that you would want to have in. Uh, Casey Wasserman, what happened? Hi. This is Casey Wasserman, LA 28 chair of the Olympics. I'm just going to say 
I am um, calling in to say I'm very proud of all this, uh, the neighborhood council here for this, uh, this act. Um, yeah, so I just want to say that, um, you know, the way that you're going to get these guys out of here, the homeless problem, um, the way you're speaking so, so violently, you know, against the, the, the homeless people is, is, is good because, um, you know, any of you could become homeless at any point. And, you know, four people are dying a day right now in Los Angeles. And um, if one of you, you know, got evicted or lost your housing, you know, how would that feel? And, you know, when the Olympics come, um, any of you could be evicted. So if any of you just stepped out of your house and talked to someone living on the street, which is something that, you know, none of you have done, I'm sure, you would see that, you know, these people. Um, thank, thank you, you know, Casey. Thank, thank you, you, Casey. Okay, yes. public comment is Ova. Wait a minute. You were going to bring Eva up. She. Oh, all raised right. Your hand. And all right. Where, where is she? Eva. I'll try and find her. She's at the very bottom of the blue hand, Zyra. Oh, no. Hi, you actually aren't letting me talk, even though I've had my hand up this whole time. Hello. Can there you, you hear go. me? Yeah. Okay. Hi. A lot of this rhetoric about how horrible the board is, etc. That's rhetoric that really should be directed at the city because the city holds, the city council holds the purse strings to everything that they're requesting. And a lot of us have already said, we need rat proof trash cans. We need uh, bathrooms. We need to get out of this humanitarian crisis. We have voted with our hard earned tax monies. We're HHH 1.2 billion for H another billion. Prop two, what is that? $2.1 billion. And over and over again, uh, the city and the county doesn't do anything. So you're trying to pit the city you're trying to get bit the people in Venice against the homeless, and it is entirely wrong. If you read uh, all the tax incentives that have gone through that we have voted for to help the homeless, you might think differently. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, let's get on to some business. All right, Jennifer, calendar calendar. Uh, um, 9A through D. Does anybody want to remove those from the consent calendar? There's one hey. hand. Hold on. No hands. Well, there's two hands, actually. Well, hey. anybody can remove something from the consent calendar. I think these people did just. Hey there, I would like to remove everything from the consent calendar since you purposely didn't let me talk during public comment. Uh, okay. Thank you. You Valerie. can't. That's a First Amendment violation, and you guys suck ass. All right. <laughs> you got it. They're all off. Hi. Hi. Hi, what are you doing here? Public comments. Well, closed. I was just trying to. If we okay. have. Oh yeah, everything's off, so there's no more public comment. Great. Public comment is closed. You know we had a. Yeah, no, no, no. It's great. So okay, so four yeah, more. No, there's no public there. comment, but somebody wanted to remove yeah. something, and that wonderful woman who will not be here at the end of the meeting yeah. uh, just removed everything, so it's okay. Yes. Um. All right, so those things go to the end of uh, new business. Okay. All right, let's go to 10, loop a consent calendar. 10A. 10A. 10A, that's it. Anybody want to remove uh, 10A? <laughs> Judy Goldman. Thank you for calling on me. I just want to say quickly that the tone of these VNC meetings have sadly devolved into a very painful to watch vicious cycle. And what I'm observing is anger and hatred that are begetting more of the same. And I just like to remind all of you that the most powerful tool that you can use to diffuse hate is genuine empathy and it seems to be sorely lacking in these meetings. 
I would invite you to think about that. Thank you. Um, was that a, a comment on the consent? No, calendar? that was her wanting to make a public comment. As, I, as was the other one. I had I had my hand up for a long time. Okay, yeah. I was just asking. We understand, we understand that, but you know, we did put a put a halt to public comment. Uh, I I would just like to say. Um, I want to see how many of the people called us names and said how horrible we are are going to be here at one o'clock when we're still doing the work. So that's a public comment. <laughs> All right. Um, so anybody have anything to say about the Lupa consent calendar? All right. Kendall Kaufman. Yeah, I think you should let Joey Bucket speak um, because Joey Bucket's had their hand up for uh, ever and uh, you should remove all items from the consent calendar so you have a longer meeting. Thank you. So did okay, she well, that's that? It? That's that, Ira. All right, so that's done. Okay, Nobody so else. That's, that's, we'll move on to- right, so we'll move that to, to the Lupa. end of the uh, yeah. Lupa calendar, which is right here. Uh, so well who's gonna do this now that the, uh, Alex isn't here? Might as well just start. You want to just start with 10A, Ira? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, you I'll, are I'll you looking for somebody to make the motion? Yes. I'll make the motion. I'll Jake second this. So we can discuss. Well, say it. <laughs> oh, do you want me to read it? Sure. Well, the that's meeting. making the motion. Sure, the uh, I don't. Wait a second. Is this whole thing a motion? Well, we will. <laughs> Well, can yeah. we just say that we've all done our due diligence and read this and this is public? Well, we have, but uh, most of the people don't want to help protection for tenants. So um, I don't know what to say. Uh, I thought I'm this was a that... pretty good thing, but uh, uh, no, I'm just evil. To... So let's go. Well, well, point, I'm, I'm asking a question. Does Jim, because in prior times when we've had lengthy items like this, we've identified that we've all read these and they don't have to be reread out right. loud. I wonder, yeah, these are all whereas, whereas. All right, public comment. There are four well, hands are raised. Public comment on the motion. On the motion. Okay. All right. If it's not Eight. public comment on the motion, then, you know, I mean, it's That's okay it. if people want to express themselves, but it's not public comment on the motion. Right, then, they're off, which yeah. we're allowed to do. Uh, Jessica J. Please unmute. Hi, I would just like, if I'm on 10A to be correct, because I know you did skip a few bits on this agenda while you were sort of muttering under your breath about uh, not being helpful. So can you please just quickly confirm where on the agenda we're at? 10A. Thank you. Um, I have nothing to say about this comment, but I do urge you guys to get it together. This is an embarrassing meeting. Valerie Contreras. Excuse me, uh, you just, Ira, you just said we were on 10A. I believe we're on 11A, aren't we? Well, I thought George said 10A. Yeah, no, Jim, 10A becomes 11A, but it's right there. So as opposed to pushing it to the end of 11, I just asked Ira if he would like to, he would like to do it at the front. Yeah. Technically, cool. so right. that's why we're just going in sequential order. Thank you. Valerie, please. Yes, if you create a waiting room, when these people try to hack you, you could throw them into the waiting room. That's what we do in our Wilmington Neighborhood Council meetings. Therefore, they cannot hack us because it's very it's very disturbing. We're trying to get our business done. You guys are doing a fantastic job, but try to set up a waiting room so when they do that, you can throw them in there and you can stop them. You could leave them in the waiting room and they won't interrupt your meeting. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank but, you. But, okay. Thank you. Okay. Taylor. Uh, Ira. Yeah, Ira, you can't go through this. It's got people are just going to okay. comment to say what they're yeah. going to say. It doesn't right. have anything to do with 10A. Uh, uh, Ira. Are people yes, commenting on 10A right now? For for a second. This is, Ira. Yes. Okay. I didn't get acknowledged. Look, it, it, this is spiraling out of control. I, you're trying really hard. George is trying really hard. You've got to have people stick to the motion, all right? Okay. I don't want to get into the, the yeah. you know, whether yeah. they can Very curse good. or not now. That's another whole conversation. Right. But right now, you have an item on the floor, 10A, 
That's what your public comment is. Right. Anybody that starts talking off of the motion, you need to cut them off. Okay. Okay? Yes. All right. Caleb, start again, please. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, folks. Good grief. Uh, yes. 100% yes. This is, goes in line with everything that we were talking about. It should be, it should go without question that we are, of course, protecting tenants. We are in the midst of a pandemic with a massive economic fallout, the likes of which we have not seen for like a literal century. So oh, yes, oh, we should be protecting tenants. Like, what the thank fuck? You. Okay, thank you. Good. All right. Ricky S. Unmute. Okay. Why do you? Okay. All right. Thank you. Good. Yeah, Ira, this is. I don't know what's happening. I... No, no, no. It's just people are just, they're just, they're, they're putting Screw their name back up again so that they can keep on commenting. All right, great. Helen Fallon. Unmute. Uh, I did unmute. I, okay. I'm having a, um, am I unmuted? Yes. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, well, you got to vent a stakeholder for a change. So I, I don't quite understand why anyone bothered to pull this off a consent calendar. I think it's great. We need more protection and for especially the RSO units. And uh, so please vote for it. Thank you. Call in user one. You can talk. Yes, um, I support uh, this item. Oh, don't. Yes. And we, we don't need we don't need to have all this foul language to, to talk about it. It's a good motion. And of course, um, uh, Ira will check his email for his hundred thousand dollar cure and correct. And we'll go about this meeting till 1 a.m. I'll be here with you. I'm your shepherd. I yield the rest of there. my time. Fuck you. Sorry, Buckets. I just wanted to thank you. This is an excellent CIS, and this kind of protection of affordable housing will actually go a really long way in making sure that people don't lose their homes. And uh, if you vote in support of this, I'll take back what I said about you sucking ass. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Uh, oh, Colin User One just spoke. Uh, Kendall Mayhew. Hi, thanks. Um, yeah, I urge you to vote in support of this uh, item 10A. It's incredibly important that we're protecting tenants right now. And it's, it's especially important because I, I hope that you are connecting the dots between the ways that tenants have been pushed out of Venice and the homelessness crisis that we're experiencing right now. You know, we have a ton of people living on the streets who used to be in apartments before they were evicted. Um, I am, am a housing organizer. I've seen the way that landlords don't just completely disregard the law when they want somebody out. Um, and we are in a pandemic right now. It is so important that you're doing things like this. And if you were doing things like this, proactive measures to prevent people from becoming homeless, you wouldn't be experiencing so much. Okay, thank you. Margaret Malloy. Yeah, hi. Thank you, Michael uh, Jensen, for doing a detailed breakdown on this. Um, I just want to point out that it's a little weird that you guys are supporting protected units and one-to-one -one replacement and write a first return when uh, I think it's number five on here says city attorney to clarify whether implementation of SB 330 supersedes provisions of the Mellow Act, which provides provide for alternatives to replacement of affordable units. And members of the PNC board and Lupe. What happened? Hello? All right. 
guess not. Call and user one already spoke. I guess we're done. Wait, hold on, man. Seven, it says comes. seven people. Oh, I was uh, just... Erica Venice Beach. I'm okay. Oh, who's talking? I was I was unmuted, so I thought it was my turn. Okay, Erica Venice Beach. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, hi. Thanks so much, you guys. Okay, so this I absolutely support this. This falls in line with the presentation I gave in in August about the big product they want to put over here. The problem is, is that I think that that issue about the Mellow Act, see, unfortunately, when things are, are state, when there's state rules, they supersede things that are local. So I, I'm just really concerned because, unfortunately, a lot of the developments that are happening now, they're not affordable, and they are displacing people that are in affordable housing, and they're not doing one-to-one. So, I mean, it'd be really great if this could be implemented, but I don't know if it's realistic because there isn't any follow through or enforcement of laws that exist. Okay, thank you. Didn't Ricky Hey, ask- I'm at Margaret's business right now and I'm peeing on it, but I don't see her anywhere. Does anybody know where she is? Yeah, who is? Maybe a girl, she, her. Unmute. Hey, thank you. Um, so I just wanted to reiterate, um, I just wanted to say, well, first of all, I'm um, on the Silver Lake Neighborhood Council. I'm calling in as an individual tonight. And I just wanted to say that if you would listen to all of the people coming in who are saying, please provide resources and housing for the unhoused community in your area, you would not see as much crime. And if you vote to reinstate- Okay. Quit interrupting people, y'all. This is the rudest council. <laughs> you know, you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. Please, Nigel, unmute. Can I just All say right. something? Uh, so, uh, hold on, let me uh, get through my public comment, and then you can speak off. Um, yeah, so obviously, uh, I support this motion. We need to have more affordable housing. Um, there's an obvious link between the lack of housing and and the homelessness issue. Uh, and, you know, it, like many other people said before me, please focus on stuff like this, focus on preact- proactive measures that actually help people. Um, and also I just want to congratulate myself for uh, learning how to hack because apparently I'm a hacker now and uh, I'm going to put it on my resume. So thanks guys. <laughs> okay. God, help me help us. Um, did Ricky S. speak? All right, uh, Ricky S. I'm mute. Oh, fuck Joe Buscaino. Fuck Joe Buscaino. I can't believe you guys had Joe Buscaino on the fucking. Valerie Contreras. <clears throat> Hi, uh, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I serve on the Wilmington Neighbor Council. I serve on the Planning and Land Use Committee. Um, I think it's great that you guys are filing community impact statements, tackling things like this in your community. I want to encourage you to keep up the good work. And also, um, another suggestion, so you might not get hacked, um, is that you could have maybe somebody on your board as a co-host, and they can help you um, with some of these new technology, because that's what I did. And it really helped our meetings flow a lot better and we got to stop all this hacking. Um, Okay, thank you. Robin Rudisol, unmute. Hi, Ira and the board. Um, I just want to say I strongly support this motion because the city needs to get its act together to implement this law that went into effect back in January and that protects our tenants. The only problem with it is the last recommendation. And that says um, that you would recommend the city attorney complete a legal analysis of whether an exemption exists for mom and pop landlords uh, with multi-properties of one to four units. 
Um, the Lupic members snuck this in as they're trying to exempt essentially all projects in Venice from this law by saying one to four unit buildings are exempt because the bulk of multifamily housing in Venice is four units or less. Luckily, the city can't change a state law, so it's probably not a what happened? Okay, thank you. Uh, Sabrina Gregory. Something's happening. Am I frozen? No. Let's try somebody else. Nazdi. Go ahead, Nazdi. Unmute yourself. Hi, this is Nazdi. Um, I'm calling in support of this motion. I'm a stakeholder in Venice. And um, yeah, this should be like someone else said, the only thing that you're doing is supporting tenants and preventing homelessness so that um, when encountered with problems with people that are living on the street, your instinct isn't to put them into jails and try and erase them, but simply to house everybody like this motion is trying to do. Um, I would say that it could go further and that uh, more than a, first of right return, the tenants should have a first of right refusal, uh, meaning that they have the option to buy the property themselves and manage and own it themselves as a democracy. Um, if you believe in the values of democracy, then you should be trying to move our society towards a place. Okay, thank you. Kevin Varz Varzanda. Yes, hi. Um, I'm a, ha a hacker uh, with the Venice branch of BOFA. I'm calling to speak on item 10A. Um, as a member of the homeless industrial complex, I would like to strongly support this motion. Uh, this is what you need to do to prevent homelessness, um, as well as make sure people stay in their homes. Uh, it's, you know, these are the types of things that had they been in place before, maybe we wouldn't be having so many of these contentious meetings, maybe we wouldn't have to hack so often. Fuck you, Joe Buscaino. Uh, I yield my time. Fuck you. Okay. Ann Martins, please. Uh, you fuck Joe Buscaino. Fuck Joe Buscaino. Hey, Ira. Okay. You know hi. about BOFA? Hi. Can you hear me? Can you yes, hear me? Just okay. Well, we could hear you, but uh, unmute. There, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. Yes, I support this motion. I also support the cleanups. Um, I think that the people that we're calling in tonight are a very small, aggressive group who um, had to have some way to- Are you talking about the cleanup? Yes, the cleanups, yes, I so support that. So this is that. about the uh, 10A. Right, I know, but I didn't get called on to, to talk about that, and I just. Kendall, didn't Kendall speak already? Kendall. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that Valerie Contreras keeps getting to speak in public comment off topic um, about all the hackers. Uh, we're not oh, hackers. That's what you're doing. <laughs> we're, we're constituents who are calling in, um, and it'd be great if you could apply these rules, you know, to everybody. Ah, call in user one is, is what's his name? Go. Uh, Sabrina Gregory. <laughs> I'm mute. Call it into it. These people are just putting their hands up second and third time. All right. So, yeah. Good. All right. Let's. Uh, since we put this on consent, <laughs> we wanted it to pass, but whatever. Uh, so is there board comment? Anybody unmute yourself if you have a board comment. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. So are we still on tap? Just, we're talking, we're talking the board now. I was stopped letting in the-, the I didn't let anybody in. Okay. I'm, Maybe it's just left over from the last. It might be. My, my, my fault. My fault. All right. So no board comment. No uh, board. All right. Um, Can we take anybody opposed to this on the board? We have to take a roll call vote, Ira. Is this a, oh, this is a Lupic thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Q, you there? <laughs> he left. I had <laughs> muted. My wife wanted to talk to me. Uh, 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 Ira. Uh, Stan. George. Uh, yes. I'll vote yes. Uh, Jim. Yes. Uh, Seema. Just give a thumbs up, Seema. She's giving a thumbs up. She votes yes. Try to save okay. her voice. Alex. Yep. CJ. Yes. Brian. Yes. Jamie. Yes. Bruno. Yes. Clarence. Yes. Uh, Jim. Rob. Mark. Abstain. Robert. John. Soledad. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Twelve oh two. Hey, thank you. Oh. All right, eleven now. Eleven A. Excuse me, Ira. Um, does Hugh need to keep track of who's still in the meeting as far as the panelists are concerned? Well, I've called out everybody's name. They may not want to. He calls vote. everybody's name and then he gets 12 and 2, so there are 14 people here. Yeah, so, but I think several several of the people's names that he was calling have already left the meeting. And George, didn't count them as yes. George, can you let Jim Robin? Yeah. Thanks for letting me know. All right, 814 Angeles Place. Um, ba, 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 ba. What, Do you want what, somebody to make a motion? vote on that? 1202. 1202? Well, okay, thank you. 1202. Hey, by the way, I voted yes. Oh, 1302. 1302. Sorry, I got lost and was trying to get back in. No all problem. Right. We've all Ira, been there. Ira, do you want me to make the motion date to uh, 11A? Yes, please. Uh, James Mires is making the motion to 11A. I'll second it. The VNC right. recommends approval of the project as presented with the following conditions. The roof access tower, including overhang, is no more than 100 square feet. Windows shall not overlook neighbors. Fostering is not an option for privacy. The recommendation by LUPEC was 611. Thank you. Um, any, oh, I have two. Two public comments, three. Robin. Hi, uh, on this project, it, it would really dominate this block and um, rather than be compatible with the neighborhood as is required by the uh, certified Venice land use. There's 26 lots in the streetscape and out of that 81% are one story. Um, and, and really a simple cumulative, cumulative impacts analysis shows that this project would significantly alter the character and scale of this neighborhood. Um, also the request for a variance for a smaller front setback, smaller than the prevailing setbacks of the block on an already very narrow street um, should be denied, must be Thank denied. You. Okay, Ira, hey. after Stuart, public comment is closed. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Right, that's it. Stuart Oscar's left. Like two of these is just going to be cursing anyway. Uh, Ricky, yes. Fuck, fuck Joe Biscayno. Seriously, okay. off, off topic. Okay, thanks. I told you that. All right, let's go, go. Fuck Joe Biscayno. Fuck. Off topic. Stuart Oscar's. Go ahead, Stuart. I'm. A, are you a, okay? So let's see, the mass of the 20 foot, 25 foot high front wall is too heavy being only 16 feet from the sidewalk. If 814 Angela's second story were set back a bit, it might help lessen the bulk and open up the sky. Oh, uh, the, the 900 oh, square foot roof deck is guy, extremely you know. large. Hello, are you still here? No, 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 go ahead, Stuart. Go ahead. Okay, the roof deck. 
The 900 square foot roof deck is extremely large and allows direct views into our neighboring yards. I'd like to see the, uh, oh, I think that moving the railings inboard lessen, would lessen the sight lines into our yards and help provide privacy. Thank, thank and you. I want to thank you all for trying to keep on going. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Aye. All right. Okay, uh, board comments. Board comment. Uh, I just like to say that I like to support uh, Mr. Oscars and his assessment of the project. Uh, he's a former member of our board, and I believe that the project is way out of scale. Um, and I understand there's been no willingness on part of the developer to um, discuss the many issues of concern with the neighboring residents. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Go, um, go Alex. Not, not to completely repeat what Mark just said, but Venice is full of character. And when we have houses like this that are going up next to tinier, smaller homes, it's, it's just not fair to the community. Like, it would be one thing if this was cheap land, but nobody's getting punished for building a 3,000 square foot lot. I mean, house. They're just doing it for doing it on a really small lot. And so be considerate of your neighbors. This is a community of people. We shouldn't just be steamrolling in projects just because we want to be able to do whatever we want. Huh. Okay. Um, anybody else? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll say a, a word or two. Way too big. And uh, these massive walls, all of that for privacy, and uh, it's, it, it be, it, it's, it's not actually safer. It hides anybody that gets in and around. Uh, they're not good, and uh, this is out of character. And uh, huh? anybody else? My hands up, Ira. Go ahead. Um, you know, Lupac approved this six to one one, and the demolition of the existing two story house um, suggests that it's already well over twenty feet. That does that say uh, that? Well, it says it's an existing home. They're going to create a four, house. four new two-story house. Excuse me, I am talking. And they're also going to create a second unit um, on the lot, an ADU unit. So they are actually creating two houses. Um, and I guess we're disapproving the concept of increasing housing with an auxiliary dwelling unit. Um, and and I just want to say that, that the, the description of the 20-foot uh, wall that Mr. Oscars was referring to was set back 16 feet from the property line, which is the setback for the building itself. Um, so they're allowed to have a wall there. They're not asking for a variance to that. Um, this is a project that's allowed by code. And if it's, a, they're not asking, the, the motion doesn't say anything at all about allowing a variance. So I have to believe that the case was written up correctly. And a lot of the other comments that we're hearing are just not necessarily addressing um, that, that this project, uh, if we don't want, let me just rephrase this. If we don't like the code, let's change the code, but let's not torture the person who buys a property or believes that they can build on their property under curtain code and all of a sudden strike it down because some of the neighbors don't like what's coming in. Um, the code is up for review and, and that's the place to be working on the change, not at case by case uh, basis. Okay. So I will support this project. Great. Anybody else? All right. Uh, vote. Ira. Abstain. George. Yes. I'll vote no. Mires. Yes. Seema. George. Look at her hand. Seema, you got your hand up? Seema, yes. Yeah. Alex. No. CJ. No. Brian. No. Jamie. No. Bruno. No. Clarence.
Okay. Uh, Mark. No. Jim. Rob. No. Robert. Uh, Soledad. Vicky. No. Did I miss anyone? I don't know if you got mine. I said Clarence, I didn't did you miss Clarence? Sorry, I didn't hear you. What'd you say, Clarence? I, I'm not going to vote. I'm going to abstain on this. Okay, that's fine. Great. All right, the vote is one, two, three. Three, yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, no, and two abstention. Okay. 11B, okay. Ira. Okay, yep. now, all right. Let me, uh, excuse me, Ira, things. let me just remind the board that because we voted this down, that doesn't necessarily mean... I'm about to do that, Jim. Let me do my job. Oh, you want to say the same thing? Okay, go uh, ahead. Well, it's my job. <laughs> You're voting. All right. Ira, so now it's, if somebody would like to make a motion uh, to reject the project, because right now you don't have a position on it. I would like right. to make that motion. I'll second, second Alex's motion. And I'll second it. I'll triple it. Okay. <laughs> All right. so you You've have already to had state. public comment. You've already had public and board comments and just go right to a vote. All right, but wait, he's got to say the motion. <laughs> uh, because What's one that? of the things, I just want to remind everybody, one of the things, if we're going to say we deny the project as presented, we should give them one or two reasons. They have to give reasons, otherwise, I'll, 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 the planning commission, I'm just saying, they'll just, uh, you know. So would you like to uh, say it or have somebody else? Mass character and scale. Yeah, uh, yeah, mass character yeah. and scale in relationship to the immediate neighborhood. Is that yeah. all right, Alex? Yeah. Words out of my mouth, Mark. <laughs> wow. I never thought we'd agree on anything, but. Right. <laughs> Ah, uh, Jim Mures, what? I don't think that that's a definition. That, that that's a very non-quantifiable uh, value. The, the, the Coastal Commission and the and the the city have been wrestling with for 25 years. So I think you need to find if you want to reject the project, you need to find issues with it that are based on. Uh, quantifiable facts. So if you want to say Thank that- Thank you, Jim. We can make whatever down. motion that we like. Mark, I don't interrupt you. Alex and I are making a motion. Me, you interrupt me, Mark. You're interrupting me, Mark. Mark, you're interrupting me, Mark. You cannot critique our motion, Jim. We made the motion. Yes. All right. I would go to vote. Hugh, do you have the motion? Yes. Could you please read it? Uh, the VNC opposes the project as presented as it is outside of mass character and scale of neighborhood. Out, of, right. com out of compliance with out mass of compliance. Okay. And scale. If you like that word better, you're making the All motion. Right. Okay. Yes. Um, Alex, you agree? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Do we have a second? Yeah, we've got a first and a second, Ira. Yeah. All Jim right. Robinson. Jim, Jim hey. a second. Okay, let's vote. Uh, Ira. I'll abstain. George. No. I'll vote yes. Jim. Miras. No. Seema. No. Alex. Yep. CJ. Yes. Brian. Yes. Jamie. Yes. Bruno. Yes. Clarence. Abstaining. Jim Rob. Yes. Mark. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Did I miss anyone? Soledad. Soledad. All right. Soledad, are you, are you there? You didn't, weren't here with last time. Well, she's on the Zoom, but yeah, she didn't vote. All right. All right. Nine, three, two in favor. Okay. Thank you. Very yeah, good. Love and be, Ira. Yes, I'm going there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm slow. Uh, 610 Mildred, okay, go, 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 go. city staff. Oh, Demol all right. Uh, I'll read it. I don't know. Demolition of existing one story single family house with detached garage 
and construction of a new two-story single family house with detached garage. Recommended by Lupex 620. Do we have a second? We don't have a motion, Ira. Oh, right. Why Jim, you may, Jim, I'll make the motion. What is the motion? To approve the project as presented. I got a question on the project. Is it the little white house on Mildred that's very super small? No. The oh. one between, okay. It's the one right behind um, where they wanted to put the restaurant. Ah, copy that. Okay, thanks, CJ. And I need to recuse myself. I think I'm within 500 feet. Okay, thank you. Thanks, CJ. All, All right, right, so we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Okay, great. We have public comment. And I'm cutting off anybody that starts the cursing of the BS. Thank you. Ricky, yes. Fuck Joe Buscaino. Yo, Joe Buscaino is the biggest fucking piece of shit. I can't believe you guys had him on. All right, call in user one. Uh, get ready to, like, remove him from the meeting. Okay. <laughs> okay, unmute. Yes, uh, and again, uh, I, I was at that club meeting, John, I opposed this project. Now, um, I'm trying to look for my notes here because you, you excluded my colleague. I, I believe that he spoke at the, at the club meeting, but um, it, it's a bad project. Again, this is just the same shit all the time. It's taking little beautiful houses and turning it into Manhattan, Manhattanization. So I yield my time and fuck Joe Buscaino, you piece of shit. So is the project. Richard Stanger. Yeah, for years, the Silver Triangle has been fighting the scourge of mansions. Not all new projects are opposed, just those that are three, four, even five times the size of the poems they replace. Over a hundred of its homeowners have been named co-appellants opposing these projects to the Coastal Commission. 610 Mildred is the latest project to come before you. In spite of clear, continuous community opposition, Lupic and the VNC have time and again approved these projects. Where the Silver Triangle neighborhood east of Lincoln, the baseline mansionization ordinance would simply not allow this project. Yet the VNC, which is supposed to be protecting its coastal neighborhoods, keeps approving these inappropriate projects. Lupic is hopelessly held captive you. by the- Ira, look, right. the, the public comment ends, uh, you can't even track it now. It, it, Seven people, it says. No, yeah, but people have been coming on after we opened up public comment. You gotta get a handle on this, okay? Trying. <laughs> the, last, the last public comment before these people jumped on was, uh, probably uh, Colby Mays. But, All right, uh, fine with me. Uh, Joey Buckets. Um, sorry, just in reading over this, it feels like this is a violation of Amendment CD in the way that you've conducted this procedural vote. Um, are you familiar with Amendment CD? Sorry, I know you can't respond during uh, public comment. It's uh, Amendment CD's nuts. Thanks. I have no idea what you're talking about, but anyway. Okay. Go All ahead. Right. Next, Next Robin Rudisol. So in a recent court, uh, Superior Court case on another project in the Silver Triangle neighborhood, the court ruled that the project's cumulative impacts together with other approved projects on the character and scale of the neighborhood must be considered, Jim Murez. And that's because the Coastal Act requires a cumulative impacts analysis. Um, as the Coastal Commission states, protecting community character is a classic cumulative impact issue. And a simple cumulative impacts analysis here shows that um, this project would double or triple the scale and mass of this neighborhood. So Thank please. you. Uh, Nazdi, please unmute. Hi. 
I support this motion um, for the simple fact that um, uh, y'all only ever try to enforce democratic control over housing when it has to do with stopping progress and and you never try to look at maybe focus on housing people that are on the street right now and maybe using our democracy to do that. Maybe uh, there are too many landlords in Venice and it would be better to control our housing democratically rather than only using our democratic to, uh, apparatus to support the property classes and the elite and the landlords. Thank you, Nasty. Okay, thank you. Colby Mays. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hi, I'm the representative for the 814 Angeles Place project that I had my hand up the whole time during public comment and never got called on because I had to listen to the non-compatibility issues that I would like to talk about. So can someone just please let me know, did we get approved or not? I'm a little confused. No, you did not. Okay, because I would like to talk about the comments that were made about the compatibility issues. We, but when we started this project, we reached out to the Colby, community. Colby, Colby, yes. not, not my, this is, this is, it's, 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 un, I'm just going to say this, it's unfortunate that there was not anybody uh, guiding you in, uh, that there was nobody that told us that you were waiting to present and um, you're in a different uh, comment. So that, that's passed. And unfortunately we have to move on. Um, and, uh, you know, we apologize for that. George. Or took their action. <laughs> George. Yeah. George. Yes. Finish the motion. And, and then if somebody on the board wants to do a reconsideration, they can do it. Okay. Okay. If somebody wants to do that, you get it. I, I got you. You know, that's okay. we're 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 moving okay. on with our public comment about eleven B and it ends after Margaret Malloy. These other people put their hands okay. up. Okay. Judy Pie. Unmute. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank, thank you, board, for your time. Um, I also wanted to uh, was had my hand up for Angela's place, but that's a mute subject at this point. Um, my my concern is it sounds like with the comments coming from the board that everyone hasn't um, fully looked at the the file for this project, and it's I would hope that's not the case. Um, I hope everyone has written you know has read the entire file that has come from Lupec because they, they put an awful lot of time into this. And I hope that's also the case for Angela's place. Um, but I would encourage you to, um, you know, venture forward. And uh, again, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -oh. All right, Erica, Venice Beach, please. Unmute, you can talk. Oh. Okay, there we go. Um, I just want to say that I really hope that you guys reject this project for a lot of, I'm just echoing what a lot of people have already said. We, we do have to, we have to really seriously look at how this does cumulatively impact our community because this is not the only project like that. And if you keep allowing this, then what happens is then they say, oh, look, but they're already doing this so we can keep doing it. That's a lot of the what they do and it's very frustrating but thank you so much thank you margaret malloy hey, so uh barry kessley was lupic staff on this and i was at the last lupic meeting where he said if it complies with the venice specific plan and uh, that's all that's required well that's not all that's required and i've strongly recommended that all of the board and lupec be requested to read the Coastal Act and the environmental justice policy from the Coastal Commission because compliance with the Coastal Act supersedes everything. And this isn't compliant with the Coastal Act because it's not in character with the neighborhood. And Thank so- you. Good. Thank you. All yeah. right, uh, board comment. Ooh, okay. I don't see any board comment. All right, if there's no board comment, vote. Okay, Ira. Abstain. George. Yes. All right, I don't know about this project. I didn't have time, so I'm gonna to have to abstain. Uh, Mirez. Yes. 
Seema. Yes. Alex. No. Brian. No. Jamie. Jamie. Bruno. Might have got kicked out. Go find her. No. Uh, Clarence. No. Jim Rob. Jim Rob needs to be let in. All right, hold on. I gotta go down to the Jays. Yeah, no, it's, it's, is he out? Yeah, no, he's not. I'm not seeing him in here. I'm not seeing him out. Okay, well, you know, if he comes back in, just let me know, Brian. Right. We'll let him. Mark. Yes. Solid. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Jim, are you back? Jamie, Rob? No, Jamie says she's in here. Jamie. She said yes. I mean, she's just here. She you can't hear me. Yeah, now no. we can. Yes. Okay. Last chance for Jim Rob. Okay. No, he's not. He's not in the queue. When he comes in, I'll let him in. Seven yeses, four no's, and two abstentions. Okay. Eleven C, Ira. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Did anybody want to rehear the uh, the previous one to let to let the uh, applicant have their say? By the by the way, on that one, I was recused. Right. Oh, we I got one recu one recused. Right. I'm sorry. Thank you. We got that. I think we should. I just think it's the right thing to do. I know that we're we're getting late in the hour, but I just think it's the right thing to do. I agree with I agree with CC. Yeah, we have. Okay, so 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 Ira, I, Ivan, I'm going to have you jump in here and talk about if this is a reconsideration or you're giving the guy a chance to talk because if it's a reconsideration, someone has well, to make a motion. Uh, exactly. I know, I know, and it takes two thirds or three quarters. Yeah. Uh, Ivan will get him involved, but. Um, the thing is, we can't just let them talk and then not vote. <laughs> it's no, got to be a re for letting them talk. We would have to be reconsidering the motion. So yeah. somebody has to officially make a motion to reconsider right. and need a second. And then we need two thirds of the right. president okay. voting board right. members in order hey, to. I vote no on it if right. that helps. Okay. We'll get to you, Jim. It, it we'll get to you. Be... Hang on. Hang on. Whoever made the motion, it needs to be somebody who voted on the prevailing side. Yeah. I think, did CC vote or, or did he abstain? I abstained. Oh, he abstained. I voted, I vote, excuse me. I think I need to make the reconsideration. Did you vote yes? yes. No, I, no, because no, I voted no, yes. No, no, no. The original motion was turned down. It was voted, right? So it would have to be somebody who voted no on the original that was, motion. That includes SEMA. Includes everybody who voted. And no, SEMA voted no in the first round. And I voted no, okay. I'll second SEMA. No. All right. Excellent. Give the representative. So, so SEMA, hang, hang on. So SEMA made the motion now? SEMA second. made the motion, second by Mark. Okay. Um, Wait, I, I'm so sorry if I, if I can just, just you know, understand. Let's just move on and let the, rep talk. Let's let the representative just speak. Folks, folks yeah, we, let we me give you No, we have to vote as to so whether we're going to reconsider. Okay, you're I, I right. That's a vote. That. You're right. If we vote to reconsider, then he will speak. You're right, Eric. You're right. That's right. And it's a two thirds vote. All right. Sorry, you. You got to take roll. another vote. All right. Uh, yes is to reconsider. No is not to reconsider. All right. Uh, Ira. I'll abstain. George. Yes. Uh, I'll vote yes. Um, Mires. Yes. Seema. Yes. Alex. No. CJ. No. Brian. No. Jamie. We can't hear you, Jamie. Yes. Bruno. Yes. Clarence. Yes. Jim Rob. Oh. Mark. Yes. 
Soledad. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Two, two thirds is 10, Hugh. Uh, so it was 10, three, four, one. Okay. Okay. Speak right now, forever hold your peace. Huh? Okay. Uh, the representative, what was his name, Ira? Wait, it's on the uh, thing. Uh, Colby Mays. Colby. Okay. It. Let's, let's, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to bring Colby up here to make him a uh, panelist so he can uh, explain. C Colby? Oh, are you there? That's a good idea. Yeah. All right. Yes. Okay. So, so we made you a panelist. You're the representative for the project. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, just here. Hang on. Honestly, I'm I got just two, here to hang, say. On. hang on. I got two Colby Mazes. No, oh, no, no, no. I'm I the real know. Colby Maze. I want I'm just here to say, honestly, fuck Joe Buscaino. He's the biggest piece of shit of all no, time. No, hey, that's why would you guys up. have him here? I I am the Colby Mays who was supposed to speak earlier. Is I've it, been in this Colby, meeting. do you have your do you have your name? Yeah, hello, 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 hello. hello. Lowercase. I just wanted to hello? Give my time to the man. This is Colby Mays. Can you hear me? Hang on. Yes. Hello? Colby? Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, there's one Colby, Colby Mays. Hello, hello, it. hello. This is Colby Mays. Can you hear me? Yes. Colby. Okay, this is the representative. I don't know who those other people are. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I, I'll make this quick. Thank you for your allowing me to speak. Uh, I this guy's an imposter. Hello? Can you hear me? Hang on. Thanks, guys. No, no, I'm, I'm still here. Yeah, guys, you, you sound like him. Guy I'm the representative. I'm the representative. The original one was in uppercase. Uh, he used capitals on his person. Okay. That was I'm, I'm, I'm the The gentleman Colby? that is speaking is the real Colby Mays. Colby, you're muted now. Is this now, you? I'm unmuted now. Yes, this is the real me. I promise you. Okay. Go. Okay. All right. So I'm the representative of the client. So my clients, Stephanie and Daniel Griffith, they currently live in the house. They have been part of the community for quite some time. They're looking to add on to their house because they want to expand their family. The current <coughs> house is 768 square feet. It's a depleted house. It's in really bad condition. So there's no way we can keep any of the existing condition whatsoever. So we want to tear that down. We want to keep the existing garage in its current location and give it a makeover. We want to create as biggest backyard as possible because they want a lot of green space. They are proposing a two-story house with a partial basement. Uh, in terms of the compatibility issue, uh, our prevailing setback in the front is 16 feet. The way we've tackled this compatibility issue is number one, there's two things. Number one, the height of our building. The maximum <laughs> height for our building for a flat roof is 25 feet <coughs> in the center line of street. We are proposing a roof that is less than 25 feet. It's 24 feet, six inches. There is a there is a house two doors down that is taller than 25 feet. We're not even setting a precedent on this block. It's not even gonna be the tallest building on the block. We're not we're not overwhelming the adjacent neighbors. We're not doing any, anything like that. In Colby, terms let of- me, let, me, let me interrupt you, Colby. We're not gonna cut you off. We're gonna give you a chance to present. Okay, do, please. Would you, do you, hang on, just hang on. Do you, do, would, would you like to share We've seen them before. I know that, um, and I've looked at them. Would you like to share the screen? I would love to. I would love okay, to. I have so it ready. Got that ability, Ira. Why don't you take down your screen share and let him share the screen? I got it. For the project. Okay. It says, uh, "All right. Okay. Good. 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 Good." Okay. Just t take a breath, Colby. Yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> we'll give you a chance. Okay. I just want to make sure you guys are going to cut me off. I know there's been a lot no, no, of I, well, you know, it's, it's, it's a little difficult today. You know, I, I mean, know. because of some of this stuff, we'll give you a chance to to speak. Go right I appreciate ahead. it. Thank you very much. Okay, so let me just go to the site plan. So this is the current survey here. Okay, the existing single family home is there. We're basically tearing that down, and we're proposing a two story uh, house with a basement. So in terms of the height, we're at twenty four six. From the lowest point of the street, as the road slopes up, our building comes less than that because of the gradual slope of the land or the road. In terms of this, the two, two there's there's two um, single story buildings next to us. The way we handled the compatibility issue of putting a two story house sandwiched in between two single story is that we broke up the front facade. For instance, our 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 
Um, on the first level, our prevailing setback is 16 feet. Um, however, um, we've jig jogged our first level to where only a portion of it is 16 feet, but the entry is even much more. It's almost 19 feet. Okay. In addition to that, our second level, we stepped it back from the, the, the face of the, of the front of the building two feet to create a break along the two-story facade, and we put a horizontal planter. So therefore, as you're looking at elevation, the, the planter, which is a lower profile, relates to the two adjacent single-story buildings. You can see the other two-story building over to the left-hand side, which is north of us, which is much higher than our current building. So I just wanted to bring this up because there's been a lot of talk about this is dominating the community and all that. We are trying, we have reached out to all the neighbors. My client had a Zoom call before we went to the LUPC, talked to all the neighbors that are surrounding the two adjacent neighbors and everyone on the block. And everyone was in support of the building. We went to the President Row Associations. I submitted my drawings to them. They supported the project. We submitted it to LUPC. They, they approved the project and now it's been brought to you. The only two conditions that they brought up that we saw was the stair core uh, uh, area, which we cut off the eaves and now the stair core is only 82 square feet. And we eliminated a large window that was looking north onto a property and we just eliminated it altogether so we didn't want any problems. That was the only two conditions that we had in terms of what the LUPC gave to us, what the neighbors complained to us, and um, what the President Row Association to us. So that's my spiel on this project and I hope you guys reconsider. We are trying to work with the community. We do not want to overwhelm this neighborhood. We've done everything we possibly can to blend this thing in. We're tr trying to provide a lot of green on this project. We're, we're a big backyard, a lot of green spaces and a lot of vegetation and warm material. Okay. There's three public comments on this, Ira. Okay. It's 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 all right. I have to get, they're all uh, jamming in now. Public comments closed. It's Kevin Nasdi and somebody who's calling himself George Francisco, whoever we want to call themselves that. So we're gonna, we've had plenty of public comments, so we're gonna take these three. Okay. Well, do we want to uh, allow oh, George Francisco? No, Ira, it's 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 my turn to speak. Thank you. Um so yeah, thank you for the presentation on this uh, mansion project. I, I really would just like to uh, reject it and have apartments be built, high density apartments, so actually more real people can live in Venice in close proximity to, to job centers. Uh, you know, we're not <clears throat> gonna be able to house everybody uh, in Los Angeles and we're gonna continue to have homelessness if we just keep getting projects like this approved. Okay. We need to be able to thank have you, high Who's density talking? housing Thank you, Kevin. That's Kevin. He was our first public comment. Our second oh, one is okay. Nasdi. We've got three. Well, you okay. have to call who was there. It's an hour eight. Go ahead, wow. Nasdi. Go ahead. This is Nasdi. Nasdi, I, I apologize for mispronouncing it. Go ahead. Um, so I, uh, I support this um, because most of y'all don't. That's crazy. <laughs> Go, go ahead, Nasdi. You got you got cut off. He said it. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So yeah, that's that's one tendency, y'all. Please stop muting me. Whoever's controlling the meeting, can you stop muting people when you don't like what they're saying. It's it's. It, go ahead, Nasdi. Hi, Val. I'm trying to I'm trying to say that the problem is capitalism. Your problem is with capitalism. What do you yes. think private property is? Y'all have a massive contradiction in your ideology. The problem is capitalism, you fucking idiots. Thank, thank Fuck you, Nasty. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I like all these people that uh, talk okay. like that. Okay, last public <laughs> comment. Go ahead. Hey, yeah. Uh, why were you guys unmuting Nasdi? That was, that was pretty messed up, honestly. Um, please let people do their whole public comment. Um, Nazi is correct. Uh, capitalism, your ideology is just, it's really messing with you guys. Ira, honestly, please, please look up BOFA. I want you to look up BOFA. I agree with the past caller um, about the item CD, the agenda item CD. Uh, CD's nuts. Um, fuck Joe Buscainos. Honestly, okay, fuck Joe Buscainos. He's, he's the biggest piece of shit of all time. Fuck <laughs> Joe Buscainos. Yeah. 
All right, that's the end of public comment. Hey, we got the worst people. <laughs> All right. That's public oh, comment. How do you stop? That's yeah, I write honestly. We're we're just gonna have to have a talk offline about this and a and a talk with Freddie, and we just need to get through this. Okay, so yeah, um, we'll get through it. Comments. Okay, Why don't we just take a vote. All right, so has any questions. You're, you're back to the original motion. Yes. Okay, uh, and it I, only takes the majority vote. All right, I I, I can't see. I don't have a hand. Nathan, right. Could I ask what's the square footage of the project? Sure. Oh. Let me. Colby, go ahead and answer the question. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, the maximum square feet for the lot is 6570. We are proposing uh, with the basement, it's 3633. That's the RFA. Is the basement considered habitable space? It is. We're, we're putting a light well in there. They're going to have like a little den down there, like a play area for their kids. And what's can the you lot, lot size again? The lot size is. 4211, it's zoned for R2. We could have up to four, I believe four units on here. And the maximum allow of RFA is 6570. So we're not you even coming. How many dimensions um, of the lot? Of the lot? Uh, here, um, I can share my screen. I can show 50, you. I mean, 50 by 100 or what? It's uh, 40 wide by 106 deep. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a quick question. We yes. are reconsidering the motion to deny. No, no. the motion no. to approve no. as presented with the two modifications. Right. All right, guys. Well, by well, well, can I if you would him, like, please? I can reread the motion. Can, can, can I answer him, please? Well, no. If we're doing the original with two modifications, all no, we no. need you to hear is the two modifications. Back to the original motion. You're going to take a vote, and you only need a majority to pass it. Right. Okay. If it fails, then we can talk about what happens next. But right now, you're going to vote to, to uh, okay. approve the original motion. All right. If you do, okay. that's the end of it. We're we're back to the original motion. Let's take a vote, Hugh. Well, I have I have a question, and I I don't have a hand I don't have a hand on my thing. Uh, right. I'd like a response to. Uh, the, the comment before he was on, uh, uh, Colby oh, was on about the variance, whether there is or is not oh, a variance. Oh, yes, yes. Can I speak? Go right ahead. Uh, yes, yeah, so we are not applying for a variance. I don't even know where that came from. And also, I want to point out your description of our project. We are not adding an ADU. We are keeping the existing garage. We're only demoing the house and building a little bit bigger house. That's it. So the case description is a little wrong. It's, we're not propo proposing an ADU or asking for a variance of any kind. Everything is to code. There was there was no variance uh, uh, described in the motion from LUPAC. That was a public- Damn, you made that point. But one yeah. of the public comments was there was. I just yeah. wanted clarification. Thank you. Well, one of the board members implied that, which is why I think we were a little misled. And I appreciate Colby's information. Right. Um, yes. Thank you, Colby, for clarifying right. that. And Colby. if I just can, uh, so I would just like to go back to Jim Yuris's, uh older point about this. It, this is private property, and I'm sorry, I supported this motion when it first came on. So I would just like to re reiterate that. And um, I don't think they're asking for too much. Uh, point of order, or can I just ask? It sounds sure, to me sure. like we're. It seems to me like we're about to vote on a case description that's wrong. This doesn't accurately describe the project because there's no ADU. So she. Doesn't this no, need there, no, no, a Alex? The, the case description is right. Somehow it got conflated to say there was an ADU in here. There, it says that there's there an ADU. There, it says an ADU. There's an AD. It says that in the case description. Can, oh, can I'm I, sorry. I'm looking, Alex, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong one. That's my bad. Usually you, you caught me on that one. Yeah. So this needs, we, they need to rewrite this case description so that we can vote accurately on it. Well, it depends how you read the comma. It could be demolition of an existing home for a new two-story single-family home with a roof deck, comma, 
and there's a de detached garage and ADU. It no, doesn't say ADU, they're going to build an ADU. But an ADU is a legal term for an inhabitable unit. It's yeah. not an and or. It's not an or. No, but it's there. Right, it's there. No. So no, it's not. It says in the key. Let Alex finish. I thought Toby said it was there. No. no. It's no, not not. There. no, but it's in the, my point is that it's in the case. Yes. Okay. So they're building it as well. No, yeah. no, Ira. No, this, Ira, the case description is incorrect. It does not accurately describe. Right. Okay. It's just I'm not, I'm not arguing anymore. Are they building Alex, a why don't you, ADU? Why don't you make a motion, Alex, why don't you make a motion to amend to take out the word ADU? Right. Well, I don't want this project done in the first place, so I'm not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll make the motion. I think we need to fairly go through the process, so I'll make the motion. I'll second it. But well, wait, make the motion. What is the motion? To, to remove the, the word ADU. ADU. To remove ADU. ADU if that is not the case. Okay. All right. Who made that motion? George made it, and Jamie or Jamie made it. George seconded it. Can Thank we just you. have Colby clarify if he's yeah. listening? Yes. Just... Hey, hello. Yes. yes. Yeah, we are not proposing an ADU. There's no ADU on the site. There's an existing garage coming off the alley. We're keeping the garage where it is. We're only doing work where the main house is. That's it. Okay, and okay. Kobe, the only question I have for you, I believe that you said that it was 746 square feet of the present house now. What will be the square footage of the new house? Um, is that 30 something? Yeah, with the basement and the, the eaves and all that, 3633. So that includes the eve overhangs um, of, of the house. Yeah. Okay. But he also the, said, you, you said the basement is a part of that. And I think it's 738 square feet is it of the basement. It's a partial basement. Okay. okay. I'm ready to vote. Right. So above ground, we're only building 2,546 square feet. And we're allowed to do on this lot as an R2, 6,570 6, square feet. So we're you're not, not even coming close. close. I got it. I got it. I'm ready to okay. vote. Thank you. Well, first we have to vote, George. First we have to vote on the Jamie. amendment. On yeah. this amendment, yeah. Okay. The description amendment, yeah. Yeah. Removing the word ADU. Yes. So, Q, you want to take that? Um, a vote on that? Ira. Mm. No. George. Yes. I'll vote yes. Mures. Yes. Seema. Yes. Alex. Yeah. CJ. Recuse. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Um, Do it. Uh, Brian. Oh, that's the wrong one. No, that's the wrong, wrong one. This, this is, we're back on 814. Um, okay, and I'm a no. Okay. <laughs> I forget. Brian. Yeah. Uh, Jamie. Yes. Bruno. Yes. Clarence. Yes. Jim Rob. Can't hear you, Jim. Still Is he can't hear you. Okay, Jim votes no. He votes no or he's not voting? He voted thumbs down. Oh, all right. Uh, Mark? Yes. Uh, Soledad? Yes. Vicky? Yes. All right, so the motion to amend passes one, two, uh, three, Ro four. Robert, Robert Thibodeau came back. Oh, yes. Robert. All right, Robert. Sorry, Robert. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 1303. I mean, it's 1303. Can we okay. vote on the amended so now motion? Okay. I was, was a no. Motion. I was a no. Motion. I was amended. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's take a vote on the amended motion, Hugh. And this would be the same people who moved to move the motion to reconsider? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ira. No. Excuse me. Could you restate the motion? Yes. Approve the project as as presented with the two conditions and the removal of the ADU from the description. No. Oh, yeah. No. 
Well, no, what? No, that's not the motion, or no? No, no, no. no. Ira's that's Ira's vote if he's voting. Ira's voting no. <laughs> yeah. No. <Okay>. Yes. <laughs> yes, George. I'm voting no. Okay. Okay, George. Yes. Uh, I'll I'll vote uh, no again. Uh, Mires. Yes. Seema. Can you come back to me, please? Absolutely. <laughs> Alex. No. CJ. Uh, no. Brian. Yeah, still no. Jamie. Yes. Bruno. Yes. Clarence. Yes. Jim Rob. He put his thumb down. Him. Mark. Abstain. Robert. Yes. Soledad. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Seema. Yes. All right. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine yeses. Oh, 10. One, two, one, two, three, four. Five no's and one abstention. Okay, Kobe, we're, 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 we're going to send you back. You're done. Uh, thank you for your time. It, uh, it, it, did I get approved? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh thank sorry. You. Six, nine, six, one. I apologize. Okay, I want to say, first of all, I want to say, everyone, thank you for your volunteering to this time. I know it's very time consuming and you heard a, a bunch of people being rude to you. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, th thank you for your time. Okay. All right, move on, George. Move on. Or Tyra. Uh, we're going for 11C. 11C is a CIS in support of amendment to CF 20-1213 calling for report on very high fire safety zones. Um, I will make this motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Is that Mark? That is Mark. Yes, Ryan. sir. Yes. It's George Thank and Mark. You. This is uh, a pretty straightforward uh, motion. Um, I don't know if you want me to read it, guys, if you haven't, um, you know, uh, I think we're, uh, I think we've seen more than ever before to, you know, we have fire hazards, so. Um, it, it's important to note that this has been amended to include yeah, flood, yeah. groundwater, and sea level rise planning. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, lowering all hands. Is there any public comment on motion 11 C. Okay. Get ready. Okay. That's it. Jessica, it's, closed. Yes. it's closed. There are four comments. Four people. If you don't want to, don't want to comment on 11 C, you know, we're just going to move on. So Ira, hang on. Jessica J. Go ahead, Jessica. Hi there. I just want to say we witnessed you take a vote for motion, integrate a developer to present when they were not on the agenda, and then take another vote, allow him to have 20 uninterrupted minutes of public comment. This is, about, this is about 11 you guys C. are in trouble. OK, thank you. It's about 11 C. Thank you. Uh, Eva. Um, hi there. While we're talking about very high fire safety zones, can you please declare Margaret's business a very high piss safety zone? I know she's been really mad because I keep pissing all over it, but I just can't help it. There's no bathrooms and you guys refuse. That's to not even. Thank you. That's not 11C. Okay. You want, uh, you want to know what that, 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 I read, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you know. True. Okay. Uh, do we have board comment? Seeing that, looks like rabid uh, agreement. All right, um, let's take a vote. Ira. I'll abstain. George. Yes. I'll vote yes. Mires. Yes. Seema. Yes. Alex. <laughs> yeah. CJ. Yes. Brian. Yep. Jamie. Yes. Bruno. Yes. Clarence. Yes. Jim Rob. Can I see his thumb? His thumb is up. Okay, Mark. Yes. Robert. Abstain. 
Soledad. Yes. Vicky. Yes. All right. Uh, two abstentions. The rest are yeses. I'll count count them up. Right. Okay. Moving on to, to new business, Ira. Old business, nothing. New business. All right, Jim, you want to read your motion? Um, am I muted? No. Uh, streetscape, landscape, sidewalks, motion. VNC sends a letter to the Department of Public Works requesting that they provide VNC with a list of materials that are allowed to be installed within the public right of way. 420. I'll second that, Jim. All right, do we have any public comment? Two. We have two public comments. Hey there, I would love it if you could take Joe Buscaino and sand him inside the sidewalk. Like we can fill it with cement, yeah. put him in there, maybe there tie some go. buckets. I don't have time for people playing games. Okay. All right. There's someone named Jamie. We're going to let her talk. Go ahead. On the motion, 13A, Jamie. Uh, yes, um, I'm calling, uh, this is the letter to the Department of Public Works um, requesting the landscape materials. Mm -hmm. I'm just oh, wondering, yes. yeah, I'm yes, just wondering, is. Is, there, is there any ligma included? Okay. Hello? That's a question. Okay. Uh, I'm just, I'm wondering if there's any ligma included in the materials. Well, that's what we're trying to find out. Well, well, well thank you, Jamie. It's, 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 it, they're gaming you, Ira, on that one. Okay. Um, okay. Belfry. Unmute. All right. I'd like to suggest a modification, a modification of this motion that um, you allow uh, any materials which are essential to sustain life to be uh, allowed to be installed in the public right of way such as someone's home who's living in a tent on the sidewalk because y'all make all these exceptions for okay, like rich well, and that's, people that's but not, never make any exceptions for people that can't fucking survive. Can't you kick these people out of the meeting? Well, they're just gonna well, come he in. didn't curse. He didn't call us idiots. That's okay. So he was the least. Let's just go through it, okay. First, do we have to do George Francisco to yell at us? <laughs> yeah, the last, we the do. last person. Yeah. No, it's not George. Okay. All right, no, but 13, this, this one, this specific agenda, agenda item, no. Yep, <laughs> 13, 13, no, the eight. Jamie had a good question about... Um, about... <laughs> okay, see you later. Thank you. Okay, that's the end of public comment, guys. Let's take a vote, Ira. No, oh, yeah, that, that. All right, yeah, that's fine with me. Oh, what about board comment? Guys, are we in agreement that it's okay to send a letter such as this? Is there anybody that's opposed? If there's anybody that's opposed, please speak up now. No. And I, yeah. I will accept the uh, the fact that we are in a dramatic uh, agreement. Okay. Here. And uh, we will move on to 13B. Would you like me to read that? I would like you to read it, James. The motion, overheight vehicles. Motion, whereas overheight vehicle regulations that current exist in Venice Council covers some residential streets, but not others. The VNC requests that LADOT, Council Office, Mayor's Office, BOE, that all Venice west of Lincoln Boulevard be made into no parking zone for overheight vehicles from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Okay, I'll second that motion. 600 by parking and transportation. Okay. 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 Comment. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, it is 10. Seven. Okay, that's it. Ten public comments. Jessica, your last one. If you're going to change anything, then it'll end with uh, Sean O'Brien. Okay. Good. Public comments closed. All right, Camilo. Camilo. So uh, it, it's Camilo. So the, this specific on 13B is just another excuse to go after people who are homeless without actually giving them any real options besides criminalization, uh, any motions that, that, that will ban people from 2 to 6 a.m. is uh, bullshit. And you guys should be ashamed of yourselves for supporting 
anything like this. And just shout out to Ricky for making this this meeting bearable and entertaining. I was actually going to leave this meeting, but this shit is just so fucking funny. You guys are so fucking... James M. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, come on, guys. <laughs> like, you know, your hatred for the unhoused isn't enough. Now you're going to pick on the people who happen to be lucky enough to have an RV and say you can't park in an RV overnight anywhere in Venice. What is wrong with you people? Do you have any soul whatsoever? Or were you just like totally inhabited by fucking Zool from Ghostbusters? Come on. This is sadistic. Vote no. Oppose this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, all right. Get ready. <laughs> Belfry. Hi, my name is Belfry. Um, yeah, I would like to say that, again, this motion should be modified to make exemptions for anybody that needs to sustain life, like live in their vehicle because there are tens of thousands of people that live in their vehicles. And, you know, actually I'd like to propose an additional motion that we ban all of you motherfuckers from sleeping in your own homes from the hours of two to 6 a.m. because that's exactly what this motion does. How fucking psychopathic are you to see that you are literally banning people Thank from you. existing? Nigel. Uh, hi, yeah. Um... Yeah, this is this is just another bullshit anti-homeless uh, ordinance. It doesn't actually fix anything. It doesn't produce any actual outcome other than brutalizing and criminalizing people for just existing. Uh, you know, I think it's kind of ridiculous that, you know, we spent 22 minutes basically hearing a developer pitch a mansion and then you guys move right on to these these motions that are punishing the most vulnerable people in our city. Uh, maybe just look at yourselves and think about why you're such shitheads. Thanks, Nigel. Lisa Redman. Hey, gang. Um, you know, this is wrong. This is just, this is just a giant shell game. All you want to do is just get rid of unsightly RVs. It, it, all, it, you're, all you're going to do is like, we don't want to see them, but they don't care if you're going to move up to Westchester or to Mar Vista, just as long as you don't have to look at them. Why are you so quick to get rid of anything, but there should be a motion in there that says, we demand that the city council office find safe parking for them. Thank we you. need an alternative. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, Ira. Are we still in one? Because Jamie's- yeah, no, I've got a, I got a clock. I want it ends. Go ahead. All right. Kevin. Yes. Hi, still here, still hacking. Uh, this is obviously another ordinance you need to oppose that you've only put on here to make the lives of unhoused people uh, untenable and miserable. It's really disgusting that you're even considering this after you spent half of this meeting talking to cops and, and that one developer who got uh, a bunch of time to speak off the agenda. Why not advocate for safe parking? Uh, you know, why, what if people came to your home and were like, no, you can't actually sleep between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. every single night. How Thanks, dare you do this kind of bullshit? <laughs> All right, do we go to board comment? No, we got, we got one, two, three. We have four more public comments. But wasn't and, Jamie? All right, you got it. What? All right, Jamie. Yeah, I just, I, I can't believe you folks are, are trying to, just justify this meeting after giving 20 minutes to a developer. That's, this is insane. So um, just for this motion, again, like everyone's saying, it's targeting unhoused people. This is actually some people's final chance. Um, you should get out and do some outreach, meet some people that are unhoused. Like this is some people's final chance at having some kind of roof over their head. And I would just hope that you could find it in your soul to not take that from them. Thank you, Jamie. Erica. Erica, Venice Beach. Venice Beach, Erica. I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah, so this is unconstitutional. The Coastal Commission will not allow this uh, stupid motion that is trying to make life harder for people who live in their cars. And uh, RVs count as private property. So why, why are you trying to say that people can't live you're saying people can't live on the streets. You're saying people can't live in their private property. You're saying people can't live anywhere. So what are you trying to say? Just that you're the only people who are allowed to live in Venice Beach and that's it. Y'all are really racist. Okay, U7, Sean O'Brien. Wow, tough night guys. Uh, Thank you. This is a little overreaching. Uh, it is needed. Y'all know the proliferation. One becomes two, two becomes 10, 10 becomes 20 very unsafe. They take up all the parking. Uh, I, I support the motion. Not not 100%, but I support it enough to and hang in there, guys. Tonight's almost over. Thank you, Sean. Okay, final public comment, Ira. Jessica J. Hi, I just want to say that if you're going to force homeless people and house people, force their migration um, and try to remove them from your neighborhood, I just wish you guys would try to find more compassionate tactics for it, more compassionate placement, not use inspiration from white supremacists, Andrew Jackson and force a trail of tears to get undesirables away from you into a space you don't have to worry about them. I urge you guys to think compassionately, you're only creating a problem for your neighbors and your neighboring NC and the next NC to deal with when you're not solving problems. That's them from people who call your neighborhood. Thank you, Jessica. Okay, board comment, Ira, before we take a vote. Okay, um, I, I have a comment right away. Um, I'm looking at this from a completely different point of view. If some government came in and said to me, here's what you gotta do, because we're changing the law from where we would ask you what you wanna do, which is the way it is now, you have to have the residents on the street, sign a petition and ask for this. But now you're forcing this just like Survey LA. Everybody's forcing, forcing. You have no right to come to my block and where I live and tell me how to live. It's really, aside from the fact that it is ridiculous, you want to change the law so that the VNC now makes these decisions block by block? Disgusting. Thank you. I think Brian had his hand up. Hang on, Brian had his hand up. Then we'll get to you. I think it was Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think this is a, a drastic overreach. I think we all know that it's never going to happen between the city and the Coastal Commission. Uh, I don't think we should ever put something like this through. I think when you when you put something like this through, that's just not going to happen. Us as a, as a body, we just lose credibility. Uh, so what we need to put forth, I think, uh, maybe stuff like what Mark is talking about. Uh, on Main Street. Uh, it makes sense maybe on Main Street. A, because the bridge house is within eye shot, and B, because there's sort of open air meth dealing chop shops literally on Main Street. So I think in, in certain spots, it makes sense. This drastically overreaching motion makes no sense, and we all know it's not going to happen. That's it. Okay, are there any other comments? Mark, hand? Go ahead, Mark, Maybe and then we'll get you. I would point out that the city of Santa Monica, just the north of us, is a blanket prohibition against, prohibition against any vehicles over eight feet tall, and that it has not been challenged in any way by the Coastal Commission. So that, and the South Bay cities have the same. So that Brian's sense that this will not pass Coastal Commission um, approval is I, I I'm sorry to say Brian is not correct um, because the other cities throughout uh, the Santa Monica Bay have such prohibitions. I have a motion to make. I would ask at the request of several of our colleagues in East Venice that the that the eastern border on this not be Lincoln Boulevard, but be Walgrove. And I am looking for a second. So, oh, Mark, you're you're making an amendment. Yes. Okay. To amend the, the motion to extend the um, to make the eastern <coughs> of this motion not Lincoln, 
but to encompass all of our colleagues in single family residential neighborhoods um, in East Venice. Mark, Mark I, I get okay. you, I apologize to cut you off. I'm just trying to get the language right. So, so would it be safe to assume that what you want is to say, we take out the words that all of Venice west of Lincoln Boulevard so we take out the words west of Lincoln Boulevard. Is, would that be, so it would say all yeah, of Venice? All of Venice. Okay, so your motion is to remove the words west of Lincoln Boulevard. Is there a second for that? I'll second it. Who, who, who is, is that? that? Roberto. Okay, Robert Thibodeau. Okay, so okay. we have, Mark Ravick made a motion, Robert Thibodeau amended it, uh, or seconded it, and, um, you know, Ira, this is, uh, this is you. The, the public comment is, is just gonna be, is, is more of the same. Do we want to uh, accept the public comment we've already had because the motion is not to the, to the substance? Uh, no. No, okay. I mean, public comment is said, uh, has been basically one-sided, I don't know. So okay. yeah, this is not, uh, Going to change their opinions. Okay, that's it. Public comment is open. Public comment is closed. Erica from Venice Beach is the last. Lisa Redmond, that's it. Okay. Right. Ira? Well, there's somebody saying Freddie of Dunn, but I don't believe it. No, it's not Freddie of Dunn. Yeah, well, let's see what happens. I'm ready to exit. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm mute. Okay. Yeah, you're all, in, you're all in comparable pieces of shit. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> I love, I love that. The okay. worst despicable people calling us. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, Melissa McFadden. Uh, yes, I'm an East member or East Venice resident. And uh, I'm not, I'm not a hacker. I actually live here. And I'm opposed to the way this is written. I agree with Mark Ryavec that it needs to be written to include all of Venice, not just East of Lincoln. So, uh, you know, I think our most vulnerable members of society are the children here in our neighborhood and our parks, and we need to protect those and be included in this in this um, motion. Thank, Thank you, Melissa. Okay. Call in user two. Okay. Oh, you did it already. Okay. Not a yes. Opposition to the motion. No good. And I'm not going to say the other thing because I don't want to get thrown off again. I was mad tonight. <laughs> so I, I'm afraid to even oppose the motion. God, man. I, I, we're on a short leash tonight. But anyway, y'all going to get sued. You're going to get sued and you're going to wind up in a van down by the Venice Canal River. Thank you. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Margaret Malloy. I've written to Gaz at not complaining about this motion and it's a broad stroke on how people and uh, the people behind it just come up with one miserable recommendation after another to purge Venice of all unhoused residents while your own uh, <laughs> And Power LA representative told you that you have to accommodate voting for unhoused residents in Venice. So it couldn't be more at odds with the mayor. Thank you, Margaret. Jay? Uh, wait, we, didn't we already have this, Jamie? We already had it, the Jamie. Oh, that was the Jay. What? No, we had the Jamie was the first John. one. Go ahead, it's John well, S. Is Go ahead, John well, S. What's Joe? No, this is John S. John S. So I'm, I, so I'd like to say that, uh, Y'all's efforts to shut down public comment uh, is really despicable. You're not allowed to filter what people are saying. Um, you have to take public comment. Uh, secondly, it's really gross how y'all try to define a resident as not including uh, someone who lives in their car. These people are part of your communities. They're part of your neighborhoods and you need to start thinking of them as your neighbors because they are your fucking neighbors. You're, you're on your pieces of shit, like someone else said. Thanks, John. <laughs> I, I remember, didn't we start with Jamie? Yeah. Started with this Jamie person, I'm taking a yeah. hand. I don't get to. Rick Garvey, unmute. Mm. 
Rick Jarvie, our guy. All right, so I agree. I can't believe this motion. This is ridiculous. I completely oppose it. And Ira, I agree with you. I think, you know, the current situation that there are signs on some streets and not others is because people took the time to knock on doors and say, do you want these signs? They knocked on my door. We said, no, we don't have these signs currently. And I don't want them forced on me. Not only because it's criminalizing the homeless, and that's why Ryavec, that's why you have this motion is to get rid of homeless people. It's ridiculous, but it is completely overbearing. And I can't believe you're going to give up your own freedoms just so you don't have to see somebody living in an RV next to your house. Thank you. Hey, Erica from Venice Beach, then Lisa Redman, and Lisa Redman was announced as the end of public comment. Hey, Erica from Venice Beach. Um, yeah, so y'all are trying to differentiate between your neighbors and unhoused people, and you're trying to differentiate between children and unhoused people as if they aren't one in the same. Uh, y'all just made this bill motion worse for whatever reason, even though y'all are supposed to be listening to your constituents and everyone is telling you no. You can't just ignore public comment because we're all saying no. If we're all saying no, maybe you should listen to the people who are saying no. Y'all are just using this as an excuse to be racist, to criminalize homelessness, and to be awful people who have no empathy. Thanks, Erica. Hang on a second, Ira. Let me get my screen back up. Okay, final public comment. Lisa. Yeah, uh, George is right. I'm still opposed to this motion, but even more so now with Ryavik's awful <laughs> uh, wanting to expand it. I'm still going to stick to the Coastal Commission is going to refuse this because the Coastal Commission has something called a, a coast, the Coastal Act was amended a few years back that allowed for environmental justice, which is the fair treatment of all people of all races, cultures, and incomes with respect and that includes people living in motor homes. I know a lot of attorneys too, Mr. Ryabek. You'll Thank be all you, sued. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw your name and I thought, okay. you know, these people have now been using our names. All right, there. All right. All right. Yes. Mute, mute yourself, Ira. We can hear you. Oh, yeah. Seems like right. I like So, so uh, uh, board comment on uh, uh, the amendment to this motion. Can I just make a comment that yes, uh, it's uh, with this amendment, but also as a whole that at one point in the beginning of COVID, our council member did offer safe parking and, and at Duckweiler Beach. And part of it was is to look at bringing people to a safe place, but also offering services and amenities that are needed for RVs. As somebody who has an RV, I know that you have to be able to dump it somewhere and you can't just dump it in a public street. So these things were addressed. I'm wondering where that safe parking is now and why we don't look to the council member's office to continue to apply pressure to provide this for people living in RVs rather than on streets in Venice or wherever. Mark, go right ahead. Yeah, I just want to provide a little perspective. I've Spent a lot of time traveling different parts of the world. I've been very fortunate to do that. And civilized societies don't allow RVs, campers, people living in vehicles in residential neighborhoods or commercial neighborhoods. They, if they want to, they provide, as Jamie was saying, not just safe parking facilities, but they provide basically the equivalent of trailer parks for people. The failure of this society and this city and this county to do the same um, should not end up being a tremendous burden upon residents and, and businesses. Um, I think it's only by our taking a assertive action to say, along with to follow our neighbors, Santa Monica, Redondo Beach, Hermosa Beach, El Segundo, um, to basically say these don't have um, an appropriate um, right to be in our cities. They really should be banned from our cities. 
and force the governments to provide, again, some kind of trailer park facilities. And I would look at the median of the 90 freeway as a huge space that could accommodate um, this population. Um, and it's only when we say no that people like Bonin and Garcetti, I hope, will react by providing the appropriate placement um, for these vehicles. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Okay, so I got Vicki and James have their hand up. Uh, whichever one of you guys wants to go first. Vicki, why don't you go first? Um, okay. Um, my inclination is to vote no on this because safe parking has not been offered for the for the oversized vehicles that the city has had ample time they've had ample su suggestions about locations for it and nothing has happened which is which is a big worry because of the waste on the street and you know the the lot and parking is part of the problem but it's more just the conditions of not having the hookups um i'm very torn about this motion i i not crazy about the way it's written. Um, it's a it's a tough it's a tough call. Uh, okay, point thanks, of order. Uh, are, are we talking about the just the we're just talking about the amendment, right? We're yeah. not talking about the motion. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, that's a, that's okay. That's a, I just want to make sure. I just yeah, want to make. Sure. We're, okay. are the, this is we're discussing, to, uh, you know, to uh, to take out the words west of Lincoln. Okay. Okay. Anybody else got any any other comments about that? I, I had my hand up, but it Go ahead. came down. Um, I would just like to say that I think that that uh, I'm not opposed to the east of, of Lincoln, um, but I'm opposed to taking it out of the coastal zone. Um, the the uh, the the um, what do you call it? The history, the, the 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 foundation that we have of all of the other coastal communities pretty much up and down the entire coast. We're not, I mean, Pismo Beach is sort of an exception because they let people camp on the beach. Um, and, and that would be the, I think the only exception that I'm aware of. And after I've checked, there aren't very many places. Uh, I mean, there's, there's Dockweiler where you're allowed to, there's other campgrounds um, that the state or the, the cities, counties have provided. Um, but as far as random cars, parking on the street, recreational vehicles and campers. We're not talking about people sleeping in their cars. I'm just concerned that if we take it past Lincoln, which is our coastal zone, that we're stepping into uncharted territory. And I think I that- I can tell Jim that Topanga and Malibu both voted for something very similar within the past months. Yeah, but I, I, that, would, that would probably still be within the coastal zone. The Coastal Commission has jurisdiction over Topanga Canyon pretty much uh, all the way up to, to the top of the ridge, I believe, um, and Malibu all the way up to the to the ridge of the mountains there. So I think that that uh, if we stay within the coastal zone, I think that we have some some basis um, to putting pressure on the city. Like Mark said, that they need to provide something, and there are areas within the city that they could do that very easily. Um, instead of storing RVs on the 90 freeway, they could actually turn it into an RV uh, hookup location. But again, um, so I, I think that, that we're overstepping our boundary by taking it past the coastal zone. Thank okay. you. Robert, last comment, then we'll take a vote on the amendment. Yeah, I think we're, um, we're kind of parsing details and really the point is to send a message that um, that Venice isn't um, Venice isn't a campground, and um, the the point isn't to persecute the people in the RVs. The point is to send a message to the city that they need to find another solution for this, and sending everybody to Venice in their RV. And what we're doing is not unlike what other communities along the coast and elsewhere are doing. It's it, what we're trying to do is send a message saying. The current situation is not is not good for the people in the RVs. They should have better services, yep, or in some place to go, as well as the residents who who live here in apartments and and houses and have businesses here shouldn't have to have people uh, camped out living in front of their places. I mean, 
neither situation is good. And this is just sending a message to the city saying we have a situation that's not good and it's frankly getting worse. And you need to understand that. And I, I think that's the point is to send a message. Okay, thank you guys. Is there anything else? We're just gonna vote on, on the amended language here. Okay. Um, I, I guess I, I just would like, I mean, I think Jim makes a Jim makes a valid point. Uh, I, I don't know, Mark. Do you? What do you? I mean, do you? What do you think about that? I'm sorry, um, CC. What, what was the point that Jim made? That Jim was making the point that by us extending the boundary, it takes us out of the coastal zone, and the other and the other communities that are that have been able to get, uh, I guess, approval of being able to get the restrictions of the the right. RVs. I, I, I think that Jim is incorrect on this because if you look at the other communities like just Santa Monica, just drive up Main Street and you'll see the sign. The sign says no vehicles over eight feet tall. It applies in the coastal zone and it applies all the way to the east border of the city of Los Angeles around Sentinella so that they, they set a rule of no vehicle over eight feet tall and it applies to commercial vehicles, RVs, campers, it's uniform. Yeah. And it doesn't matter whether it applies to the coastal zone in Santa Monica or it applies to the part of Santa Monica that's not in the coastal zone. Yeah, so, but Santa Monica is its own municipal so they can make those decisions within their city themselves. And, and Santa Monica, Mark, has provided campgrounds they they actually do have RV uh, trailer parks there. No, they they don't they don't have RV trailer. They have trailer parks. Right. But they don't have drive-in. They have several of them. They even have them along the coast highway. I'm sorry, you're wrong. That's not Santa Monica. That's in Palisades. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're you know, allowed to guys, say I'm, it. Stop arguing, please. I'm you gonna... say one thing, he says another. Okay. Somebody will believe one or the other. Just stop arguing. It's... It's, they're not arguing or having a, a discussion. Let's be fair, but uh, guys, we got we still have a lot to go through, and obviously we've got a lot of people that have things to want to say. So hang on, guys, I'm talking. Hang on, I got. Give me, let me, let me run the meeting. We're we're gonna start to limit this to you know one board comment after we get through this, and we we're voting on yeah. Mark's amendment, which is taking language out. So Hugh, I want to call for a vote because whether the amendment passes. We still have to vote on the amended motion. If it fails, we still have to vote on the original motion. So there are two votes to come up. So let's uh, let's all take a vote and we should take a roll call vote, Hugh. Um, all right, this is on the amendment. For the motion, yeah. Uh, on the amendment, uh, Ira. Uh, yes. George. Yes. I vote no. Mures. No. Seema. Uh, Alex. No. CJ. Um, yes. Brian. No. Jamie. Yes. Bruno. No. Clarence. Yes. Jim Rob. Jim Rob <laughs> has his thumb down. Down? Okay. Uh, Mark. Yes. Robert. Yes. Soledad. Yes. Vicky. Yes. Seema. Uh, yes. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten yeses. One, two, three, four, five, six noes. No abstentions. Okay, so we have an amended motion to vote on. Um, so that public comment was on the amendment, but we're going to do public comment again on the amended motion. Excuse me, George. We already did public comment. We did public comment. We did. Okay. On then the motion. If, we did, if we did public comment yeah. before the amendment, then we can yeah. then we can take a vote on the amended yeah. motion. Right. No board comment. We can have board comment on the amended motion. Sure. I have. A, I just have a question. Go right ahead. Uh, if I have a Sprinter van that's eight feet, that's taller than eight feet. 
can I not park it on the street if this is passed? Yes, that's correct. You cannot park it on the street if this is done. Uh, this does not specify the height yet. It hasn't been determined yet. So we're voting on a motion that doesn't specify the height of vehicles? Uh, I, don't, I don't see it in Jim's motion. It just says- uh, It's the overheight vehicle ordinance. Which is how tall? Seven. I believe it's seven feet. Yeah. Mark, you were the writer of this. I, I believe you were the one that said it was the OV. Uh, the o OV. Oversized height. vehicle. Oh, no, no, this was on your agenda, Jim. I assume you wrote it. O o the OHV, the overheight vehicle ordinance, yes. No, it's, it's called the OVO ordinance. OVO. Overheight vehicle. <laughs> um, I didn't write this, Jim. It was on your agenda. Okay, no, he said you wrote it's, the original. It's there. Alex, to answer your question, yes, a, a, a vehicle that was over the height restriction being at seven feet, unless it's posted at something else, but the statute is written it's at, at right. seven feet. You would feet. not be able to, not be able to that on the street, okay. on the street. I wanna, overnight. I want, I want overnight. the option to live my life and put my sprinter van on the street. Okay. Right, you would get the story to store it the way that people have to do in Santa Monica. Pull it into your driveway. Yeah. That's it. Well, now, now, now we're, guys, now we're talking in theoreticals. <laughs> Alex made a point. He's articulated a point. I'm gonna go over to SEMA now. And, and, and we're gonna give everybody else one more comment and then we're gonna take a vote. Go so ahead, my question is this, if the point of this motion is to send a message to the city why do we not add the language to say, hey, we need more parking for oversized vehicles for the unhoused populations? Why can't we just add that? Because the reality is there was just an incident in our neighborhood where somebody was looking to park their RV somewhere else other than a residential street. And there's just simply no place for people to so why can't we make this motion about having places like our councilman, he opened up the Westchester office, but that has absolutely no camping provisions for overheight vehicles. Seema, so if, if you want to do that, make a motion. To help our unhoused residents. Seema, Seema, make a motion. I would like to, I would like to make That's a not motion part of it. To amend no. it, but, but I, one thing I can tell you is, and, and Ira and Hugh probably remember this as well, um, we, we, we did pass a motion uh, a number of years ago requesting um, uh, oversized vehicle parking, safe parking or supporting the safe parking program in Venice. West of the golf course, east of the golf course, on the other side of the, the maintenance yard there. I, I can't, I can't remember what locations. Bill Rosendahl put it out. We don't have no, to. No, it wasn't Rosendahl as much. We also supported a plan that, that uh, proposed three other locations where safe parking and yeah, that was yeah. in the big end of 2017, I believe. Yeah, yeah, they went up to say we supported mobile storage. You know, we 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 have we have supported these things. I mean, for you guys that weren't around, I'm just saying they they have been supported by the VNC. Some of the what I what I'm hearing from you, Alex, is a creative way to solve problems. And you know, I mean, it, 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 at least to my experience and probably a couple other people's, we have put some of those things forward. Yeah. Well, I, but can we just bring up, yes, 2017, that motion is uh, nowhere to be found. I, I think it's worth having the conversation because many of us are voting for this to force the city council members hand, hand in making a decision based on safe parking. I think there needs to be alternatives. I agree with Seema. Okay. So my right. suggestion right. is with 10 motions left is that if, if, you, if, we, if we don't want to pass this, to not try to work out language here unless somebody's got it prepared because we're gonna, we, we will sit here and we, we will masticate language so unless somebody's got something very simple can i propose we pass this and revisit the issue because my committee 10 years ago came up with a laundry list of locations for safe parking my point is you don't have to come up oh sorry no, that's okay go ahead Seema. my yeah. point isn't we, have, we don't have to come up with locations we just 
You're, you're, you're See breaking, up. breaking up, but I would like to suggest if anybody has a motion of this sort, why don't they bring it to the Parking and Transportation Committee and be happy to, to hear that. Yeah, let's uh, hear the emotion. Let's like hear the motion at hand. Let's hear the yeah. motion at hand. I mean, we got, a, we got a motion that we're voting on. And the truth is, unless somebody's going to make a, a, a motion to amend it to insert language into it, um, I suggest that we uh, we 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 vote on this. And um, you know, we're just gonna like stop the board comment, you know. Actually, George, just, yeah. to, just to be clear for all of us, myself included, okay. are we, is this motion to ban overnight parking for any vehicle over seven feet in the entirety of Venice? The, the motion yeah. as written would is ban oversized vehicles that fall under the oversized reg regulations, which is uh, oversized vehicles seven feet, correct? from 2 a.m. Yeah. to 6 a.m. Yeah. In all of Venice. In all of Venice, yes. Yes. You, you said we get one more comment. So I will repeat just like everybody else has repeated everything else to say what I said at the beginning. Survey LA came in and made my house a historic area. So I lost a lot of money. Now you want to come in and tell me and everybody else in Venice that I don't care what you think, I'm going to ban all of these things. The democratic way that it was done and has been done and will be done was have the people that it affects sign petitions and vote on it. I can't believe that this is something, I mean, forget, I mean, the harm to the uh, homeless or living in the vehicles thing is one thing, but the harm to all homeowners is what you're doing. And I don't thank you for that. And okay, <laughs> guys, you got you got it. You got a couple of options here, guys. Let's vote on it. Okay, vote. vote. We'll take vote. a vote. All right, are we ready? Go ahead. Yes. Ira. Um, um, oh, no. George. <laughs> yes. You're cute, Ira. I'll vote no. James. Yes. Uh, Seema. No. Alex. No. CJ. Uh, yes. I Brian. Guess. I'm calling. No. no, absolutely not. Jamie. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, Bruno. No. Clarence. Come back to me. Jim Rob. Jim Rob's got a thumbs down. Mark. Yes. Robert. Yes. Soledad. Uh, I'm abstain. I don't. I don't know. Vicky. No. Well, you got to vote. <laughs> okay, Clarence. I'm going to say no. All right. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, no, and uh, one abstention. Okay. 13C, okay. moving on. Jamie, you're up. Jamie, can you put down the votes? Could you give us the votes on the two things? He, he did. He's got what, thir I, the motion to amend was 10 6 yes. The motion on the mo the vote on the motion as amended was 6 9 1 no. Okay. Moving on, 13 C. Jamie, it came out of your uh, committee. Why don't you uh, read it? A uh, small Dodge Park expansion. The VNC moves to support Rec and Parks for the permanent expansion of the small dog area, small dog area at the Westminster Dog Park. The current square footage is 1,320 square feet. The new square footage would be about 4,700 square feet. James Muir has seconds. Okay, hey, James Muir has seconds. All right, let's look. Uh, there are uh, there are um, six Except public comments. Oh, there's eight public right, comments. There. Public it comments. With Jamie. Okay. The public comments end with Jamie. If Jamie drops off or somebody tries to change, then it ends with Camilo. Sorry, Kevin, this is the public yeah. comment is closed. 
And if if you're not going to talk about the dog park motion, that's that's what this is about, guys, for your public comment. So James M. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Go ahead, James. Yeah, I just want to say it's pretty fucking remarkable that you're going to triple the size of a dog park, Jamie, but you just voted to kick out everybody living in an RV. I mean, you know that people who care more about like animals than humans, that's like this sociopathic trait, right, Jamie? And I just want to say Mark Ryavik is the, the most dead eye. Jessica oh, sure. J. I wanted to okay. hear what he was going to call me. Okay. Uh, Hi. I'd like to speak. Go ahead. So I just want to say I actually um, do find it really to be able to find the space to find the energy so that dogs should have more space in Venice. There are humans who don't have space And also, Mark, your racist dog whistle about civilized societies do not go unnoticed, okay? That's all I have to say about this. Goodbye. Thank you. Kendall Mayhew. Unmute. Oh, wait. Unmute. Oh, uh, yes. Um, I would like just let him go. to be able to, to walk. Okay. I'll wait. No, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to echo what other callers are saying. I think it's <laughs> absurd that you're, I'm sorry, Bru Bruno, can you mute your. You've been doing this the whole meeting. You don't know how to mute, and it causes a massive echo. So just you have to mute because we can hear them. Thank you. I'm starting over. The, expanding a dog park is on the agenda, while you are uh, putting in a motion that is that the Coastal Commission is going to shoot down. As everybody has already said, this is completely absurd. City Council will never approve that you don't get like that. You're having this whole discussion about this parking rule just in the interest of trying to get unhoused people out of your community. You keep talking about them like they aren't your neighbors. They're not separate from residents. Why are we prioritizing dogs and the space that dog owners need over humans? This is basic stuff. And this Thank thing about you. civilized, no, I'm sorry, I got cut. Reset your clock all the way to the beginning, Kendall. Okay, uh, here you go. Uh, it's calling user one, but I know you're the goat or whatever yeah. you are there, so go ahead. Get ready. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Calling user two. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to support it. I'm going to support it, man. Take it okay. easy. I mean, you know, I don't oppose everything. It's a good idea. I support it. Okay, cool. You know, Thank you. Okay, I support it. Okay, okay. we appreciate it. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Okay, got one Valerie. Valerie. Go ahead, Valerie. Hey there. Um, I just wanted to say that we have to do something about all these dogs in Venice. They are pooping, they are peeing, they are just shitting everywhere. It is out of control, and the city won't do anything about this dog problem. I really think that we should be dedicating more time to talking about dogs here in Venice because, again, they're peeing all over my business. Nobody wants to come to my business because there's dogs everywhere outside <laughs> setting up their little dog houses blocking the sidewalk and by the way i care a lot about hey, <laughs> hey it's the real eric amore's turn to talk oh my god hi can you guys hear me yeah yeah i don't know who okay somebody was using my name earlier and making very rude comments and i hope you guys could distinguish that that was not me i'm this is very disappointing <laughs> you know it's I don't know what's going on with the meeting tonight, but anyways, um, I don't know enough about this particular dog park um, motion, and I'd be curious to know, is this a dog park where there already is a large dog area designated and that the small dog area is being enlarged? We're, is that what's happening no, here? We'll, I'm sure we'll talk about that at, at, during board comment. Thank you, and we're sorry you got that situation. So, okay. Uh, Camilo. Hello. So uh, I think this motion is actually a really good opportunity to take care of a bunch of different problems at once, because clearly all of you guys on this board are just a bunch of fancy dogs. So you can guys go move into the enlarged dog park and let people who actually deserve to live in your homes live there, like the unhoused population that you guys want to criminalize and kick out. So uh, fuck all of you and have fun living in your new fancy dog park. Thank you. 
Last person, public comments closed after this after this person, Jamie. Oh, Jamie, right, we'll see. Okay. Let's go, Jamie. Hello, yes, thank you. Um, so the dog park, just to echo like everyone else is saying, it's just interesting how friendly this is being approached compared to all of the other very barbaric measures that you're doing. I just do hope that this project does include the, uh, the ligma that I mentioned earlier. In other words, ligma nuts. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you. Okay, that's the end of public comment. We have board comment. Uh, is there anything anybody would like to say? Brian, go right ahead. Sure. Just in, in Jamie's defense, we're not expanding anything. We're expanding the section of the park where small dogs go, uh, which is completely necessary. People are afraid to bring their small dogs to the park because there's pit bulls running around. So this makes perfect sense. It's not nearly as big a deal as everyone's making it out to be. And uh, I'm all for it. Okay, great. Thanks, Brian. Does anybody else have a comment? I'm going to limit everybody to one comment from now on. No? Okay, let's have a vote, Hugh. In fact, well, Do we anybody, really need a is vote? This? Is anybody opposed? Is anybody opposed? If you're opposed, you got to unmute yourself and speak up or give a thumbs down in Jim's case. If we don't get a thumbs down and I don't get, uh, I don't get a, uh, I don't get a chuckle from Alex. Um, <laughs> speak right. now forever. Hold your peace, guys. Yeah, I'll accept we're all in agreement about this. Yes. Uh, moving on to uh, you got that? That's unanimous. Yeah. Well, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming Ira is abstaining. Yeah. yeah, Assu I, I, Ira. yeah I'll abstain on that because it doesn't matter. Assume I mean, Ira's uh, uh, abstention. Um, yeah. Jamie, 13D. The VNC Park Committee, our dog park committee, will partner with Los Angeles Parks Foundation to help in efforts of raising money for dog for the dog park in Venice for items needed such as park benches and a new water fountain. Uh, okay, I can, if, I, if I can just clarify, we're using this as a point of transparency. Multiple neighborhood, v, neighborhood organizations use this, the Los Angeles Parks Foundation as a source of 501c3 to fundraise. And James- I second. And Seema seconds. That's Jamie. Uh, Mures seconded. Oh, Mures? Okay, we'll give it to Mures. He's quicker on the draw there. He is. Yeah, okay, yeah. so we've got one, two, three, four, six. five, six. Six public comments. Oh. Okay, eight, but nope, that's eight. it, guys. We're closing that's it. it. That's We're it. And Valerie is the last public comment. Okay. All right, Mike Bravo. Hi. Um, I just want to remind people this committee is strictly for Westminster uh, Dog Park, not for Venice Parks in general. So that needs to be corrected. Um, and also, uh, maybe in the future, too, since it's, in the, in the it's Westminster specific, if there's any way to get some money to get some signage over at Oakwood, because a lot of people are still harassing, you know, um, elders and children with their off leash dogs at Oakwood. So I think this committee for existing to an extent. But uh, please make sure you're, you know, staying within the pr uh, parameters of your um, your mission statement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Jessica J. Hello. Hi. So I want to sort of ask, or maybe put comment around the water fountain. Um, if people who are unhoused use this water fountain to get water, are they going to be penalized, criminalized? Um, are there um, can we expect in the next heat wave, we say next year when homeless people are looking for water, fresh water, and they use this dog water fountain, what the sort of public reaction to it will be. Um, this idea obviously is incredibly dumb. It's unnecessary. We don't need it. Um, I urge you all to vote no. And please remember that there are humans who exist who don't even have access to water or bathrooms, water to wash their hands in a pandemic. Thank you, Justin. Venice. Oh. Venice. Hello. Go ahead. My friends, I'm here to give comment uh, and remind you all that you're sociopaths and that you can't shut down comments of people that you don't like and you disagree with, even though you're trying really hard. Stop it. It's sociopathic to care more about water for dogs than you care about water for humans. 
there are lots of people without running water in 2020 in your neighborhood. That is a problem that you need to focus on and reckon with. It is being systematically denied to so people you, on the street. Oh, okay. All in you said to. Okay, go ahead there. You're calling, calling user today. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Two in a row. I support it two in a row. I can't believe oh, it. And we great. waited five hours for this wonderful moment. So good. But please, on those water fountains, put a sign. Dogs only. Homeless dogs are banned. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Nigel. Uh, yeah, I just uh, I want to say how this is a, a good example of how uh, neighborhood council should work. Um, you know, it, it's it's about rallying uh, a neighborhood around getting funds to access things that people and dogs need. Uh, what's unfortunate is that you seem to only be able to do productive shit like this when it's for dogs or some dumb housing project and not for the essential services that the people in your district need. And as much as Ryavik wants to fucking pretend that they're this, some scourge, they are residents too. You can't just send them to a freeway overpass, you absolute fascist. Great, thank you, Nigel. Sorry. Margaret Malloy. I'm mute. I, I concur with uh, several of the comments. It's great to raise funds and make this dog park better, but I don't see one of you ever, ever, ever propose raising funds to fix the drinking fountains in Venice. And they were shut off in the mid eighties as a way to discourage unhoused people from gathering in Venice, especially along the boardwalk. That didn't work too well. In this, in this context, please encourage all dog owners to use the damn dog park and to leave uh, Oakwood Park to the residents thank, of thank Oakwood. Thank you, Morgan. Okay, thank you. Was Margaret last or? Uh, no, Peter Clune is last. Okay, great. Thank you. Unmute, Lisa Redmond. Yeah, hi. Uh, oops. Hi. Uh, echoing the same parks as Oakwood, it's the same old story. You guys know this, but uh, I'm I'm just disgusted that again we're thinking about dogs before we are humans. Uh, you know, Miss Motion Maker herself, Jamie, had a fit a year ago when the mayor put a drinking fountain on Third across from her house. People need to drink. Now you're talking about putting out specific fountains for dogs and benches when at the same time you're trying to get rid of benches elsewhere because of hostile architecture. You don't right. want an unhoused person to Hey, Valerie. Unmute, you can talk. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to check, where do you draw the line? Like are homeless dogs okay to use this park or is it only dogs that live in really nice houses? I'm just wondering, I know you can't respond to public comment, so you don't have to answer that. Um, also the rest of you, you can leave this meeting at any time and have them lose quorum and you don't have to put up with this Nazi shit and listening to it. Like honestly, the fact that most of you are still here makes you super complicit in all of this, even if you abstain or vote no. So why don't you just leave? Like, why are you sitting here entertaining this and letting them just say fascist shit? Thanks, Lara. Okay, last public comment, Lara. Peter Kloon. Yeah, the, first of all, uplift all the comments that people have previously made, um, specifically about the water fountains. I think they're making really good points, and you guys should really deeply consider them. Um, you know, but turning back to benches, um, like Lisa mentioned, um, you know, I, I, I hope I'm wrong here and would love to come back and give you guys some attaboys um, and not have to tell you to get fucked again. But like, you're going to use this as an opportunity to create some hostile architecture, right? You're going to put one of those crappy benches with the armrests that's uncomfortable to sit in, that nobody can lay down in. And like, this is going to become another expression of your just Thank you. yeah, hatred. Thank you. All right. Hey, that's sad. Board comment, guys. Does anybody have anything hey, to say? Yeah. yeah. George, I've had yes. my hand up. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, Jamie, I, I support what you're trying to do here. Um, I've got some technical problems with it. The first thing is that 
committees only have jurisdiction to report to the board. Your committee cannot go out on its own, raise money, or do anything like that. So my suggestion is that somebody change the motion to take out the words dog park committee and just say the VNC will partner with the Parks Foundation. All right. Um, the second thing is, I don't know if you can do the whole thing. It's worth a shot, but we're not allowed to raise money or take part in any fundraisers. I know that you said other community groups have done this, but we're not a community group. We're part of the city of Los Angeles and we shouldn't be raising money. So um, I, I'd say go ahead and, and leave that, but please change the wording, take out the dog park committee and make it the VNC. Uh, Ivan, just a, uh, we I can we can discuss this in our committee again. We don't need to hash this okay. out tonight. But but uh, Bob, the money goes directly to the city. So Los Angeles Parks Foundation is an arm of the city, and it goes directly to Bob for Parks and Recs. So there's no money exchanging hands between the VNC or any of us. It goes from I, one city. I understand to that. The other. Okay, we get it. Hang on. I'm just Ivan. You made your point. Jamie, you responded. Jamie, okay. your hand is up. Then I'm okay. suggesting. Go ahead, Jim. Um, I was just going to respond to some of the comments that the public made. Um, if somebody wants to have signage added to Oakwood Park, that would be something to take to the budget committee to requisition funding for such signage. Um, and with the uh, comments that were made about um, how the water would be used that came out of the water fountain, um, the park has a set of rules that, that Reckon Parks um, has determined are appropriate for a park of this nature. Um, and those same rules will apply. We're not doing anything. Uh, it, the committee has a proposed nothing, nor is there anything in the motion that would suggest that we're going to do anything other than what the existing park rules um, allow. So all we're doing is, is uh, trying to um, make it clear that the VNC would like to, to uh, make an effort to help the Parks Foundation raise money to be able to improve a park located in Venice. Okay, Jim, uh, that's, that's good. Uh, Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest something to you guys just to speak. Okay. Is, is let, let me just let this me is just this by the way has already been approved by other neighborhood councils and there are already other neighborhood councils that work with the same Parks Foundation. So yeah. we're not doing anything that other neighborhood councils have not already. Jim, done. Let, me, let me jump in here and make two suggestions to help us out. Thank you it's for clearing that up for some of the people that might not have been up to speed on that. There's there's two things. One is is either for it to go back to the committee to be rewritten or I would suggest an amendment to make it read, the VNC will support the Los Angeles Parks Foundation in efforts of raising money for the Westminster Dog Park. And um, I would second I would, that. I would, I would suggest somebody make that amendment. I'll make that amendment. Okay. I'll and second always... that amendment. And I'll second. second. Yeah. Soledad, you second it? Okay. So we have an amendment. Basically all we did was we struck the, the two words. I, I've, I've got so, it, Jim. I've got it. I'll get it to you for the minutes. Okay. I got it. I got it, George. You got it? Good. I got it for you. So, okay. so, so and if I'm anybody okay wants that. to make public comment on the amendment, I got two people. Public comment is closed. This is this is to amend the motion. No call on user. You're too late. Eric from Venice Beach. You guys are too late. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Lisa. On the amended language. Hey, I'd like a quorum count. We've got a quorum. We've got quorum. When we get votes okay. of 15 to 2 or whatever, 13. That's, okay. that, that, that's, that's a public comment. That's a public comment. It's fair. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. boss. Uh, ugh. Right. Jamie. Jamie, it's the last public comment. Go ahead, Jamie. It's about the amendment to the motion. All right. No. Uh, no. They're muted. Hi. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm just. Hello. Yep. Yeah, you can go ahead, Jamie. This is about amending uh, the amendment to the motion. Go ahead. Okay. Thank. I, I just I, I just hope that um, you'll pass this uh, this uh, motion to just you know lick these nuts. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. 
Guys, let's take a, uh, a vote on the motion. Does anybody have any comment about it? I think it clears things up. Yep. Oh, I hope everybody remembers what Brian said. This is just a different distribution of the existing land in the park. It's not changing. Ira, actually, no, Ira, we're talking about, we're talking about supporting uh, yeah, but... the Parks Foundation to raise money specifically oh, yeah. on the West Coast. Right. I will go. Thank you. Oh, so, uh, whatever. Sorry. Do, do we need to take a roll call vote? Does anybody want to vote yeah. no? No? Anybody? Unmute yourself if you want to vote no. Okay, so so the amended the amendment passes, and now we have the amended motion, which we've taken public comment on the motion. So, um, can uh, can we get a vote on the amended motion? Motion as amended. Is everybody in? Oh, do the same thing. Yeah. Is anybody Is anybody if anybody vote, if anybody wants to not support it, please you know, hand up, thumb down, unmute yourself. <laughs> Okay, there's no right. opposition. No opposition to this. So Hugh, it'll uh, yep. it'll pass unanimously with Ira's uh, abstention. Okay, 13E. Um, this one was my motion that I put in, guys, um, and I'll explain it to you. It's pretty 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 straightforward and simple. Um, and, we get a um, second. Yeah, yeah, so there are seconds. James Seconds. So it's my motion, James Seconds. Guy, it's 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 not more complicated. It's been an incredibly, you know, maybe for most of us, even you know, for me, once in a lifetime sort of year, what we're in and what we're going through. There's been an incredible amount of strife. People aren't happy. Um, the year is ending, hopefully on a good note for most people. Uh, you know, in in Los Angeles, most people are, are positive. I think everybody deserves an opportunity, even with the restrictions, to figure out how to get themselves to their family um, and take a month off away from all of this and from your meetings and your this and your that and just recharge your batteries and be positive getting ready for you know whatever comes next year and hopefully it gives everybody a chance to be uh, grateful for uh, you know the holidays and what they have um, you know so that that's where that motion comes from and, and okay. straightforward Can I make an amendment I'd like to amend it to change from December to January. Uh, I agree with everything that George said. However, uh, Ivan has been ragging in my ears about the fact he has to get uh, his budget approved. I'm, I'm just, yeah. and uh, if he waits till the January meeting to get it approved, it puts him at a deadline that uh, he can't spend any money, but he only has two weeks before um, the nomination opens up. So I, you know, I agree with you, I, I'm not arguing, but I think it would be better for our elections to get the budget in and then take the month off and let him spend his money. That's so my, my only rebuttal to that is we've allotted the money and, and he can spend it and it can be paid by in January. Um, based on what we've already allotted. So that's my only, my only retort so. to that. But, All right, you know. well, if you, if you think we can do that. Yeah. Um, All right, can, can I speak to this? Oh, we need a second on the motion, yes or no. Okay. I mean, uh, we had a second, that's why I was- No, no, the mo no you, you wanted to make an amendment. Yeah. No, a second on the amendment. Oh, well, maybe nobody cares, yeah. All right. Okay, I, seeing, seeing no second, the motion dies for lack of a second. Okay. So we'll take public comment on the motion as written. And uh, Ivan, you'll be in the conversation because I know what you want to say. Okay. Right. Nick and Tonicella, the last public comment. That's it. So that's a lot of public comments. 15 public comments. So I'm sure this all will right. be. Hang on. So. Jamie. Oh, all right. <laughs> Unmute. Okay, go ahead. Got unmute. Jamie. Go ahead, Jamie. No? Hello? Yeah, go yeah. ahead. This is for uh, 13E. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I don't understand why you would want to suspend um, all activities for the month of December. 
Um, th there's still things going on. There's, there's still lots of events happening. Um, the, the people want transparency and they deserve to be informed. I just, I, I think this is a bad call. I'm just gonna, just gonna leave this one simple. This is a bad call. Great, thank you, Jay. Thank you. All right, user two. Mr. Collin, Mr. Collin user. Yeah, yeah it's uh, just a friendly amendment. Um, let, let's cancel the month of December for the Jewish holidays. But for all the other Graham holidays, no, we don't we don't need to celebrate those. So let's hold these meetings on the Graham holidays, but give us our, our proper faith holidays for those of us that read the Torah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Hanukkah is December 10th, so let's have Okay, Erica, Erica. from Beach. Yes, Erica. Y'all, um, y'all are avoiding your responsibilities. Are you suggesting people travel? Like, there's COVID. Um, this is literally, y'all are insane. Um, it's crazy seeing you guys run yourself into the ground, trying to kill your family members by traveling during COVID. Um, and, you know, not everyone celebrates the holidays, so maybe you should uh, just so kind of fuck off, <laughs> to be honest. Hey, um, thank you. <laughs> Okay, Jessica J. Oh, okay. Oh, Hi, I wanna thank you guys for um, skipping through public comment on the last five agenda items, despite letting a developer talk and working to reserve over 15 minutes of public comment for us to talk about your vacations. That frankly, you haven't really earned. So if you can just move this forward, we really appreciate it. Now you're wasting time. This agenda item is not crucial. There have been way more crucial ones where you, George, yourself have cut our chance to speak on them. So we don't care about your vacations. Enjoy it. You're not doing much work tonight. Anyway, let's move on. Thank you. Great. Great. Uh, just to remind everybody, I think the whole uh, consent calendar was removed. We got to deal we, with that. We still got to deal with the consent calendar. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. I just... just <laughs> Hey, Helen. Uh, Helen. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I'm mute. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm unmuted, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I understand, you know, George, the feeling behind this. However, the city isn't going to stop working, and there's a lot of stuff going on. There's city planning coming up with more meetings about the local coastal plan. You know, LUPEX needs to have meetings because people are not gonna stop submitting their projects. Um, there's a lot going on. And if you cease operating, uh, things aren't gonna get taken care of and it's gonna be a big backup. And not Thanks, to mention, Amy. there's also the election issue. Thanks, Thank you. Uh, Brian. Unmute. Hi, this is Brian. Uh, I'd like to suggest that the neighborhood council not only suspends for the month of December, but suspends indefinitely uh, because this neighborhood council is shameful and an embarrassment to the Venice community. Y'all should abolish the council and pursue uh, something that's truly democratic. And that isn't just simply a mechanism for rich uh, landowners like yourself, to punish the most poor and vulnerable people in our neighborhood. Fuck all of you, your pieces of shit. Great. Thanks, Brian. Thanks. Uh, Valerie, unmute, please. I can't even imagine what it would be like to take an entire month off. Like, imagine that you live on the street during December where hypothermia is common and kills four people a day who don't have homes while the people who are trying to criminalize your existence just fuck off for a month and do whatever they want. They don't have to go to work. They don't have to do anything. They're just going to go hang out with their families, which none of us can do because of COVID. Um, it's, it's really funny that you just think you can do that. Like you're not going to actually. Thank you, Valerie. <laughs> Sabrina Gregory. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Hi. So yeah, I'm, I swear I'm not a hacker. I actually live here, um, especially with the things going on right now, just like with COVID and everything going on. 
I think this is just honestly really irresponsible that there's, you know, you guys can go and take a vacation off. We can't. We're still the ones sitting here and dealing with all of these problems. So no, like you, <laughs> you can take a vacation. We can't from the things happening, from all the homelessness issues, from all the poverty issues, from Thank all you, the Sabrina. hunger issues. Um, Lisa. Hey, COVID or not, this is very irresponsible to want to do this. You know, you didn't take a month off last December. I don't know why this December is more important. And in many ways, this December is easier because you shouldn't be traveling. You're not having to worry about making and arranging plans. You get to sit in the, from the comfort of your home. You don't even have to get in a car and drive to the cold auditorium at Westminster School. You all took a commitment to do this. And this includes having one monthly meeting of a board once a month. Thanks, Lisa. Kevin, please unmute. Hi, yep. Yeah, uh, still here, still hacking. Uh, I'd like to echo the previous commenters uh, regarding how absurd it would be to take a whole month off. Do you? I mean, when was the last time I had a month off? It's been years. Nobody, you know, we, people have to work. The city keeps moving. There's, there's things to be done. Um, you know, food banks are out of food. Like just because you want to celebrate and, you know, holidays arbitrarily placed at the end of the year, it doesn't mean that that's a, you know, acceptable thing. Thanks, Kevin. Margaret Malloy. Please unmute. Hi okay. guys, so uh, as you've all heard tonight, transparency is an issue. There's a lot, of, there's a credibility gap and um, there's reasons for it. It's no mystery, but this motion doesn't say what happens to the planning committee. What happens to West LA hearings? And that's really problematic because um, developers don't generally take time off. If you're all shutting down, if there's no motions, there's no uh, no Thanks, on any planning, that's one thing, but your motion doesn't say that. Thanks, Margaret. Nick, it's the end of public comment after you. Nick, go ahead. Yeah, most of these disruptors are not residents of Venice. These Alinsky type tactics are just tiring. Uh, what these people have in common is that they're doing the dirty work of Mike Bonin. Because all these people have in common is that they're with Mike Bonin. And Mike Bonin is against Venice. And I hope if you don't need a reason now why we need Venice cityhood, then I don't know what you people are thinking. If this meeting tonight doesn't display why we need cityhood and get out of LA, then I don't know what is. Thank, thank you, Nick. All right. <laughs> Public comment, guys. For uh, Jim, you, Jim, you were waiting. Jim Rams? Perez. Oh, wait. Um, you your, you I have my hand up. I didn't mean yeah. to have my hand up. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead, CJ. CJ, you're, you're muted. You're, you're muted, CJ. Yeah. Um, there I'm just really scared if we aren't operating next month. Last December, the city did things, one thing very specifically, very underhanded, as nobody in Venice seemed to care, and now they do. And I just really think it is much too important that we keep not just the board, but our committees uh, operating and keeping an eye and an ear out for what happened last year because the city just knew nobody was going to look at what they were doing and they didn't and things got passed. Okay, CJ, thank you. Go ahead, Brian. You had your hand up, uh, Brian. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't believe I'm saying this after tonight, but I think we should power through December. Uh, we were elected. We only do this 12 times a year. Uh, I know everyone's had a, a rough year. I know everyone's had a rough night, um, but it doesn't seem like too much to ask to do this one more time this year. 
Um, I feel like when the, the Senate and Congress took a break while the country was in crisis, probably all of us thought that was a horrendous move. Uh, and right now Venice is in crisis. So it, it would, it seems hypocritical to do the same thing. I feel like we should power through till the end of the year. I know we're all exhausted, but that seems like the right thing to do. Thank you, Brian. Okay, guys, let's take a vote. When uh, do I get to talk, George? Oh uh, yeah, you can talk. Go ahead. We know what you're going to say, Ivan. But please go well, ahead. You do. <laughs> yeah, I do. We spoke about it. All right. So, gang, look, this is the problem here. Um, the uh, ev everything that we spend has to come before you for approval as a line item budget. In our yearly budget, the board allocated a certain amount of money that's there, but how we spend it has to now come back and be approved. How much we're gonna spend on flyers, how much we're gonna spend on social media and all the other things that are gonna be going on. If you take off in December, and wait till the January meeting, that would be on the 19th of January and filing for board to run for the board is on February 6th, it starts. That's just a little over two weeks to do everything. I cannot spend any money to promote, you know, people should run for the board until after the board would approve this hopefully on the 19th. So, uh, whatever else you're hearing just isn't right. I need this time and, and uh, I'm, I, I need to get the budget approved, hopefully in December, and then probably more in January. But if you take off, I'm in big trouble here. It means filing's going to start and nobody's going to know about it because I can't do a thing other than maybe send out constant contact. Okay. okay. Thank so you. I, and and yeah, I think the rest of the motion also says that we will we will continue e-blast website, social media updates, and elections planning. And we've allotted Ivan's money. So having spent enough time on the budget committee, I know that it's you guys vote how you want to. I mean, I, I've I've expressed to you why this is here, but uh, you know that certainly isn't a reason that's going to impinge our mail-in elections. It, it it just is not. We've we've allotted the money for him to do what he wants with it. But I can't spend it until I go back to budget, get it approved there as a line item budget and come back to the board for approval. The city clerk will not allow any expenses without a line item approval by the board. And I'm sure Hugh will tell you that if you wanna ask him. I wanna uh, ask him. Okay, yeah. go ahead. The, the city has tightened the rules dramatically in terms of what you can spend money without approval. Uh, certain office expenses, monthly reoccurring monthly expenses like our storage locker and our email and so forth is one thing but individual items like we would have in an election would have to be approved by the board before they're can be paid for could i'm just curious could we amend tonight's motion to recess with approved items to be budgeted no i'm not ready yet well, we have your fault. Yeah, what Ivan doesn't tell you is that he's he doesn't know exactly how the budget is going to fall. Well, we couldn't do some rough calculations. No, we quickly we come back money. to this. We we, no, we have a lot of considerable amount of money to our elections. I understand that. that. Has, yeah, he has control over. But we could we could give him a starting number in each of the categories that he needs and come back. No, you can't. It's not on minutes. the agenda, Jim. No. no, we didn't put it on the agenda. We can't vote on it tonight. Oh, yeah. okay. But he does have an allotment, so he can he can go ahead and I mean, I, do his and, and get things aligned. He can you know put people to work and we can pay them in January. I can't spend it. I can't go to the printer. I, you know, I can't take out ads. I can't do anything. But that's the starting period of the election cycle, right? That's the big February 6th filing opens for people that want to run for the board. And it's open for a period of six weeks. I wanted to be ready to go right after New Year's with everything ready to be mailed or whatever else it is we're going to do. If you want to do this, look, guys, girls, 
it's up to you. You know, I'm just it telling seems, you it's going to kill us in terms of the election. Vote on this? That's, that's, that's a false statement. It's not going to kill us. It, it seems to me for the discussion purposes, you have two months to do it. You have, yeah. What you're saying is you'd have two weeks um, after the board meeting when, when you got the budget approved, and then you'd still have six weeks during the election cycle. So if the mailing didn't go out for the first month, that wouldn't necessarily be a terrible thing because yeah, you really want to do most of your marketing I want to get it out closer the to the new day I want to get rather as than many farther out. As we can. Right now, the only people that know what the schedule is is the board members. And plenty right. of people can plenty of people but, can know because we'll still be doing e blasts and social media. And correct. So anyway, but, Ivan has his point. It's very important to Ivan. The elections. We know how passionate he is about them. We yep. don't know a lot of things from the city, but you know, I mean, if you know, that's he's made his valid points. And um, if there are no other comments, I think we're fine to take a vote. Um, well, I, I just want to put my comment, and I agree with both uh, CJ and uh, Brian that this is, is probably not a good idea. All right. Can we take a vote, Hugh? All right, Ira. Abstain. George. Yes. I vote no. Uh, Mirez. Yes. Seema. Seema, you're muted. All right, we'll come back to Cena. Alex. No. CJ. No. Brian. No. Jamie. Jamie, you're muted. You're muted. Sorry, my computer was stuck. Um, I vote no. Okay, Bruno. No. Clarence. You're muted, Cece. All right, uh, Jim Rob. He's not here anymore. Mark. No. Robert. He is not here anymore. Soledad. No. Vicky. No. Clarence. He is muted. Seema is no longer muted. How about Seema? She's still there? Not there? Yeah, sorry guys. Um, as, as much as I need this and I want this, I, I don't know if I can vote for this. I'm so sorry, George, no. You have to apologize okay. to me. All right, <laughs> Clarence. You have to apologize to me. All right, last, last call for Clarence. All right, uh, it's- uh, Mark is absent. Okay, yeah, one, two, two yes. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 no, one abstention. Okay. 13F, moving on. Resolution in support of CFP-1376. Vicki, you want to read that? Yeah, I'll just read the motion. Um, the I don't believe you guys, so you don't need me for a quorum. I, I, I need you guys for one motion that got voted off the consent. I don't know what to do about it, but it's really important, you guys. I, well, I don't we're know. Going, well, we're going in order right now. This, this is where we're at. We're at 13F. There's, there's, Vicki's reading her motion. Go ahead. Okay. Um, and, and, and uh, CJ took her vacation early. Just a joke, CJ. Just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Vicki. Okay. The VNC shall submit a community impact statement in support of Council File 20 1376, calling upon the Los Angeles City Council and the mayor to keep the area around Venice Bridge housing site free of camping, encampments, personal property, and blocked sidewalks. We also request that the city adopt and implement Council File 20 1376 with an urgency clause to fulfill their promises to the residents. 
Okay, do we have a second? Second. Ramirez will second. All right, James Ramirez will second it. Okay. Public comment. Hang on. Public comment. Public comment. Public comment is ending with Mr. Garvey. That's it. Public comments closed. Okay, Ivan or uh, Ira, we've got uh, twenty-one. <laughs> we got twenty-one people. All right, <clears throat> Mike Bravo. Hello, hello again. Um, yeah, I just want to say I mentioned it in the um, homeless committee meeting last week or whatever too. But a lot of times, just be mindful of the language that you guys use, like this clean and safe. And I know we all want something clean and safe, but there's a lot of loaded inferences from that. So. If you who are making these motions, which are very similar every month, to uh, account for some of like the racial disparity and um, housing equity impact that's going to have on um, organic residents and uh, people of color. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Colin, hey. user two. Okay, Colin. Yes, uh, I'll, I'll turn this over to my colleague. <laughs> yes, I thoroughly support this wonderful idea. Getting rid of filth around those who are going to be housed and no longer filthy. So, yes, we need to have this, but let's expand it to a five-mile radius around each of these places so that Ira can walk his dog at night and so go up and get... Hey. Hey, Nigel. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, so I think, you know, uh, we, we all know your stance on the unhoused from the way you talk about them as some other uh, scourge that just magically appears into your districts. How Ira says that, you know, that it's it's one thing that, that the issues on the house, but when it, when it affects me and how I'm going to make money, that's when I'm really going to be against this motion. Um, it's transparent. It's, I mean, we know that you just don't give a shit. So it's like annoying to even bring this up, but I will and just say that this is a very cool motion and it will not fix the problem we all want to fix. The one thing we have in common is we do not want people living on the streets anymore. We want more housing and Thank this you, will do nothing to help it. Thank you. Okay. Lawrence, uh, they, them. Unmute. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I'm ready to start. Yeah. First of all, uh, I very much approve of this motion. I think. Oh. Oh wait. What's that? It never worked. Oh, and they haven't actually fixed the problem. Um, oh. It might exacerbate the pandemic. Oh. All right. Well. Yeah. Scratch all that I said. Um, and one last thing, real quick. Uh, yeah, fuck Joe Buscay, you know. Thanks, I you. Hey, Sean O'Brien. Unmute. Please support this. Thank you. Oh, great. Thank you, Sean. Um, hey. Erica from Venice Beach. Y'all really want any excuse to criminalize the homelessness and attack the homelessness, the homeless people. Sorry, the unhoused people, your neighbors. You want to attack your neighbors? You want to criminalize your neighbors? You want to really, really do that? Um, you just want to make life a living hell. And I think that's really abhorrent of you guys. I think you guys really need to calm the fuck down, take a deep breath, and give people some housing. Because y'all have housing. Um, y'all need to give people housing. People treat others how you would like to be treated. Y'all want to go home from the for the holidays. Uh, like obviously you're <laughs> Catholic that treat others how you'd like Thanks, to be Erica. Okay. Jessica. Jessica J. I would like to say, you know, there are not enough shelter beds. There are no shelter beds. And so there is no solve in, in removing people from sleeping around freeways within 500 feet because there really is nowhere for them to go. Um, someone opened this meeting talking about a homeless family 
who was given housing, men and women can't even go into the same shelter and sleep together. Moms and dads and families can't even be together in shelters. Obviously this has to be opposed. Obviously you guys are not thinking of these people as humans, but as a nuisance that you want to blow away. And you guys- Thanks, Jessica. Good job. Jamie. Hi, uh, yes, um, so just as the others are saying, just wanna echo, there's no housing available, so this motion shouldn't even be put in place. Um, there's like six there's other councils that are actually submitting uh, community impact statements against this. So, I mean, I just hope that you would, you know, join most of the rest of the sensible people in the city and oppose this measure. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Margaret. Uh, so it's really disheartening to read this motion and um, I hope you all look in the mirror as you read it out loud. And just to look at the agenda tonight, you've approved a couple of really giant oversized uh, houses, a fancy dog park, one month pro vacation uh, possibility You've banished all oversized vehicles in Venice. You proposed to banish all encampments in this area of Venice. And you had Buscaini come in with- Thank you, Margaret. Peter? You there, Peter? Go ahead, Peter. No? Peter, no? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, you know, I think I'd like to echo the statements of everyone before me um, and just sort of focus on the end of this motion you guys have, you know, of the idea of fulfilling their promises to residents. You know, the, the fundamental promise that our city council should have for all of us is, you know, to, to provide our basic necessities and keep us safe and uplift us. And this, this does nothing to do that. It, it might make it easier for people who have money to not see poverty, but it, it fails at exactly what it seems to claim to want to do. Um, and it's just, it's so, it's so disappointing to see people, you know, reach back into the, the same failed policies that have put us in this situation to begin with. Thank you, Peter. Valerie. Valerie? It's, fu it's funny that um, so many of you guys are these like law and order types and you talk about crime and laws all the time and you don't even know that this completely goes against the Constitution. You realize that the Supreme Court struck down laws like these under Martin v. Boise and that this motion has been described as even by our most conservative uh, council members as litigation bait. Like if you even support this at all, I have to ask you where you draw the line on what is and isn't a crime and why your definition of a crime only applies to certain people in this example, unhoused people. Um, because- James M. Go ahead, James M. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say um, Bonin's uh, assistant was right earlier. Judge Carter is never going to approve this. So voting in favor of this, the only thing you're going to do is just show once again your sadistic bona fides to the rest of the NC system. And I'm really hoping that um, Mark Rayovec can control himself and not add an amendment to ground the homeless people into paste to feed Jamie's dogs at her new little dog park. Fucking maniacs. Thanks, James. Asmadik, I apologize if we got the pronunciation wrong. Yeah, uh, full name, uh, Sakmadik. Uh, I would like to propose that uh, we ban uh, people from living in houses 500 feet from other people living in houses. Uh, because that's exactly what this motion does, except for people that don't live in houses. Y'all are weaponizing solutions against the very people that it's supposed to help. It's disgusting and it's sick, and it shows that you actually don't really give a shit about them. You're just trying to do the least that you can in order to remove them from your fucking community. So fuck all of you all. You all need a, a serious... Camillo? Go ahead, Camillo. Hi, so uh, I know that some members uh, of this council previously said that they don't want to lose 
credibility. And this is exactly what would happen if you guys vote to approve this, because like others have mentioned, it's litigation bait. Uh, there's no real reason for you guys to approve this motion besides just to let all your psychopathic tendencies come true. And the reason why Mike Bonin was so quick with the substitute motion is because he's used to dealing with you psychopaths. So when that motion came through, he already knew what to do, uh, and which is what his field rep was trying to get through to you guys before you guys really interrupted him because you guys can't handle just basic truths about how to deal with unhoused people. Hey, Alex. Uh, yeah, I'll be quick. Uh, I'm a Venice resident, Sunset Ave. And um, I don't think this is who we are. I don't think this is who we want to be. And as someone pointed out, um, there's legal precedent against it. And so uh, what we're going to do is just drive up court costs for absolutely no reason, um, just to make ourselves look like fascists, which I don't think is uh, uh, the character of this neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Kendall Mayhew. Can I get clarity? How long is my public comment? These public comment is 30 seconds. seconds. That's why we're running the cock, Kendall. Go right ahead. Okay, so this motion again does the thing where you say that homeless folks are not actually residents. Homeless people are residents of Venice. Um, separating them out doesn't make that not so. Uh, like the last caller just said, this is only gonna get tied up in the courts, which is going to cost an enormous amount of taxpayer money. If you just orient towards care and support and stop criminalizing people, we will not only be doing the humanitarian thing, but be saving taxpayer money. That's what you're all interested in, right? Saving Thank money. You, okay, this is the real Erica Moore. Go ahead, Erica, you gotta unmute yourself. Real Erica. Hi. Oops, sorry. Hi. Go ahead, Real Erica. Yeah. Hi. Okay, just all I can say is, is that it's very clear that there's a few people that are using multiple names, including my name, mm -hmm. to make comments. It's getting pretty annoying. Anyways, I don't understand. You know, we have the bridge housing. I don't see why we have to allow people to block the sidewalks in that area, it seems like that it's reasonable for there to be a community impact statement. I, I think that there should be a community impact assessment. There are people that live there in homes that are affected by people living out on the streets around the encampment. Thank you, I think, mm -hmm, thanks. Thank you. Okay, Georgina. Go ahead, Georgina. Go ahead, Georgina. No? Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Hi. I just wanted to say um, what the fuck is wrong with all of you. Uh, people have covered all of the facts and reasoning behind why you should be opposing this motion. So I just want to say you should be ashamed of yourselves. You're wasting everyone's time. What, why are we on this call at almost 1 AM arguing about whether unhoused people are human beings? Like, couldn't we be doing something better? You guys are all despicable human beings and you should listen and learn from the people who took the time in a, to call into your stupid meeting and you should all go rot in hell. Thanks. Lisa Redman. Okay, all of you have your SOS Carter signs up on your houses and I know who you are. And you know, Nisa stole my thunder earlier when she shared what the judge said to your new friend, oops, to your new friend, uh, Joe Buscano and Joey Buckets. And the judge isn't going to allow this. Let's be honest. There's no provision for housing in this. It's just moving people. So what's going to happen is the encampments are going to leave uh, Vicky and Jim's houses, but they're going to move in front of CJ's and Mark Ryavec's houses. Okay. Thank there's you, no Lisa. solution. Thanks. Please Thank you. Okay. Rick Garvey, you gotta unmute yourself. Okay, so yeah, I also oppose this motion and I think you guys are just showing your true colors tonight with this agenda is pretty crazy. But 
The other reason is because we are having a huge spike in COVID-19 right now. I don't want these sweeps because I don't believe in sweeps when there's nowhere to put people. And I think it really does terrorize people when you do these sweeps. But I don't even want the workers out there doing sweeps in the middle of a pandemic. I think this motion needs to hold its horses and there's no reason to bring all this out right now. Thank okay, you. thank you. Okay, that's the end of public comment. Uh, board comment? Anybody, Seema? You're gonna I get your hand like, up. I would just like to remind everybody that all we're doing with this motion is holding our public officials accountable and uh, maybe the public comments should direct their anger at our actual elected officials that get paid instead of us. We're just asking for accountability from the mayor and the city council and that broken promises that were made to us two years ago. Okay, thank you, Seema. Does anybody else have a comment? Mark, go right ahead. I, I just want to second Seema's comments. Councilman oh, okay. Garcetti and Councilman Bonin made a series of promises regarding the bridge housing project. They have been phenomenally uh, failed in their execution and their protection of the neighborhood around the bridge housing project. And as Heidi Roberts has documented online, almost all of the other bridge housing projects are free of encampments, are clean and are safe environments. The one in Venice is the only one that doesn't have um, that kind of standard. And I encourage my colleagues to support this motion um, to require that the area around the Venice bridge housing project um, obtain the same standards of uh, being free of encampments that you see throughout the city in all of the other bridge housing facilities. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Anything to say, guys? I just want to say I support SEMA, and I, I, I think we're not stating the obvious that this is housing. It's a bridge housing, and there were promises if you build it then we will provide opportunities for people who are living on the street, none of which we have seen. As a matter of fact, as a resident of Third and Rose, I've seen people rotate in and out of the bridge housing. So I think Seam is right. We need to hold our city council member accountable for the promises he made and broke to our community. Okay. There's nothing else. Can we take a vote, Hugh? All right. Might as well take a roll call on this one. Actually, George. Yep. Can I ask one quick question? Yeah, of course you can. Uh, Vic, Vicky, yeah. is this specifically for bridge housing? Is this the, that 500 foot zone or does this expand? This is, the SEC zone. this is the promised SEC zone. So this is just holding the city to what was promised. This is what they said they would do writing and verbally and, you know. So there's nothing that's, that stretches into other areas of Venice? No. At all. No. Got it. Thank you. All right, let me rephrase that now that Brian asked this question. Is 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 anybody opposed to this? Anybody? Wanna if you're opposed, raise your hand. I mean, can see everybody, so no? Okay, nobody's opposed to this. So uh well Ira, you're muted and you abstain, so you're muted, Ira. You're still muted. Okay, there you go. Um, I'm gonna um, vote again. No, the, it's a question more of procedure. Uh, we I ran into this with the city attorney about 500 feet. Now, can anybody on the board that lives within 500 feet of this project vote on this? But it, the SECZ's, uh, the SECZ's, uh, uh, I can't say it. The zone is, um, it's more than 500 feet. I think it's like a thousand feet. It's so then, like, nobody could, right? Because what it goes like, um, it's further than that. No, it goes to Brooks on the south end. It goes to Fourth Street. 
the I've signs are up everywhere. The signs have been up since for months yeah. now. All right, I just had a question about the 500 foot thing. Uh, I don't want, if we pass this or whatever happens, I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> All right, that's just a question since nobody well, knows. I either, think so. you're right in a point of clarification. It looks, I think, I thought we were voting on a, a community impact statement for a motion in front of the city council. So, right. yeah, yeah right. Ira, I just wanted to, to, to I'm echo just asking. what Jamie. <laughs> I appreciate what it, Ira. Said. There's an existing council file. We're only, you know, we're not exactly. creating, we're not creating new uh, revenue or financial benefit for our individual not, properties if no, we no. live within 500 feet. No, it's not all the brown. Is, all we're doing is voicing our opinion on an existing council file that the city already has I, before them. I, I think I think there's a problem. Maybe I don't know, but. You know, I just wanted to um, make sure that we uh, duly get noted. what we want. Du duly, duly noted. Um, so, uh, Brian, you're voting against it? I'm going to abstain as someone okay. who lives within 500 feet. You want to know what? Let's just uh, let's just take a roll call vote, Hugh. All right. Let's make it easy. All right. Uh, Ira. Abstain. George. Yes. I'll vote yes. Mires. Yes. Seema. She has her thumb up. She got her thumb up. Alex. Um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Brian. Give the kid a break. <laughs> Give the kid a break. It's been a long Brian, day. Brian, you're abstaining. Is that right? I, correct. I'm abstaining. Jamie. Yes. Bruno. Yes. Clarence. Yes. Jim Robb. Jim Robb is no longer with us. Mark. Yes. Robert. He's gone, isn't he? All of that. no longer with us. Oh. Vicky. I'll abstain because I am so close to be on. All right. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 yes, no no's, and three abstentions. Okay, motion carries. Okay. 13G, universal wearing of face masks in the Venice community. Um, Venice neighborhood. I'll make the motion for Nick. Uh, I'll, I'll yeah. make the motion for Nick. And I will second it. Um, you guys, pretty I pretty provided a uh, substitute motion. I'd appreciate it if uh, George could post it. Was, um, <sighs> Did you email that to me? I sure did. Okay, I apologize. I'm gonna have to dig it out, Mark. My bad. While you look for it, it basically does two things. It requires, encourages everybody to carry masks, requires masks in dense environment situations, such as the boardwalk, Abikini, the canals and uh, the walk streets. And it only makes changes to the, uh, therefore be a resolved section of the motion. All right, uh, if you wanna, I, I, I found that, Mark, I can put it up for people to look at. Um, All right, I'll, I'll stop the share. Yeah, and I'll put it up. My my concern is that can we can we all see that you guys see that my concern is that a total mandate for mask wearing is a bit inappropriate where we have wide open expanses of the beach or you know for example walking the Venice Peninsula along Pacific which I do frequently on a on the dirt on the dirt strip. And I don't see people for, you know, two blocks. Um, and then there are other areas that are very dense, the boardwalk, Abikini, where I'd feel much more comfortable if everybody was wearing a mask. Oh. And I and, and I've discussed it with Nick. Nick didn't wasn't comfortable with my suggestions for amendments, so I decided I would submit it to my colleagues. And you can see it in front of you. Um, 
I think we need to be serious about the uh, use of masks in pr close proximity. And, and certainly that's the case along the boardwalk, Abikini, walk streets, the canals. But it certainly for me, doesn't obtain where I can't see anybody around me. I'm walking on the beach, I'm walking on Pacific and the peninsula. That, that's my proposal. Okay, so Mark, Look you're for, I'm so looking for a second, but I don't have a second. A second. Can I ask a question? There are like by the minute new <laughs> new legislation that's coming down by the governor and the county and Sheila Keel just announced that we have curfews. This is all being what? Right. Yes. yes. And starting I'm Friday, Friday. And the indoors 10 o'clock. So all of this is actually by the minute being covered by our city council and state officials. Do we really need to hash and go through all this out when? I, I, I haven't heard anything about a mandatory mask order. Yes. We have a mandatory mask order in our state right now. And now we are having a countywide curfew starting Friday. Mandatory what? order where? I haven't heard that. It's, yeah. Yes. Happened tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Starting Friday at 10 p.m. How do they have that authority? Well, it, that's not what we need to talk about because Sorry. we have no authority. Yeah. Listen, guys, guys, we've got a substitute motion and a second. And, you know, um, Ira, you're going to have to take over because when I'm sharing my screen, I can't get to the rest of the, uh, the tools. So. Um, well, can we just have a vote on my substitute motion? There's public comment. Right. OK. Of course. Yeah. So we got to do public comment on right. whether we're going to, uh, you know, have a substitute motion. George, I think Ira might have left. Really? No. No. I just I, I've got to I've got to apologize to you guys. I can't. Uh, I just, don't have real good screen use here. George, uh, just make me the co-host, and then I'll share the screen, and you okay. can do your. Uh... I, I, honestly, I can't make you co-host. Only the host. Oh God. So Ira's got to do it. Take it down. We already know what the. We mark. know what we're voting on. We know what we're voting on. Okay. I'm going to end the share. I mean, we're voting on something that's never going to have teeth. Right. Well, you seconded it, so. I didn't second it. Oh, you didn't. Sorry, no. I seconded it, but I'm second sorry. I, but I'm so sorry. That was before Jamie spoke. Well, if you're going to take your second back, it's going to die, and we're going to, we're going to vote on the original motion. I take. Oh. We're going to vote on. We're going to vote on. We've had a substitute motion made. Um, I second Mark Ryavec's motion. Second then. Mark's motion. So now we're going to take public comment, and then we're going to vote on whether we're going to uh, have a substitute motion, and then we're going to vote on the substitute motion. Okay, has everybody got that? Okay. So we have 10, 10 people for public comment. The 11th person is not getting in there. That's it. There's 10. Not 13, 10. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let me just. Tenth person is Sabrina or Peter. Okay. Okay, this is just on the substitute motion. Go ahead, Jamie. You gotta unmute yourself. Hi. Yeah, I just, I, I, again, I'm just blown away by this council and just the amount of time being spent over a mask ordinance to protect people. When you're you guys are fucking shut up when you get through this. This is, this is just ridiculous that you don't even protect the most vulnerable people in your community. And a mask is going to be a fix. That's just, it's just ridiculous. Y'all are ridiculous. Thank you, Jamie. It's one. Erica from Venice Beach. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I cannot believe you have anti-masker Mark uh, Ryovic doing this motion when SEMA already has COVID. Um, like, obviously, <laughs> uh, y'all are too late. <laughs> um, oh, thanks for flipping me off, SEMA. Great. Um, literally, uh, it's a half ass mask mandate. It is unnecessary. Y'all should just be staying home. Um, y'all need to fuck off with this. Like, just do a full Great. ass mask mandate. Thank you, Erica. Okay, Lawrence. Um, you can unmute, unmute yourself, Lawrence. Uh, yeah, hi. I didn't realize my hand was raised, but I'm going to go ahead and take this 30 seconds to shit on you like the previous commenters had. Um, yeah, this mask this mask ordinance is, is totally weak, but what's weaker is y'all still decided to go through with that last motion, and I know this is off topic. Cut me the fuck off. I don't care. Y'all are full of shit. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, boy. Colin, there you go. Go ahead. Go ahead, go to Colin, whatever you are today. Oh, yes. We support uh, me and my colleague this motion, but we want to offer a friendly amendment that uh, persons of the Jewish faith should be exempt. All the rest of the other niggers should be required to wear masks. Right, you, watch them out. you better watch them out, dude. Watch you them out. You're out of here. Don't you worry. You better watch them out. That's what you better do. You better watch them out. Thank you, CC. Hang on, CC. Let me find him. I'm booting him out. You better watch your mouth. That's what you better do. He can bring it up with Don if he doesn't like it. You better remember this is a volunteer position. Watch your mouth, dude. George, that should be the rest of the meeting, by the way. Done. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm taking him out of the entire meeting. For the rest of the meeting, done. Yeah, yeah, I removed him. So, and the uh, rest of the next meetings. Well, okay, Nigel. Uh, yeah, I, th I think this mass mandate is a little weak. I do also want to mention that you guys just voted on a motion that you literally had no idea what it was for. You, you were talking about if you had to recuse yourselves if you're within. It has nothing to do with bridge housing. Like what? It, it was an enforcement on bridge housing, 500 feet within freeways. I mean, you don't know what you're doing and you're fucking hurting people. So either read the motions that Buscaino writes for you or don't vote on them. It's that simple. Thanks, Nigel. Hey, Nick. There? Yeah, the reason why I rejected Mark's suggestion is because anywhere you go, when you have a mask, you have to have a mask on when you get to that place. So what's the point of, you know, being in these remote, I don't know where there's a remote area in Venice. So the whole point of this is we're all going to have to wear a mask, whether we like it or not. And I think this is a, a good thing as an advisory board to be on the right side of this issue. Thank you, Nick. Okay, Jessica J. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Seem, I want to apologize for the way Erica from Venice Beach spoke to you, um, but I'm also not surprised that this meeting has divulged into anti-masking. You're voting on the last motion before this was obviously not dynamic, but most importantly, it was great to see you guys all react to a racial slur and racism as you actively vote on a homeless issue where 30% of people who are homeless in Los Angeles are black, despite making up only 8% of the population. So your racism doesn't have to be the N-word being shouted loud for you guys to realize that the- Thanks, Jessica. Okay. Hey. Hey, Jessica. Hey, Jessica. Hey, Steven. Uh, on the substitute motion, I guess I just want to say it seems silly to, to specify based on a place, which might or might not be crowded. Um, it makes more sense to say just like to wear the mask when you're near other people that aren't in your house. Um, I also want to second what everyone else has been saying. It's kind of a shame the way that you guys speak about the homeless. Um, and uh, dog whistling about getting what we want, those sorts of things are not unnoticed. We hear you. It's gross. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, I would like to second what the other commenter just said about uh, everything you guys are doing with regards to uh, homelessness is coded racism. 
and the N word is just one expression of racism. Don't tell and y'all me what need y'all need to be as upset. Y'all need to be as upset at this racism that y'all are doing as you are as people say the n-word that's why people are pissed off when they're calling in because it's fucking racist what y'all are doing and y'all don't recognize it you just you excuse it thank you Ash. okay peter yeah hi um it's amazing to see you guys discuss like the legal futility of this motion and dismiss those concerns out of hand for the previous one but also specifically Brian, they lied to you about the last motion. If you read it, it's 500 feet of any public space, any public space, not just sex. It's any public space. The motion put forward by Mike Thurer covers basically the entire city. So if you didn't like that and you voted yes, put in to reconsider. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Very good. Okay, it's the end of public comment. Go ahead. Hi, we can you hear me? Yep, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I mean, I know you guys already mentioned you don't know how useful this will be since we already do have mass mandates, but I do see what Mark is saying that I do see a lot of people on the boardwalks not wearing masks. And I think that is a big concern. So I mean, if there's anything more that can be done with that, again, I don't know how much this can do for that, but I think that just overall, like as I think it's a big community concern. Thank you. Okay, that's the end of public comment. Um, so we have a substitute motion um, that's before us. Um, we're going to vote to approve the substitute motion. Um, and then we will either vote on the substitute motion or the original motion. So uh, Hugh, why don't you do a roll call to see if we are going to substitute the motion. All right, uh, Ira. You're muted, bud. You're muted, Ira. You're you're muted. There okay. You <laughs> Abstain. <laughs> George. Yes. Uh, I think this has been a waste of time, but I'll vote yes. <laughs> well, a waste of time for a substitute motion. I don't think it adds to anything. But I'll vote yes. All right. Don't sugarcoat it. Okay. <laughs> Jim. Mary. Yes. Oh. Seema. Yes. Alex. Yeah, sorry. Brian. Yes. Jamie. Yes. Bruno. Yes. Clarence. Yes. Jim Rob. He's not with us. Oh, right. Sorry. Mark, yes. you voted for your motion? Yes. Robert? He's not with us. Soledad? Yes. Vicky? Vicky? Muted, Vicky. She's muted. Yes, no. Yes, she votes yes. All right, 12-0-1. Okay, so now we have to vote on the motion as substituted. Uh, since it was 1201, can I assume we are all uh, uh, in agreement to approve the motion as substituted with Ira's uh, abstention? If anybody, for some reason, wants to change their vote, please raise your hand. No? Okay, Hugh, I'm going to consider the votes the same. All right. Moving on to 13H. Uh, Hugh, uh, Ira, I've got to recuse myself. We have a fiduciary relationship, so I'll be recusing myself from this. Hold on, let me get, yeah. So you're back in charge, boss? Uh, I guess so. I'm going to try and get the agenda. All right. I, I'll, I'll make the motion. This is a motion to uh, that the VNC will support um, the Venice Flying Carousel Initiative and uh, <clears throat> sent a letter of support to uh, Park and Rex and Bonham and uh, to uh, encourage the city council to expedite the installation by providing substantial funding and uh, cooperating as appropriate with other departments. This was originally brought to the budget committee by a discussion and forum committee, and then it was uh, passed uh, as 
we amended the motion because it was funding from the VNC and we didn't have enough information and it was, uh, we weren't able to proceed at that time. So, but we wanted to get the, this in there uh, so they can move forward with the project. So yeah, at, this exactly. point, it's a, at this point, it's a motion of support. It's not- Right. It was actually sent by um, ADCOM because uh, it came from discussion form and it had right. in it a financial right. part. So right. it was sent to us and we couldn't approve the financial part. There were some problems in there. And uh, we decided to just pass it through. So if you look at the bottom, it's recommended by us and the discussion form. Right. So that's my mo that's the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Jamie. Okay. And then six participants have raised their hands. Okay, Georgina. 